Hello and welcome to Hello E Fat Mini Super Chat Catch Up for episode. Actually, I'll figure that out in a moment. But we're also doing Streamlabs. We'll catch up on that. That's right. You just edit and post. Yeah. Just that say that it's for say it's for episode and leave yourself a little pause and then we'll edit it in later. So yeah. go ahead and do that now. Okay, it's episode. And I cut that. That felt like a good gap. Yeah. So that won't be in the final. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be so well edited. By Mm-hmm. Like a little image of a thumbs up. I know. So smooth as sin. <clears throat> so I never forget. Anyway, <clears throat> we're just going to be answering the messages we get sent. Come I on. sure do love questions and answering them and, and you know, that whole process. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I do. First yeah. is, uh, hello, What's Mola. That? I heard the best way to get your attention is through a donation. I wanted to get in touch with you via Discord and ask if it was possible and you would agree to do a few voice lines for a currently small uh, game project. Hmm, what would be the best way to... I think I've answered this before in basically saying, like, I've not got a way to set up me doing voice acting in any way, really, right now. Um, barely keep up to date with all the shit I'm supposed to be doing for my uh, various endeavors, be it streams and videos, so can't see myself opening up a, a voice acting avenue as well. If if it was to be done, I'd probably try and find, like, a individual email and then sort it out like that. <clears throat> best, I think, that we ever do is actually just lines through a... Super chats is about is about the best offer that That's, can be made. We've done like, it more than once, <laughs> uh, more than a few times. Um, getting ready to head off to work. Have some pesetas, long stranger. Kind. Hoping Thank for you. a Cornetto trilogy fap with Drinker and Moodle in the not too distant far future. He is good. Chance. That's not impossible. Those would probably work for EFAP movies, probably just talk about how much we like them. Um, not sure how far up the chain they would be compared to other things. Mm. Uh, I just realized like that if, waiting list. if Mando got to the living waters in the mines without issue, then he would have fallen and drowned because he wouldn't have had Bo to rescue him. Yeah. Wouldn't that yeah. have been just the fucking most hilarious ass way <laughs> to die? For him, as a character, to do all that shit, to have insane plot armor for seasons of TV, and then you fall in a pool and you just die. You you just Fred, you just Frederick the Great that shit, and you just clump, and you're done. That's it. I feel like the fans might have some questions about the direction of the story. Uh, I'd yeah. like to see Moff Gideon's live reaction to that. Would be funny. Moff Gideon live <laughs> reaction. Like he just has one of his Mando troopers come in and say, you know, we well, I guess they were on Mandalore, right? So maybe yeah, they would have found. Maybe they had out. a camera there. You don't know. That's insane. <laughs> they could have just captured him there and then when you just did they the could have, and that would have been the end. That would no, have been it wouldn't it. have because they it. did capture him and they fucked that up too. So that's, that's true. true. They did. But Mando didn't his have plot armor as such that even that. I was about to say he didn't have the Chungus know. Mando, but that had nothing to do with his escape. It was just Baby Yoda saved him. No, Chungus Mando just died. <laughs> When he should he know, he was like a Terminator, but yeah. mm -hmm. didn't defeat those special guards. Yeah, they either too special or too good. Uh, thank goodness a weird robot alien forced him to get help from her before taking a bath. Absolutely, yeah. Close call. Um, hey, Molo, this is for the new mic or whatever you need. I hope Great British Pounds is the best currency so you don't have to exchange the money. Also, thanks to EFAP for your great discussions. Well, you're welcome very much. I'm Since glad you're here. Uh, glad you're listening to him. The Streamlabs ones do go to uh, PayPal, so I assume that that's the case. In terms of it wouldn't get converted because my base currency is great British pounds. Well, then again, I think you can open up more than one like base one. On I don't know, but Maybe. thank you. Absolutely, thank you very much. Uh, I've heard the take that culturally the U.S. has more in common with South America than it does with European. Do you agree with this sentiment? Don't see. I don't know, but that doesn't seem likely to me. That doesn't seem likely either. Um, I don't know much about South American culture, so I couldn't answer for certain. But I mean, it depends on what you mean smell by Europe. Test tells you mean, me like, that the United we're Kingdom. To Europe. Then obviously America's more like the United I Kingdom. I feel but, like we, yeah, we, we mesh together pretty well. But if well, you mean you can, like you know, Croatia, then I don't know. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know, know. As much, so much. Yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of. It's like being like Europe. It's like, well, 
a lot of Europe. What? There's a lot of Europe. Yeah, the and idea of Europe. Europe. The same, and there's yeah. a lot of South America as well. Mm. Like, you know, Brazil isn't chilly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really warm chilly. down there. It's yeah, it's really, it's, it's really warm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, funny memes. Yeah. True funny memes. Uh, when you say a film is bad, do you mean objectively bad? And if so, wouldn't it be more accurate to say it's objectively bad WRT, the standard of consistency, maybe they meant with, in, uh, or the standard you use, as the choice of objective standard used is subjective? Well, that's the fundamental debate, isn't it? It's gone on for a while, and it still goes on in more than just, uh, where we are. Like... What does it mean to judge um, a thing with a standard that you've come up with when the thing itself was something humans came up with? It starts to get complicated because you don't judge the quality of a thing. Like, um, it, it, it's kind of interesting how it compares to language. Like, uh, you wouldn't use definitions that are only uh, viable to you. You'd be speaking a completely different language at that point. No one know what you mean. But still, there are no objective definitions, or I guess the closest we can come to are dictionaries, right? That's what we appeal to, even though everyone treats uh, that you... that way. Would that uh, not be the case? Sort of. It I depends mean... on how you kind of view the, the, the dictionary, but I think that our, our standard is not... Are you, it can be both, in the sense that things can be objective and subjective. They're not necessarily like you can't have, you know, one necessarily negates the other, in a way. Um, so in the sense of sort of the way we look at movies, our standard is in some ways subjective, but I think in more ways objective, because they lay necessary foundations for what a story is to exist. Um, so how much you value that standard is subjective, and we can certainly talk about that, but what the standard is for, you know, being necessary for a story to exist as a story... I think that is an objective element of it and why it's so strong and why I think it's really easy for us to be consistent with it because it's not Yeah, we certainly endeavor to do that. To... And I'd stand by the statement that everybody uses this standard whenever it sort of suits them. Um, and it'll certainly, it'll suit them more times than not. Um, most people judge stories by how they portray events and how those events connect to each other. That's almost a fundamental time people, any, any script writing praise or criticism will come down to that uh, in most ways. Some I guess I'm appeals... just not interested in the word, like, you know, whether objective, subjective, like, I, I, I just, all, I, think, I think it's just like, just make sure that whenever everybody's having a conversation about a film that we have a sort of common understanding of what we're trying to judge it by. Because everybody's always going to be bringing in their own perspective when it comes to an analyzing something. It's it's very difficult not to do that. Um, the goal is to just try and have a common metric that you can use to assess whether something is good or bad, and then have conversations through that metric as is consistency, typically. Yeah, and any well, sort of statement of time, yeah. quality, like praise or criticism, you start to try and test it across the board, right? If someone says like fucking hated that movie it was three hours long how could you watch a movie for that long and someone goes whoa what about lord of the rings and then they go oh shit uh mm -hmm. well that's different and then you know you might get some cope or you might get an argument <laughs> you never know you <laughs> like might get an argument that's well hey you know lord of the rings is different because uh it's based on a book uh, imagine they said that you'd be like oh so if this long movie that annoyed you was based on a book then you'd be fine with it and they're like no you know and so on but uh, we try to um, have standards that apply to almost everything. And a lot of the time, like, as in storytelling anyway, and a lot of the time it'll be like frustrating because people will come across comedies or movies that focus on action or movies that are supposed to be absurd. So uh, it feels that they shouldn't have to apply to those things. But then you get the interesting ones of like Glass Onion, right? Where it's like everything's supposed to be stupid. Like what? And, and then, and then that's all sorts of other conversations, right? Where people bring in the external kind of uh, references. What were the intentions of the creator? What time was it made in? Um, what are you personally interested in when it comes to these sorts of films? And then it gets really tangled and messed up, <laughs> which is why I feel like if you just come in with, yeah, I, it, it's just, <laughs> I just want us to like understand what everybody else is saying. That's it. I just want us to understand what we're all saying and not talk past each other when it comes to movies and TV shows and storytelling. Yeah, you try and figure out what uh, people fundamentally care about and then see if it is present or not. 
And I just, I, I think that with enough conversation, you'll usually figure out all the stuff that you love the most will be because of how well they remained consistent in how they were written. It's hard um, to think of any other standard when, you know, A causes B causes C, that if the connective tissue between A and B and C is compromised in ways that just don't make sense to you, as a human being who perceives causality in the universe, it's hard to think of anything more fundamental to boil it down to. And it's like you've said before, whenever somebody appeals to something that's good in a story, they're almost always going to be appealing to two elements and how they're connected together and how they support each other. Yeah, I think, um, funny enough, it comes up in TFA Part 3, I believe, but I said, uh, have you ever heard someone say, I hated this movie because it made too much sense? Yeah, nobody will ever say that to you. That would be a really weird thing to say, but, you know... Will still be like, and you know, there's plenty of times where I'll like something that doesn't make sense. Anyone will, and it's because of maybe how you perceive it to be beyond that, or that enough made sense that you're willing to sort of be like, eh. You know, they, and ultimately, they, like you know, the value judgments that it's hard to say, like how you can have a metric for like value judgments that is like unflappable, always like completely entire because there's always going to be ultimately things that are judged by humans. Um, and people will have different sort of value judgments of things that they like for different reasons, right? Depending on how much it personally connects to them, whether it's part of like a genre that they have more of an affinity towards. Um, and that also, it's, it's just the, the goal is clear conversations where everybody yeah. kind of understands what they're saying to we've each all, other. We've all got preferences and we try to uh, keep them out when we're talking about each individual story as they come to be fair to all of them. Mm -hmm. if, you know, that's this, what we try to do. Yeah. Preference for dinosaurs doesn't change the fact <laughs> that I'll try and be honest about all the Jurassic World movies. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, but dinosaurs are in it, though. That's true. They are in it. Biases. You know how it goes. The trailer for Thumb Wars 9 just dropped. Go watch it. Full release is on May 4th. EFAP movies, please. By the way, what's a dog? What is a dog? Um, I mean, if they painted a, a domesticated <laughs> wolf descendant, uh, Canis familiaris, typically. Um, but maybe they're would, going more fundamental. You know, what is a dog? What ultimately? is yeah. a objectively dog. what is a dog? Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, hey, that's kind of like dog. a good reason to point it out, right? Is like, <laughs> you, uh, you know, what is a dog? Is it when people think of a domestic dog? It is the broad category of like Canis. Whatever the full name is for all dogs, including like it. wolves and coyotes and all sorts. Is it the composition of their atoms? Or, you know, is it ultimately like all things, right? All living things, like an amalgamation of cells. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta get be clear with your uh, definitions. Yeah, with what so Rag said, I had no confused. idea what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, um... People always, it's always annoying to hear people poo poo on like being objective and things like that when they fucking rely on it every day <laughs> to just function, not just in a society, but to just exist in a coherent world. And then once, once we decide, hey, maybe we can apply this to certain aspects of art, not even all aspects, but certain aspects of art, maybe we can apply some objectivity to it. People lose their gosh darn minds. Well, Sounds pretty uh, fascist. That's that true. was listed we as one of the fascist things, artists. being objective. Oh yeah, being objective. Yeah. Oh, also white supremacist. Yeah. Yes. Being objective. Trying to be objective. Mm. Well, yeah, that, I'm sure that answers. As for Thumb Wars Nine, I have no idea what that is. I'm afraid. I remember watching um, Thumb Wars: The Phantom Cuticle. Um, uh -huh. that was, I think it, when I was really young, it was like a spoof movie of, um, a spoof movie of episode four, A New Hope that was made with like thumb people who had, they're, they're like, their heads were thumbs and they had like faces on them. Sounds vaguely was, familiar I actually, yeah. Yeah. And, and I was, and I know as a kid, I thought it was really funny, but I don't know if it's actually any good. Probably not. Maybe not. I don't know. But if there's a Thumb Wars nine, I had no idea there were other ones. So, you know, good on them for making more. You know, like that, each one that was will be fun. a parody, in which case that would be the parody for Skywalker. I assume and... so, right? Yeah, I don't know. Black Helmet Man. 
My name is Ubi Doobanubi. <gasps> What's your middle name? Scooby Dooby. Ubi Doob Scooby Dooby Banubi. I'm surprised I haven't seen anyone try to use the non argument you just don't like things because you're old. You just hate new things and you like old things, like how boomers hate video games. You get that every once in a while. I know Drinker gets it a bunch. That he's old? Uh, well, you'll get people who will say, like, Drinker's obsessed with 80s and 90s stuff, and he doesn't like anything new. Uh, he does like, uh, th some things that a lot of new stuff, hear. like we do. It's... In fact, I, we, we actually do like a lot of stuff, uh, mm -hmm. that's good and new. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, but oftentimes, because I guess of the nature of what we do, and the nature of what Hollywood is putting out, like, when it comes to Marvel stuff, and you know, Star Wars stuff. Like, if, if the Star Wars sequels and all the Marvel stuff and all these other movies were really, really good, we'd be talking about how good they were. We wouldn't be talking about how shit they are, but, you know, these are big productions and there's a bit of a, you know, we're not really a part of it, but there's a bit of a culture thing going on with those being so big in media and, you know, what we're sort of, you know, we're a part of that. We're not, you know, it's not our fault. <laughs> You know, I wish every movie was amazing. Well, actually, I I don't know if I do. Hmm. It would be nice to, you know, I wish more movies were amazing. That's certainly true. That would be neat as neatness. So nice to hear y'all again on a topic I can relate to. I'm not 100% sure what it was. You couldn't get me to watch Mando Season 3 or The Last of Us at gunpoint. However, I'm begging you all to do a Ruby arc. Most recent mini-season basically made a tacit endorsement of suicide. It's hilariously um... bad. Well, I don't know anything about Ruby, and it's an anime, so I don't. I'm not going to be chomping at the bit to watch it. Well, it's just it. known as re really bad at this point, I think, right? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's what I hear. Maybe it would be a, funny, uh, but we got some other stuff in the old uh, backlog for funny things. For yeah, and also, um, you really should watch. Uh, you really should watch Last of Us. It's it's good. Yeah, season one. Yeah, you missed that. I ain't actually, promising nothing that, about yeah. anything future. Nope. In that. But, uh, you know, for season one, yeah. yeah. season one was good. Uh, it, it really was good. You should watch it if you want some good TV. Some of, Mauler, bleh, some of Mauler's videos have over 7 million views. What a chad. That's the chad number. It is seven? Seven's a pretty strong number, I guess, yeah. Well, seven million is what they uh, said in the super Seven million's there. also a strong number. That is a strong number. If, you, if you're out there and you've got seven views or seven million views, good for you. Yeah, yeah. I hope you had fun. Another recommendation for EFAP TV is American Horror Story, competent in some aspects, but completely bonkers plot and tone-wise. Um, I've not seen American Horror Story. The anthology, right? It's a bunch of different stories. I think so. I've heard yeah. of it, yeah. The, yeah I've heard the, good the and bad things. There's like many, 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 many seasons of that show. We would probably be well served to watch um, if we could get like a list of the of the best Twilight Zone episodes and watch those. I that I would probably be thing. really neat for us to do. Or we yeah, just, just, yeah, watch, just watch the whole thing. Is the new Twilight Zone is that still going on or? Um, I, think uh, I don't think so. Zoom stopped. I've only heard people say horribly bad things about it. Yeah, I've only heard that it's very, very bad. Golden Peel, which is a shame a because you would think that that kind of content would owe itself really well for people, you know, being creative and coming up with fun ideas. Wait, which but, one, was that the one Jordan Peele did, or was that some something else? Yeah, Jordan Peele uh, did yeah, the Twilight so. Zone reboot, but then right. it seems like Black Mirror is essentially what. Which also, I haven't seen that either. Is essentially the uh, like modern day version Twilight Zone. He's got people like his movies, but I remember everyone hated the uh, Twilight Zone stuff. But do people it's really so weird. Like, do people really talk much about uh, Nope or what was the other one? Us. I've us seen Nope come are... up here and there, but no, Us. No one talks about Us because no one understands Us. What happened uh, in that movie? No one. You're yeah. right. Ma, no one does understand Us. We were just talking about that objectivity thing, and <laughs> sometimes I feel yeah, like I... no one understands us. I understand you, Rags. Thank you, Mahler. But yeah, uh, Get Out, I think people still quite like, but I don't see a reference that much. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello. Even though I disagree with you on many things, I still like your content and you as a person. Am I a living contradiction? A universal anomaly? Also, Morley is straight. Wow. 
Oh, hey. Yeah, why don't you stick that in your pipe and smoke it to the bank? Ow. Uh, is that strange? These days? <laughs> it shouldn't be, but it seems like these days. Uh, disagreeing with people's positions mean that you can't, you can't like, like them or anything, but... Um, no, I'm glad that you have that attitude. Uh, even though you're wrong uh, on all the things that you disagree with me on, uh, I'm really glad that you like me as a person and think I'm okay. Really glad to hear that. Aww. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Because of you guys, my girlfriend is obsessed with the word fleam. Do something dumb, <laughs> I'm a fleam and I'm fleaming. There's a cute animal on TV, it's a little fleam. <laughs> <laughs> What's your state of mood today? Fleam. Anyway, hi rags, long, bad, and free. Oh, hello. That's funny. Sounds like your uh, your 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 vocabulary has been upgraded. Yeah, flame is one of those. Uh, flame is one of the high tier flump words. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it really is. It'll never go away. <laughs> Ism is the godfather, but Flame is the godfather. And Wumbo and stuff. They're all they're all sitting in there. Flame. When they Flames remake RE Five, I hope they update Wesker's volcano explosion death to match the movie's death by foot smoosh from closing. No, door. the vol. I never take away the volcano rocket death. You can't do that. That's that's. Uh, I'm happy for <laughs> foot smoosh to be, uh, foot smoosh to be upgraded like an, a DLC, but. Yeah, um, or maybe like a different character dies from it, or maybe he's like slowed down by that happening. The foot smoosh. Should be referenced I'm because happy that is, yeah. oh man, what a fucking lame ass death for him in those movies. He was in like, I mean, he was in all but one. I think he was in all but the first movie. We finally have Wesker at the in the yeah. final chapter getting killed, and it's because of a foot smoosh. It was ridiculous. That's the most. Oh my god, that was so lame. The high evolutionary can get a bit quirky, a little kooky if you would, a little silly, but yeah, is he willing to bust it down sexual style? I think if he did, he would have survived till the end of the film. Bust yeah. it down sexual style? I'm not I'm not know. certain what you actually mean by that. Maybe it's a reference. It might be a reference. Muller attempt the impossible and defend Fringy from a rags criticism. God. Ooh, from a rags criticism. Um let me see. I think that... I think... Ooh, this is good. I really like how in The Last Jedi, they use the Raddus being Wait. chased by... What? Yeah, is, I'm, I'm doing a criticism. How, how would it, wouldn't I have... What would that have to do with Fringy at that point? Oh, I thought he was going to defend against the criticism. No, Maul, no, Maul is meant to be def defending against the criticism you're making of me. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, let me see. Frankie, I really me? think that... I mean, I, if, if I'm... Since you asked me, Fringy, to be critical, um, I really feel like that big beak on your nose, it probably gets in the way of doing a lot of stuff in your daily life. Like, does it not bump into your microphone? Or whenever you, like, turn around to say hello to someone, you end up smacking someone in the face? Does it not get caught in, like, revolving doors? Um, and how do you... Like, does it not get in the way when you try to smell, like, a, a lovely flower or anything? No. Oh, Shouldn't... Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that you're weary on this criticism, like, you you keep asking whether the thing happens, I would assume, for him to be the intelligent man that he is, wouldn't incorporate this design if he didn't account for all of those wonderful everyday things that I'm sure he's able to deal with. It's not like it's just all enclosed. I'm sure he's got the kind of technology that allows him to smell at will, allows him to avoid hitting people. Smell at will. We have you know, the technology. Exactly. I'm sure he's <laughs> totally fine. I don't see why you'd assume any of those things would be valid. I, I wasn't. Oh, I wasn't assuming. I was just asking if that would happen all the time. I'm being very non-committal here. You oh, know. That was easy. <laughs> that was effortless. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Have any of you heard a word and completely misunderstood the meaning of it for much longer than you probably should have? Myself, for the longest time, thought the word caveat was a type of nut and just never bothered to figure out what it was. Hmm. I feel like the answer is yes, but I couldn't tell you what yeah, it is. Yeah, I know the answer is yes, but I'm trying to think of what words... Sure, yeah, of course. And I bet some of them, that's the thing, some of them 
we probably have that going on right now. We just don't know. Yeah, it. exactly. So, um, it's more likely for me that I I say euphemism without understanding what it means at all. Oh, what was our uh, oh death nail when it's death knell? That might be that might be one. But again, like the that's, nail in the coffin, like the death nail. Yeah, or I think that's what I that's what I used to think. But then it's like, huh. oh wait, no, it's, uh, it's a death nail. I can see that one though. That one makes like sense. Like there's a line of like I could I can connect the, like I just did. Like yeah. I could see like why you might oh, think what that. Was the, yeah. What was uh shoe? Uh, what's the what's the thing you the shoehorn? I I'd never heard of a shoehorn. So like whenever I said shoehorn, I this was an, I'm pretty sure this was an EFAP meme. I think it was on an when EFAP, I yeah. figured out in real time what a shoehorn was because I'd never heard of it. Um, Which so, is okay, you got two answers from me, so you know that's I my think contribution. One though. that would count for me is that I've always assumed to be hoisted by your own petard was like a clothing thing. Like, you, you catch your petard, which was some kind of clothing thing, on a hook. I thought that! Like, your petards were, like, an old pants? Or, yeah, like, I, uh, I like leggings? That, yeah. Or stockings? Yeah! I've had that one, too! I thought... I, I, I think as of... What are they... What, are, what is it What is it really? It's to do with, like, warfare. It's something like when you try and breach a door. A petard, I guess, is some kind of, like, explosive slash device that can help the door get open, but you can accidentally get yourself fucked up by it. Okay. All right. Um, I remember someone telling me this, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> like, <laughs> you and I are. Yeah, I also thought petards were like. Uh, I think it was like those like Napoleonic leggings that are white and have like the buttons on them. I thought those were like petards for whatever reason. I thought those were petards. I don't know why. I just hear that word, and that's the thing yeah, that pops into my head. Oh, it does sound like a, a clothing item, doesn't it? Like an yeah. old fashioned, an old timey clothing item. Yeah, one's petards. Yeah. Because hoisted by them as if you've you've pulled up your exactly. britches or whatever, and it and and those are what's keeping you up. Today huh. I watched EFAP react to the Wings of Redemption versus Boogie fight. Then by coincidence, I was listening to a catch up for one ninety four, and around thirty two minute mark, someone asked y'all a question about the likelihood of Wings of Redemption, Boogie, and Movie Bob getting into a fight. <laughs> um, Mola said he could see Wings of Redemption and Boogie get into a fight, but it would take extra to get Movie Bob into a fight. Holy fuck, that super chatter and Mola predicted <laughs> the future, and I just happened to stumble upon that convo and your reaction today. Well, yeah, because Movie Bob would, I just don't think he'd do it. Movie uh, Bob no, no has way. too much no of way. a. I don't want to say. Uh, I uh, Would self respect be the right word? Uh, maybe ego. Is it pride? Ego, ego, yeah, because I'm. Want. I'm to be humiliated. That's the like line that. I'm thinking here. Like self, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, obviously you got uh, Rings of Redemption has every reason to think he'd win, and he can get money. That's and money. Great yeah. combo. And Boogie will do basically like as long as they get for attention. attention. Yeah. Yeah. Boogie is Boogie is desperate in a different way than I think Wings kind of is. Um, hmm, yeah. And Movie Bob, it would take like you might. Get Bo Movie Bob to do it if this was years following a. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know um, if there's a price for. Yeah, I mean, uh, barring the whole, there's a price for, like a ridiculous price for anyone, right? But I don't really think it would be money for Movie Bob. I don't think that's. I don't think he's motivated by money. Cause look at how his like look at his YouTube channels and stuff, right? How shit his videos are in terms of their production and how they just don't change, and how like lazy he is in making them. I don't think money is a motivator for him. I think he's just sort of resting on that, like like he's subsisting on that kind of quality level that he's got going. So I don't think it would be money. Um, but maybe if it was. Like if he was if he was put into a similar position as Boogie, where like he used to be a famous movie reviewer from back in the day, and they've just had this long steady decline, and now everyone sees them as a joke, and he can't really he can't even get his you know channel to be successful anymore. Um, maybe, but I still think it would be far less likely than the others. Movie Bob's too prideful. He's got too much of an ego. I finally convinced my boyfriend to watch you guys with me after him laughing at me watching EFAP for years. Go. Oh, getting that entertainment all around the fam. Yeah, spread it around like a like a flame virus. Yeah. Uh in the book there's an unreliable wait a minute, is this like a part two? Okay, well if we 
if there is one, I guess we'll try and answer again then. It says, in the book, there's an unreliable narrator from the person's... From that person's perspective, the husband died in a suspicious circumstance. There can be inconsistencies between book and show. Uh... I feel like we got an incomplete series of thoughts there that set up the premise of this statement. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's... I'm looking around, I don't see any others that I mean, if we're talking those. about unreliable narrator, yeah, if, if you have an unreliable narrator or someone is giving you an account of events and there are inconsistencies there, then you can't quite call... Like, it, it's, it's part of the process, right? If um, there's a difference between, like, a title crawl saying something or out-of-universe um, you know, information being given to us as opposed to an agent's uh, recollection of events and information. Um, so, yeah, I, but, but without more specifics to the statement, I can't really say much more. If we eventually stumble across the other half, we'll try to that then. Yeah. Here's a thing I noticed about the movies on YouTube that you can pay to watch. While the view counts are hidden, there are plugins that let you preview the like ratio on thumbnails. Here's two. Guardians 1, 9.5k up... Or wait, 9.5k ratings at 98% liked. Wakanda Forever is 11k uh, ratings at 31%. Really? Really? Why? People would get that to dislike... I don't know if that... But that movie I would even... imagine that they oh. mostly have very positive ratings because the only people who would like buy a movie to watch on YouTube would be people who've already seen the movie or well, have like, like Wakanda recommendations. Forever wasn't like Love and Thunder and Quantumania or nope. like I say like not even MOM would I would expect to end up with that. Yeah, that's I don't weird. know. I actually that don't know weird. why that's that way. Are you sure that plugin's accurate? Well, I mean the Guardians one sounded accurate, but Wakanda Forever doesn't. Yeah. But maybe, I don't know, maybe we missed a whole hate wave. Um, search Liquid Richard Banquet Banger on YouTube. The guy has several albums of this. I, I am aware of the, uh, the albums. They're just made up of sound clips of uh, good old wings, I think. If that sounds tempting to anyone out there, it's Liquid Richard, yeah. Is, Liquid uh, Richard. Is this a punishment stream? Also, still going to recommend Space... Bear Beast, I'm guessing. Terror Fright to you. Single player can be surprisingly scary, and multiplayer is a blast. Fair space? Enough. What's this? Space Beast? Um, it's just... I think it's... Well, because they've spelt it uh, Space Best Terror Fright, but I assume it's Space Beast Terror Oh, okay, Terror here it is. Fright. Space Beast Terror Fright. Uh, look it up on it. It's very positive ratings on Steam. Um... Uh, a very hard arcade style roguelike permadeath first person shooter marine must brave dark claustrophobic and terrifying intense space beast infested spacecraft in order to extract critical data and lucrative upgrades can you make it out alive interesting I'll put that on the wish list it's 15 bucks and it came out June of 2022 so it's a pretty new game interesting I've never heard of this game before right. looks huh, interesting yeah I'll put it on my wish list so maybe I can take a look at it later which Soda, do you prefer Coca Cola, Pepsi, or Dr Pepper? Of those Coke. three, I prefer Coke. Yep. Dr Pepper the most. I like the cherry. That's I really enough, dig I like Coca Cola uh, cherry as well. Do you? Are, are there any of those you dislike between the three of us? Do we dislike any of those? I barely had Dr Pepper. It's just not something that you find a lot here. It's Coke and Pepsi. Um, I do not like Pepsi. I think it's hmm. too sweet. I like Pepsi. I, 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 I like, don't like that the it's taste sweet. of it. But Coke. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, figured I that's uh, so just kind of going for it. I don't like yeah. Coca Cola. Coke is king for me. If I have a soda, it will be a Coke. Yeah. Not assuming we're talking about like energy drinks, which I feel like are a different sort of category of beverage. Uh, a similar but different category. You have your sodas and then you have your energy drinks. But yeah, Coke for me. Uh, vanilla Coke, if possible. I really like vanilla Coke. So this is interesting. More, a while back you wondered which of the Mary Party games are considered the best. For board mechanics, it's generally three and six are considered the best, uh, and then two, and then seven slash Superstar, and then eight slash DS, then four, then Super, then five, then one. Does that sound right to you, Fringy? Wait, could you say that again? 
I don't know how familiar you are with Mario Party, but they've said that generally speaking, the I guess the world of Mario fans like to say that the best board mechanics across the Mario Party franchise goes from 3 and 6 to 2 to 7 and Superstar to 8 and DS to 4 to Super to 5 to 1. So the thing is, is that I don't have as much experience with Mario Party as I do with like other spinoff Mario series. I think I've played... I'm pretty sure I played like two, three, eight, and I think that might be it. What's crazy is so yeah. I think on Consider. Dolphin, is it is it four, five, six, seven on Dolphin? Uh, yeah. I think four, and five, eight. six, and seven were the game. No, oh, no eight wait, was on Wii. Wii. Eight was Wii. Yeah. Sorry, Dolphin has Wii games. <laughs> um, but I mean, the board mechanics I know do like get changed around uh, every couple of entries or every entry or so. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just not super familiar with that. Uh, I streamed Mario a whole Party. bunch of uh, uh, Mario Party with the catch ups before. Out of four, five, six, and seven, I, I feel like four is my uh, favorite board mechanics. Uh, as for okay. minigame quality, that's a tough one. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. <laughs> Are there yeah. any games that have board mechanics that you actively dislike and it dissuades you from playing them? Um, I'll tolerate all the Mario Parties that I've played, but I feel like uh, some of the choices they make from game to game are like, oh, why have you done this? This feels like yeah, less some of them choice. are strange. Some of them hmm. are just strange. All right. Interesting legacy, though. How long has it been since uh, a Mario Party now? Uh, I think the most recent one came out like a year or two ago. Okay. Uh, another first time donor here. Your reaction videos for Kenobi, Mando, and Boba Fett gave me so much joy. And your extensive Doctor Strange, Mom, and Star Wars critiques, of course, are a league of their own. Thank you for the great work. Have a great day. Oh, you. thank you. You have a great day, too. Uh, we live in a world where someone who's been deaf their whole life can have their hearing restored and have the Aquafina rap from the first, the new mermaid be the first thing they hear. Oh, God, that's that's logically possible now. Oh, oh my God. Wow. They're just like, what were, they thinking with that? what were they thinking with that that song? I don't understand. See uh, YMS's review of Little Mermaid? I did. Yeah, no. that part is of his video, he's, you can tell he's so fucking done. He's just like, it's just it's just noises. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Why it's did they so do this? It's so bizarre. Why did they put it in? Was it? I think that they put in new songs to is? essentially justify their like existence. Is? Like, is I, it? Yeah, but like, we're not like new songs, sure. But that song, that song's um, like, like why I that? I don't song? get it. I think it was for like little kids wanted, and stuff. Maybe, maybe. I, I guess, uh, to me, I just imagine that they recorded it and then they were editing it and they looked at each other and they realized that they'd made a mistake, but they were too uncomfortable with like cutting it because it would be to essentially admit that it was a huge mistake. A shit thing, and to, yeah. to sh <laughs> like, that it's just like, all right, fuck it. Just, you know, throw it in there. So it's like the reverse issue that they had with Be Prepared. Where at the last moment they realize, oh, oh shit, people God, really, yeah. really want this song, so we have to make it. It's like the and reverse. So this they... is at the last moment. Oh shit, we have to like, we have to cover our tracks, so to speak. We have to try and mitigate this. But they didn't. It's just in there. <laughs> it's just a it's song just totally in the movie. Man. But again, I, I, man, <laughs> it's so awful. <laughs> it's gotta be like, ah. Uh, I, I wonder if I was God or if I could talk to the wizard who knows all things. And, what's the difference? Uh, but if I, <laughs> I would love to know, right? How many people saw that clip on Twitter or YouTube or Tick, whatever, Instagram, and then decided to not go and see the movie just because of that? And how much money that lost Disney? How much money that one song lost because them? Because nobody went, because I don't believe anyone saw that clip and is like yep we got to go see this movie now it's only negative it has an people, only negative effect on your movie how many people wanted to see it because aquafina's in it i wonder how many Ooh. actually an actual number do you think that it's like 10 may like how many aquafina fans are there who will well, like, go and see be, all of her how many stuff? aquafina fans would care enough about her to see a movie that has her in it just because she's in it cuz like but i'm a fan of a lot of people but you know playing a you know, like playing a bird, like playing a like Albatross a like or whatever she is, a booby. Or a 
I don't, I don't know um, um, how many people would want to watch. Yeah, like, I don't know how much of a draw it is compared to how many people would be put off by that song. Instead of like, oh, we got Anthony Hopkins to voice King Triton or something <laughs> yeah. like that, you know? Anthony or I'd Hopkins be like, oh, okay. Scuttle the bird in, in The Little Mermaid. Yeah. Would you rather? He... <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. He has to teach Ariel how to be a human. Like, he has to teach Antonio Banderas how to be Zorro or something like that. Oh. Ain't it funny, Rags, that we're practically, like, at the point where we could record a brand new EFAP movies for Mask of Zorro? <laughs> it's like... Yeah, um, we... Oh. I certainly Is would that... be for 300. I feel like I've forgotten the whole movie already. <laughs> I feel like I have, yeah. Huh. Someday. Someone's keeping those from rolling out so quick. It's just yeah. harder, and tonight we dine in hell, and yeah. some shot. That movie is, uh... Yeah, it I was, mean, it I, was I, fun I like that to movie. watch. It's <laughs> yeah, it's bad. There were some parts that were like, oh, this but is kind of neat it. visually, you know? It's slower than, it's, I, than it's I remember the, it. It's probably the movie he's made that I enjoy the most. I think I like Watchmen more than that, but... Uh, would you rather never need to use the toilet again, or never need to use a shower again? Because you're always just clean. Same idea as the previous one. So, my concern with the- I, I wonder if there's like some crazy shit that would happen to me, like, if I was always clean, never exposed to germs or anything, like if there's some- if there's some crazy knock-on sort of side effect that I'm not seeing there with that one, you know? I assume in the spirit of the question, there is not. I presume- I presume it's just that you're always- yeah, in the same way that I guess there's nothing wrong with your metabolism because you don't need to poop. Yeah. Um, hmm. Easy one oh, for me. Oh damn! I don't. I don't know if that's an easy one for me. I'm not sure. Oh wait, Marags, what's your what's your line of logic? Give me. I would. I would easily not have to use the loo. There have been way more disruptions in my life because I've needed to use the bathroom. There have been way more times in my life where I've had to stop what I'm doing or where I'm uncomfortable or where I'm looking for a bathroom because I need to... And this is like for every human. This is something that gets in the way of you living your life. A shower is often something that you do uh, once you wake up or at the end of the day, you know, depending. And it's, like, it's a thing you do. You get clean. And... It, and, and like you know that that that's gets in the way of life, I suppose. But showers like are something you sort of like plan for and schedule. But when it comes to using the bathroom, it's you can't really schedule and plan those. They pop up. They happen. Oh, there's the call of nature. I I need to go and do something now, and it, it literally interrupts whatever you're doing. And it's never like pleasant. I guess it can be afterwards. You're like, oh, that was an amazing shit I just had. That feels nice. But, you know, the same can be said for vomiting. How amazing do you feel after you finally throw up and you, you're like, oh, oh, finally. And you feel so much better. But that doesn't mean that you want to, you know, vomit or anything like that. And I think that, yeah, I, I would absolutely rather not having to ever use the loo. Um, because it would just be so much better for my life if I never had those interruptions or discomforts. And sometimes a shower is just, like, therapeutic, and it feels nice to, at the end of the day, just have the hot water running down around you, and you scrub-a-dub a bit, and it just feels good, and you, you like it to the where you look forward to bathing sometimes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Goodbye, yeah, Poopin. Probably. I, I think maybe. at first I was wondering about a time, like how how long do you spend pooping compared to showering? But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think the, I I don't know I don't know that anybody enjoys pooping, but sometimes you enjoy taking a shower. Absolutely, and plus, I've never taken a shower that makes me want to poop, but I've t <laughs> I've taken poops that make me want to take a shower. <laughs> So there is also that, but yeah, um, yeah. I, if if I could live my life without ever having to um, use you know, poo and pee, uh, have the have to do that, that'd be great. Plus, it will ensure that your butthole is always very clean. Uh, so that that's always nice, you know. Have a clean butthole, that's great. Um, but yeah, just 
uh, being on a plane, oh, we're on a plane and we're flying, and this is already like kind of a lame experience, you know, because flying is not really fun or anything. And then he's like, oh, I kind of have to, I kind of have to pee. I have to kind of go to the bathroom, but you know, we're sort of starting our descent, and you know that those can start out like 30, 40 minutes out sometimes, and oh, just sitting there or what? How many times have you been in the movie theater? And you've had a soda or popcorn or something, and you have to pee, but you don't want to leave the movie because yeah, you're in the theater. But remember, it wasn't pee, it was poop, wasn't it? I think so it was just all toilet guess. use, I thought. As far oh, as it was, I know, it was, oh, toilet, it was use. All toilet use, then yeah, absolutely. Okay. 100%. <laughs> I thought I it was wish... just pooping, but if it's also peeing, then yeah, that's a no-brainer. Bonus. Even if it was just pooping, I'd go with it, but yeah, if we chuck in penis, uh, penis, penis. <laughs> peeing... Then it would just be like, yeah. I feel like uh, the next is... one's actually a no-brainer as well. Do you want to know what okay. it is? I would love to know what it is. You no longer need to, and you choose between these two, eat or sleep. Um, sleep. Sleep. Obviously. So, 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 here's the, here's the question, though. If you no longer need to... S no, wait, no, wait. What the fuck? Yes, of course I wouldn't want to sleep. Yeah, I just have all the time, always. Why? Do shit. So... Deprive yourself the. I guess you could eat if you wanted to. It's about need, right? What I was. But oh, consider... no, that's what I was wondering. So I guess baked into the question as well is that you're not going to like die earlier because of that, right? Because like when you're asleep, all of your. Uh, there's a lot of important work that's going on to recover. I assume it means like, you no longer uh... require food to function, but you also. Or you don't require sleep, sleep to function. Yeah. Okay, that's I mean, I if we as well. if we assume that you there are like zero health detriments from not being from no longer needing to sleep, then it's I mean you gain like you you've just added like another fifty percent to your life of time. Yeah, and you've erased all the times you feel tired. That's incredible. Oh, being tired, feeling tired is like sometimes Dude, feeling like, tired is worse than feeling sick. There's plenty like, of times where I'd be like, I'd rather I just had like I just felt sick. Then feel tired. And, oh, feeling and, tired. And of course, suck. to some extent, you can enjoy your sleep, but at the same time, like you're only food, enjoying it because you got I, tired. You're enjoying. Right? You're yeah, enjoying exactly. Waking up, I think. Well, I think it's, you, it's the contrast enjoy... of the good and the bad, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> you can the, still you lie enjoy down, the. You know. You still... Yeah, you you enjoy the bookends of sleep. You enjoy the little part at the beginning where you're falling asleep. You enjoy waking up rested, and that's like the the tiny little percentages at either end. And then you have the six, seven, eight, nine hours of you just wasting your life, essentially, <laughs> in between those little yeah, some bits. Some people, uh, astral, do the thing where they can dream, manipulate their own lucid dreams dream. or whatever, right? Lucid dream, that's Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather live, live, than I'd rather lucid <laughs> wake than lucid dream. I'd rather well, lucid I mean, live the reality is, dream. I can't lucid dream, so that's not a factor for me. Yeah, I, I, I can't yeah. either, so yeah. Um, but he did add, if the answer is easy for this one, what would it take in terms of like amount? So he would, his counter offer, because he assumed we'd already pick the no sleep one. That what if it was like you no longer have to eat, or you know you have to sleep uh, for like an hour and a half per day? Like that's all it needs to be for the full rest. Um, I think at that point it would get a lot more competitive because if I don't need to eat, I would say that I'd probably end up being a much healthier person. If I <laughs> I'm not I'd sure still take, because I'd still I really take like eating. the taste of food, and I assume I wouldn't uh, like stop too, eating but, it outright. And plus, it's but, I mean, it's we, quite we've a talked about this thing. before, right? It the is uh, the thing. difference between you know what well, would I mean, be more just, tempting just... is eliminate sleep or eliminate the uh, detriments of eating and drinking. What? Pooping so like pain? it's impossible to get. Impossible um, to get like overweight or get like well, uh, heart, oh, heart disease. Oh, like you could yeah, eat like anything you want and stay healthy. Theoretically, oh, not that's... that you would, but you could just eat ice cream forever and, and you'd be as healthy as the healthiest person on earth. Uh, well, you know, that's, that's a lot more competitive, but I'm still eliminating sleep. I think I'd still eliminate sleep because, uh, just, you just, yeah, for all the reasons we just, went over. <laughs> yeah, and plus, too many things that are good for you actually do taste good. It's... I love, like, broccoli and Brussels sprouts that are, you know, seasoned and baked and stuff like that. There's... A lot of really good food can be very delicious. So, yeah. And I'm not big into sweets anyway. I mean, my vice, I guess, is soda here and there and some energy drinks. So, well, so I, at that I, point, then, how tempting would it have to be before it would tilt? I mean, it, it would basically be, like, how much sleep, like, maybe the amount of sleep you cut off. It was If it was, you only have to sleep half the amount of time, you know, it might start really getting competitive. But I'm not, I'm not certain. Yeah, it's a bit lopsided, I think. 
very much so. Like, it would be difficult to turn it back over, I'd say. Um, Rags has always been EFAP's most queer character. Understanding Rags' sexuality is crucial to understanding him as a person. Bilbus Bungleton. Oh, oh well, that's... He's that's a philosopher, true, so I doubt that he's lying. <laughs> that's... Well, I mean, I, I believe that he maybe believes that, but it's actually not true at all. I, wow. In, in term, in, when it comes to understanding me and who I am, I think that's a pretty, that's actually a really minor part of any any of that, right? Like, when I'm really trying to figure out who is this person, I don't think it ever occurs to me, as like, well, who do they like to fuck? You know, that's just never really, enter, that's super low down on the list. Um, trying to figure out if I've been donating to the wrong person for the last six to eight months. No, no, this is us. Hello. No, this is us. Hey, uh, this is us. This Hello is there. us. Sorry Whoever if, uh, it is, you have, this is it. We take a while to catch up on um, different ones, but we are here. Thank yes, you very much. We, we are sorry, but we, hopefully you can understand that because we do answer <laughs> every one of these, we can get caught up. And we have a big backlog of stuff coming out as well. Uh, but no, this, this is the right place. Absolutely. Whoever you were thinking you were donating to, this is them. If you now, if you now traveled back to the time that you started EFAP, how much do you think you could tell them about the future of media before your old self would think you are deliberately fucking with them and stop believing in future you? If I told them the the like, if I if I went back to us three back then and gave you a quick version of Dial of Destiny, I would feel like like I feel like me back then would be like, come on, we just had TLJ. <laughs> like you are joking. Uh, that's. Yeah, which one would I not believe the most? So I probably Ooh. I could probably believe the Flash, even though that's ridiculous. The yeah, I could that. believe the Flash because we would know a, how we'd have Zack Snyder stuff out by then, so we'd be like, yeah, this is a natural progression of like, Zack Snyder though, shit, you know? You're like the next Indiana Jones. He's gonna be a depressed alcoholic who's been divorced and his son is dead and his students hate him and he doesn't want to live. You'd be like, what? That doesn't. What do you mean? Why would anyone do that? Like, I would be baffled by it, not just in terms of, like, why would you want to make Indiana Jones that way, but they're never going to make money with that. Of course they wouldn't make that decision. Like, capitalism ever going to kick in? Hello? <laughs> would you want to make money with Adventure Man? Would you, I just, that one might be the one of the most unbelievable, because we would have had TLJ already, which would have been hard to believe. Well, we would have had Crystal Skull by then. Yeah, but Crystal Skull's nowhere near the uh, Dial of Destinies, like, what they do but to Indy. But you Indy. would think... But you'd be thinking based off of, like, the ending of Crystal Skull, which, as far as I know, leaves him in a pretty good place. People tend to like the ending. I'm, uh, um, I'm less positive about it, but I'm still okay with it. Yeah, so uh, the idea that they made, uh, they made another one after that that completely undermines the stuff from that already very contentious film uh, in terms of its ending... That seems pretty... Like, when you factor that into it, it does seem really unbelievable. You know what's but... funny, though? If you told us that the First Order aren't going to know which way is up, that's going to be a thing. Be like... Mm. Hmm. It's... It's, real. it's like, mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you went back to us... I don't know which one of the things would sort of break the camel's back in terms of, you know, believing it's true. But when you do give them that list that has all of the... Here's every franchise that's been ruined... You know, and Game of Thrones, and they'd be like, "Oh, you're fuck, you're right." It's gonna be a big one, though, because if you that summarize one won't everything, be much like, for Whoa. me because I wasn't into Game of Thrones. But I bet for a lot of people, they would be like, "No, they wouldn't do it. literally everyone, <laughs> every single character, really, like everyone." There's no way, not literally everyone, obviously, right? Oof. What are you, Fringy? What would be the thing that would make you go, nah, not true? Um. Oh. Um. <laughs> the fun funny one might be them coming up to me and saying, you know, Solo, like, you know, even six months later, Solo will not make money. I think I'd be like, nah, Star Wars, come on. <laughs> Ooh, that might be. Well, that is post DLJ. Or maybe, maybe, even, still. maybe even that uh, if you told me in 2017 the MCU will in six years reach a point of like actual non profitability, I think I would have said that no might way. be the one. Maybe. That's a maybe. That's, yeah, no that's way. To, to say to one, us, yeah. uh, you know, when you said there's no real way like that the MCU can be killed because they'd have to release a bad project in every single like fucking storyline that they're running, and they and then we nod and you and you they just start staring at you. You're like what? No. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. 
going down. The only one that could probably save them is uh, a split with Sony, and split is a nice way of putting it. And then Guardians is gone. If you, hmm, if you had said that, let's see, we have, yeah, the solo one I guess has me thinking. Even after TLJ, would we think the next movie wouldn't have made money? All right, what if, no, we, I was about to, because in my head I was wondering, what if we told ourselves that um, episode nine would make half as much as episode uh, seven? I think we would believe that based on the trajectory and, you know. Yeah, how, I could believe so, that. Yep. The solo one's much harder to believe in terms Yeah, of the solo one's out. harder to believe that it didn't make money. I think it's Star Wars relatively money. easy to believe when you're there and then, though, when you consider everything. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you could see the decline, and yeah, um, yeah, I think so. There's probably a decent amount of things because there's a lot of bad shit that's happened that would be otherwise unbelievable. A lot of things led us here. We'll say that. Hey, Rags. Hey. Super Chat Catchup one sixty nine called and told me you love thinking about huts eating their own goo. Remember, huts eating their own goo. I think you mean cream. Different. Oh, geez, it actually makes me <laughs> cringe. Right. Oh it's my god, true. it really cream, does. Remember? The it is hot. Cream, it right? is, yeah, it is hot cream. Yeah, not goo. It's um, cream. Boy, yeah. wow. Goo is yeah. easier and cleaner. But the cream Scraping comes right out. Off that cream with all of the little flakes of skin and hair in it too. <laughs> do they have hair? Do huts have hair? I'm they sure they cream. got a little bit. Are right? they mammals? Yeah. They... Um. Oh well. I mean. Oh damn! I've never because th they look like slugs, but I mean they're not they're not they're not quite like slugs. I would imagine they don't look. But yeah, they don't look very like slug like. Well, the reason they don't know? look moist is because they clean it up between shots. All the cream, you, you, they don't want you to see that because it's a bit adult. You know, you want to scare the kids off, make some money. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, would you rather not? Oh wait, that's the one we did read. Was there? Any... Oh yeah, I get it. Well. So instead of my beloved God of War Ragnarok New Game Plus, or six million times recommended Sekiro, you play Gollum. I should be furious. But it was funny <laughs> as hell, and these streams are now among my favorites. Yes, please still play Sekiro and God of War New Game Plus, you dumbo. Some few characters left. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Gollum and, uh... was an incredibly amusing stream what to was, watch. was um, an adventure, yes. You're playing this again? Have you suffered brain damage? Why are you punishing yourself like this? Also, Barrow Trauma slash Space Beast Terror Fight would be both great for Halloween EFAP gaming. Oh, another Space Beast one. Thing is, uh, EFAP's gonna be busy on October. Holy fuck. You guys know what's We're happening We're gonna be then. very busy on October. October is Halloween month. Halloween Ooh. is a wonderful time. Did we play... Colonial Marines for a Halloween EFAB game. Oh, I know that we, we played, played Fire Team Elite. Fire Team Elite. Elite. <laughs> yeah, <that one. laughs> uh, we lame. played Colonial Marines for General. That was I think. a while ago. I can't remember. That was. I can't something. remember what it. Yeah, what got us to play that? That game shit. Uh, I for one can't wait for Daedalic Entertainment's next installment. The Lord of Ring Gimli, where we explore Gimli's past before the movies and find out what led to his rampant, unrelenting racism toward hobbits. It will play exactly like the same as Gollum <laughs> when you're crawling across walls and stuff. <laughs> but as Gimli, I'd play it. Especially if they made it. Holy fuck. Uh, no person you've encountered has successfully defended the sequel trilogy, so why not try a machine? Ask ChatGPT why the insane things happened in TLJ and TROS and it'll put up arguments as to why they happened, or at least try to. Make for a fun stream. I assume it would just be, like, a little bit nonsensical, right? Like, it, it just has sentences that are... You know, it would be like, like, the bird flew because the fire is hot, or just something like that. And you just go, oh. I think ChatGPT is a bit better than that, right? Um, I don't know if it is when it comes to, like, very specific arguments, or is it? Does it have the capability to, like, answer... Would it, would it actually be able to make an argument, or, or uh, that would work for it something might. like that? It might. Though it's got some interesting opinions when it comes to, like, what would you rather, you know, save or anything like, like that. The, when you get to, like, that level, I'm sure it makes, like, really obvious mistakes. I think someone asked it, like, what is EFAP? And it said it was run by MovieBob. It's like, oh, 
Well, true. <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, sounds like Dead Reckoning should have taken notes from the greatest sequel, no, greatest movie of all time, Iron Man 3. No worries, though. Mm. People will learn of that movie's wonder when Morley releases his Iron Man 3 unbridled praise. Also, hi, dog and frog. Hello. I don't know if I'm going to be making a praise on that film anytime soon. Man, just saying. Uh, got my pops listening in because he's a huge Mission Impossible fan. Oh, no. Oh, uh -oh. well. <laughs> Used to blast. You got a couple recommendations, right? Well, yeah. I mean, we went through the series, but that couldn't have been... Uh... Oh, hey. He's, it says, used to blast the theme song, pick me up from school. We share in your great disappointment here today. Ah, gotcha. I thought we were going to be a little lonely on the uh, Not Liking Dead Reckoning team. Except for, I'm guess, glad we were not. Soon. Love you guys. Made it through over 150 EFAPs. Found you around 200. One note, play more party games. Never laughed as hard as I had watching all of you play Gothic after I consumed acid. To show I mean no harm, high ranks. Hello. We'll do Gothic again. <laughs> It'll happen. Mm -hmm. I really want to do the fucking the champed up thing, but the last time we tried it, like fucked up. I don't know why. We should uh, we should do that offline. Just see if just test it, see if it works again. Because it might have been because I yeah. guess metal was over. I don't know if that could make a difference to my shitty internet. That could be it. Who but knows? I mean, Gothic phone works. So. Um, Rags, look up the poem The Chaos, 1922, and read a couple verses, then see how well Metal does it. Metal's not here, though. What? 1922. The Chaos. Um, the Chaos is... Oh, interesting. So, the this is a classic English poem containing about 800 of the worst irregularities in English spelling and pronunciation. Um... Oh, I get why he wants me wants metal to read this as well. We might actually want to save this. This will be interesting. Okay, um, bookmark it. But to yeah, it, maybe next time metal's around, we could do this because it's about, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, if you even want just the, there it is right there. Uh, that's it's just a little HTML. Um, evil. Yeah, this is an evil poem. <laughs> okay. Uh. Will you ever make any videos on Buffy? Who is your favorite Buffy character, and why is it Giles? <gasps> he's not my favorite character. But he's pretty great. And yes, there will be videos on Buffy eventually, and they'll be extensive. Be it on EFAP or on main channel. Who knows? Who knows? Um, out of all the actresses in recent media, who portrays the bestest ever characters? Who would you be most willing to date, including but not limited to Daisy Ridley, Brie Larson, Morpheth Clark, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, and Sophie DiMartino, who's Sylvie? So you saying who's the best out of those ones? In terms of dateability, I have well, that's no the second idea, question. Right? I guess first question is just who's the is the, like if I'm taking this seriously, the they who would. <laughs> Which is the best character of a trade out of them lot? Um, I guess that's Ray, Captain Marvel, Galadriel, and Elena, Sylvie. Ooh, um, what a I think. Oh, let's see. In worst characters, could could you just write them out real quick so I can kind of remember them all? Um, we have Ray. Ray. I'll just write them out as you say them to me. Captain Marvel. Okay. Galadriel from Rings of Power. Yep. Phoebe Waller-Bridge's Helena. Helena Shaw. Sylvie. Sylvie. Let's see. Worst characters. So... Probably... Galadriel? I think she's the best out of the lot. No, worst. Oh. I think Ray might be the best. I mean, the thing about Ray is that she's got nothing going on, so that yeah, kind of makes yeah. her the best. Yeah, so Ray is the best. Then it's. I mean, it's worth remembering, Rag. Sylvie, like, created the multiverse that may lead to, like, cataclysmic multiversal wars or whatever. So oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't, I don't so know I guess that does make that. Sylvie the worst. Or, well, 
I don't know. Like... I have no idea what it means. Like, I don't know what it means to do it, but she didn't care about the consequences. She just wanted revenge. She didn't really. Oh, yeah. Mad. Not caring it... about the con. For... Yeah. Not caring. I That puts her worst. Yeah. So Sylvie's worst. I think Galadriel is second worst. Who's then, next? Then <sighs> Captain Marvel. No. I, uh, oh. No, uh, Captain Marvel for me is I... just under Ray. I was I was gonna but because I, Helena but, leaving like Indy for dead in multiple instances. But yeah. remember Captain Marvel killing the spaceships full of people when well, they were just like Ray. her the other well, day. Well, but but remember she was trying to save Earth at the very least. Yeah, that's more understandable so, than um, <laughs> Shaw just leaving her godfather to die several times. Yeah, like but Captain Marvel is, does is the fact that things, she didn't try either. though. What do you mean? Knowing that there's a deception and she didn't try to tell everyone about the deception I mean, or anyone about if the they're deception. Launching, if they're launching, like, the missiles at Earth right now and trying to attack you and you fight back, like... But doesn't I mean, she destroy the missiles and then she goes for the ships? Well, there's room for her to say that. I don't think that she would have much ground for that argument, though. It's, it's, especially it's, when, she's no, cheering no when she's doing it. But there's no, like, acknowledgement of that even being a thing and the cheering on well, the killing the people that The cheering she was is liking. the thing that's bizarre, but, like, as for actually stopping them at this point in time like i like she's just trying to save earth <laughs> like she does so. um the purpose of destroying it is to then threaten the other ones so that they fuck off the so problem that is leave. that she cheers yeah. yes the cheering is the bad part why are you happy about this this should not be a happy moment helena wasn't happy helena when she... locked he, she locked indy i know she was fucking awful which... and she was uh, celebrating yeah, just trying to weigh up those died. two things yeah. um yeah, I, I, okay, so it's Ray, Captain Marvel. Ray's number one because she's Helena just boring but good. Yeah, boring but Captain good. Marvel. It's mostly Ray. boring but good. <laughs> Same yeah, thing. Yeah, so we have Ray, Captain Marvel, Helena sure. Shaw, Galadriel, then Sylvie. Probably. What's Galadriel's big crimes again? So Galadriel's big crimes are the the endless pursuit of an evil force despite everyone telling her otherwise that leads to the deaths of many people her desire to genocide orcs and torture them her unwillingness to make really any changes in her personality and what's probably worst in terms of the morality is what happens at the very end where when she learns that Halbrand is Sauron she doesn't tell anyone about it and continues to assist in making sure that the rings of power are forged knowing that it's something that sauron wanted to happen man you are you remember the rings of power a lot better than i do <laughs> so that's that's why i that's why instinctively i said galadriel's the worst and then you did the you reminded me of the multiverse thing about sylvie that's right which puts sylvie at the at the, the worst scope but of what she's doing and the consequences yeah, of it are beyond this, anything that galadriel is capable of yeah in the, in the galadriel Earth. essentially could be morally culpable for is essentially morally culpable for everything that happens regarding Sauron and the Rings of Power going forwards, and she's essentially hiding that she did that for everyone, and in fact she enabled him to do that knowingly. Um, but yeah, so that that puts her at number two. Um, Helena Shaw is just like villainous, you know, she's like a villain um, at that level. You know, trying to kill Indy and stuff like that. That's like, okay, you're you're bad. You're well, a villain. Right? Doing you're it for bad. Money, so. Yeah, like a villain. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think yeah, I think that yeah. Two of these people are trying to be hero. Well, I guess Gladwell's trying to be a hero, but you know, rings of power is rings of power. Also, I think that but... this answer reflects the second one. Most willing to date the one that's the least likely to kill me. Yeah, I would date. Yeah, I would. Of of all of these people, I would absolutely date uh, Ray. Because remember, Galadriel is in love with Elrond in the Rings of Power, right? And look at how she treats him. They're kind of like a fucking piece of shit, right? Um, Captain Marvel, I feel like she'd just be an insufferable cunt all of the time. Uh, kind of like Galadriel, actually. Um, and oh, kind of like Helena Shaw, actually. Well, and kind of like Sylvie, actually. I feel like Rey is kind of bland but normal well, like you could have conversations with ray, with ray. Is a character. ray is like a nothing character she's just a nothing character who does good things essentially but three like, movies as for, it's just as for maybe ascertaining she's... her core motivations or like really her flaws at all it's it's well, kind I... of the strange thing right is like i don't even understand what it means for someone like ray to exist in reality 
just have like no problems really no flaws <laughs> that at least that aren't evident in the story anyway just like generic hero lady and let me say this as well um i think that being in a relationship with any of these of all of those potential relationships i think that you could really change ray like she would be the most affected in a good way from being in a relationship with a person because she is kind of she's like good and virtuous but in the blandest way so if you were in a relationship with ray you know years and years pass by that would like actually like affect who she is as a character and her relationship with you but i feel like the others are just so dug in to what they are that you can't like it, it it's to the point where it would either drive you insane or maybe even be a danger to you well yeah plus ray's cute so there you go um OCMI1 is simple. It's more dedicated to stealth, maintaining secrecy, quiet infiltration, and public stealth. They don't make any kind of spy movie like that for Mission Impossible or Bond anymore. In some ways, I find them more complex than modern spy movie formats. Um, I guess whenever someone refers to MI1 as simple, they probably mean that the stakes are smaller and the set pieces are smaller. But you could be right in terms of there's a complication in terms of you know loyalties and connections where people are, what they're doing, and why. Um, Mission Impossible 1 doesn't, like, you know, it's not the simplest thing to follow ever. It's just, uh, I don't know, it feels like it's nuts and bolts spies instead of something more grand and crazy. Which would be nice for Mission Impossible to do, but I don't think they'll ever do that again. Yeah, I think we've gone down the action kind of route, the more James Bondy style of uh, spy stuff, yeah. The Len Tatsuki thought she paid $40 for Gollum and nearly lost her mind when she realized she'd almost paid twice as much as everyone. What? Lost her mind when she realized she'd paid almost twice as much. Yeah, because full price, it's more than that. Everyone loves this game. It's, um, it's bad enough on its own when you find out it's not like $10. You're like, what the fuck? It's also obviously yeah, some sort long. of a money laundering scheme or something. <laughs> Eight man. Uh, sucking darkest clear, leading on your death's construction. I feel like I've accidentally. Gone Either I fucked this up or they did, because uh, like it's like lyrics, but in pieces. Sorry if uh, that's my fault. I've jumbled that or not. The Elf King sounds like a cross between a male Gal Gadot and Zap Brannigan. <laughs> okay. I can't believe Metal's people created the gaming equivalent of the Holocaust. Uh, oh my goodness. Well, Golem's pretty bad. Well, it was pretty bad. Uh, never thought a VTuber called Pippa Pipkin would fill the niche Wolf once did, but seeing her stream where she gradually found out about the shitstorm that was Velma and its creator being an actually awful person during interviews was genuinely cathartic. I've never heard of him. Never heard of him. Don't but... know anything about VTubers and uh, plan to keep it that way. Almost pretty bad. Are we one second? A music recommendation for Maula this time. Based on what you said in the past, you may enjoy the LOL band Pentakill, as they've had choir and orchestra uh, in universe bands are neat. Also, hi, Fragsy. Oh, hi. Hi, hello there. Hi, who, who is that? <laughs> I know of Pentakill because uh, they made songs around when I used to watch the LCS. They're a. Uh... Oh, brand it's the new. LCS, the League, uh, like... League of Legends, like esports oh. uh, thing. All right. Um, the 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 I forget, I forget what it's called. Is it? Did they make a song called Pentakill and their band is called Pentakill? Because I remember there's a Mordekaiser song that I quite like. I think that was one of the more popular ones. But yes, I've heard of them. They're neat. Um, I hope you have all have the longest long dong Lombleton. You bet, man. One hundred percent. All the way. Have you seen the chaos that is Josh Strife Hayes reacting to two videos, reacting to his video, then adding the layer of reacting to someone, reacting to him, reacting to them, reacting to him, all live? No, I haven't. I do know him, though. I know oh, I know of him. Yeah, we're not, I we don't, we don't, know, each don't other, even but, know him. Uh, I don't know any of them. Yeah, he's a popular YouTuber. I like him. Uh, he uh, plays MMOs and like grades them and rates them and such. That's yeah, pretty interesting. 
Ever watched Wednesday? It has a Tism finale and another major oof in it too, but otherwise I'd say it stands as a solid show and would recommend it. Also, the finale has the villain shoot at a swarm of bees with her gun. Um, I... Ooh, nice. I did watch it. Funnily enough, I watched it uh, while Metal was over. It would be like if I woke up early uh, or if we were having food, we put on something and Wednesday filled the slot for a little bit. It was okay. Okay. And yes, the finale wasn't very good at all. The thing is, I, I think I said at the time, I probably wouldn't recommend it though. One more small tip, because I'd like to know EFAP's take on uh, all the iDub stuff happening recently, if you are cool with sharing, of course. Uh, well, it depends on what you mean. There's a lot of different events that have happened over the course of months. Talking about, like, the happy... No, not happy punch. What's his one called? It was just create a clash, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. I think so. Um, they didn't make any money. In fact, they lost 250k or something. Oh. With, uh, oh. Of course, the idea is like everyone's just talking about all the things he did that likely led to that, as opposed to just, you know, like obviously poor marketing and then the choices to do with the Froggy Fresh guy and Sam Hyde and all of it's pretty embarrassing and awkward. And um, I think he did a stream to try and make up for the money lost uh, to go to charities and stuff. Unless you mean just like his career turning from one direction to the other, I found it pretty disappointing. Um, because I never, he was quite an inspiration back in the day for the concept Many of freedom of speech people. and the nature of, um, I'm not even going to say, this sounds pathetic if I say the nature of jokes, but like that's where we're at at this point. Uh, he was helpful in people understanding like where the lines are drawn for how we interpret intent, motivations, and uh, harm and offense and all that, but he completely flipped on all of it. Um, his arguments from back in the day that I found much more, um, you know, Fair and, and and plenty inspired a lot of people that sort of focus and layer into all of the discussions we've ended up having on EFAP about the nature of intention and uh, how to put it like uh, what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say. Uh, he he crystallized it pretty well, but he doesn't feel that way anymore. And he's one of many creators that over time have sort of switched. Uh, you don't see many go the other other direction, do you? No, now that they're any... famous and really kind of in the spotlight, it seems like, uh... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's crippled his fan base, and he's in just aiming to get a new one, and that's not an exaggeration or an insult. He's said as much on interviews that he he's not a fan of most of his fan base, so that he met many of them, and he was kind of, like, weirded out. Which, you know, <laughs> say that on an interview is probably going to piss off your fan base, I'd imagine. Yeah, you'd uh, think. Possible. But, um, you know, if the main thing is I hope he makes funny content. He's always entertaining. I hope he doesn't lose that aspect at the very least. Bonjour, Rags. Hi. Stopping by to say thank y'all for being so objective. Something I've been looking for oh. for so long. P.S. What's on Hollow Knight, Fringy? I like Hollow Knight. It's a cool game. I haven't finished it yet, uh, but it's a really, it's a cool game. Um, yeah. I, I need a little I, Metroidvania. I didn't finish it, but from what I played, I really enjoyed Hollow Knight's neat. It's got a cool vibe. Uh, this guy's an anti-villain explaining why you should give up being hateful because every side is bad and nothing matters. I'm not bitter, you're bitter. So this is the, uh, this is the message from the criticism video. Um, uh, wait, which one was that again? The, the one where it was like, don't be negative. Something. Oh, Some criticism oh be yeah, negative. yeah, negative. It, right, where that wasn't even the point <laughs> it was actually yeah. made. Yeah, it was bait. Um, fuck, I've forgotten the main thesis of that video at this point, but I, I remember we disagreed with it a whole bunch. Yeah. I watched the Mario movie and was thoroughly disappointed with the characters, plot, and pacing. I would rather have watched, rewatched Avatar two. I think it's better than Avatar two. It's way I better than Avatar two. It's, it's a better film than Avatar two. Even though I, I, again, I also that enjoyed it not... much more than, you know, I quite well, liked, I, I really enjoyed the Mario movie, but I fucking hated Avatar and I wanted to do it. I'd appeal to the runtime. It's half as long. Like, also that, yeah. You got it yeah, done yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree that, like, the Mario movie, the, the, the idea that this is the best that it could have been, like, I oh, will fight against you. that pretty relentlessly. Like, Does anyone think this that? is not the best. I don't know, it's, it's, I don't think anybody really does think that, but I remember that, like, when the film was coming out, people were talking about it as if it was better than it was, and that did annoy me. Because, like, even though I do find that movie enjoyable, there's still a lot of things about it that just kind of represent 
attitudes towards like adapting video games, including like Mario, that bug me. But uh, yeah, I would certainly rather watch it over Avatar Two. It's better than Avatar Two. It is. It, it is better. Got, it is more it's enjoyable got and it's shorter. In it. Like <laughs> Avatar Two, and it's got like funny cool. jokes. It's got like humor. It actually makes like makes less sense. sense. It works. It makes less sense than Avatar the Mario Two. Pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So much so that I ended up falling into Mel's Forge angrily to talk about how I wanted it's to kill children. Matter, yeah. Um. You have an open bar on my sports talk shows, but about entertainment. Like sports, you got your teams and your coaches, the players and tactics, all the drama in between. I mean, kind of, yeah. The, you know, these this kind of podcast, what EFAB does, and even more, um, you know, a lot of the sort of just everyone talking stuff, I don't think they were as present, like, even five years ago, even though we've, we've been running for five years now. Um, maybe ten years ago, like YouTube. I just don't... There was plenty of those sort of discussion shows like Collider and, and, and all of them, but it feels like um, the different era. And, and it still feels new to me, even though there are people now who come on as guests that talk about how they were inspired by these shows like years ago. And it's like, oh shit, we're like, been around. We're long in the tooth, or maybe middle in the tooth or something. Long in the flames. We have teeth. The Kissing Booth trilogy was my own Vietnam. Oh. We all have our little <laughs> Vietnams. Who have seen review those? Oh, it's it's CJ. Cynical. Isn't it? yeah. CJ CJ's did, the uh, kissing review. booth yeah. films. <laughs> we gotta have. It's funny somehow. Like for all the movies that come out, it's like there's gonna be that. Everyone has their sort of circuit. It's like, don't worry. If a Star Wars movie comes out, we'll take it. If a kissing booth movie comes out, okay, cynical yeah, reviews will be him, the man. one to take he knows that the, one. He knows the lore. He knows the lore. The USFL have a football team from Pittsburgh named the Pittsburgh Maulers. Ooh. Oh, look at that. They named it after me? That's nice. I'll have to check it out sometime. Moral of the video, don't be a dick. You need to do better movies. What am I supposed to do? Not watch movies? I think the moral of the video probably was fundamentally like everyone's being a bit mean. That probably is like the real crux of it, which is, you know. Yeah, I mean, a, if, bit, if, a bit maybe whiny. If, maybe if the movies stop being so mean, then it'll be okay. This is the era of reviewers highlighting good indie stuff that's easily missed in the shuffle. A record means more from someone who can deal negativity. Rec means more. Oh, recommendation. Record? Recommendation. Oh, I gotcha. A recommendation means more from someone who can deal negativity. Well, yeah, Um. Uh, you'll see this with Drinker and um, a lot of the time with us as well. If we recommend anything in particular, for example, Boiling Point, you'll find... The, it's like, oh shit, this is considered like uh, worthwhile if they if they're gonna be digging this far into all the details with all these other things like this one, maybe I should give it a chance. By the way, give Boiling Point a chance. Go see Boiling Point. I say go see. You should see it. Yeah. You should watch it from your place of choosing. Netflix, I believe it is accessible on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Boiling Point, watch it. How would Boiling you feel? High tier. If Infinity War, Strange tried to cut off Thanos' arm with portals, but it wouldn't cut through and got stuck around his arm. I'm almost certain that... I don't know if this was on streams because it was 2018, so I don't know if we did one, but I remember, like, the easy temporary fix would be that he tried and, like, a purple effect came around his arm. The implication being is yeah. the power stone that would prevent him from doing it. That's easy. Just do that and you're done. Yep. You don't have to do much and that helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. Uh, portal have their own strength to chew through the material rather than space collapsing in and of itself. They can't cut through everything. That's the problem. I think they've established already that it can chop things, even cars. Yeah. So it's like, uh, Thanos is just so powerful and thick that the portal move doesn't work on him and the spell ultimately falls apart. Would that fix anything? I think it's perfectly reasonable that the power stone outclasses the, uh, portal. I think Portals, people would yeah. buy that. Yeah. It is a power stone. It's an affinity stone, you know? I read an article by some fashion designer, I think, arguing a game can be art as long as you don't win or lose in it. What? That's a... I would be very curious to hear the, the line quote of is, art isn't that. won, it's experienced. Art isn't won? It, that sounds like some heady shit that he <laughs> so, didn't actually think about in well, any way. Well, but where's the line? Like, if you play all of uh, a game that you... There's no lose factor, necessarily. Like, you, you'll keep going no matter what until you reach the end and you get, I don't know, fucking ten credits to spend in the store. Does that mean that everything up to that point was art, but as soon as you win, it's not? Sounds silly. What if you quit right before the end? 
Is it art up to that so. point or what a weird thing. You just want to like, where are these people? Come on. And we want to talk to you and pick your brain about your weird opinions. Most of the time it's just people haven't played video games. I mean, it feels bad, but like a lot of people. Yeah, are... that feels like, um, that feels like the, I don't know what opinion. Yeah. I don't know what video games are kind of opinion that people might have. Legitimately strange. You get to have the Metroid movie, but Brie Lawson plays Samus. Yes or no? Depends who's She's writing a good directing. actress. Depends who's writing and directing. She can be a good actress. I don't... Yeah, like, if she's... Yeah, I, I think I'd be fine with that. Yeah. If we had someone who knows how to write and cares about Metroid and a director who's got a vision, I'm probably okay yeah, with Brie Larson. Yeah, then that'd be fine. Yeah. I mean, I think she, at this point, wants to act. Uh, it looks like she's... Uh, uh, that that well, one clip she's... where they're like, you come back as Brie Larson, she's like, if they want me to... Uh, you made it as Captain Marvel, right? And of Are course... you coming back as yourself? <laughs> yeah, because um, the fact is, like, she would have probably committed to um, Disney, and ha that hasn't been great uh, since even Captain Marvel. Like, it's, it's If you look at what's happened, right? She's had cameos. She's got a movie coming up, but she got downgraded from her own movie to a movie split with two other women. Um, it's Interesting. Like, what's, what's that about? What's going Interesting. on? And of course, that movie is all everyone expects that to bomb like crazy now. And once it does, yep. what's the fate of Captain Marvel? I mean, no, no one's going to care. Up in Avengers movies, maybe, but like, yeah. And if that's the case, why wouldn't you want to do something else? Fringy, is showing up in Avengers movies, like, who even are the Avengers to show up with? And, <laughs> like, what is that? Yeah. Will those movies even happen? Didn't, uh... Like, unironically, if you're Disney right now, are you thinking like? Fuck! If we make an Avengers movie, it'll just be us losing money. I think. I think that they. I would imagine that even with the way that things are looking now, they'll still want to make Avengers movies because they still believe that those will make money. It'll be when one of them doesn't do so well that they'll yeah, get like, really nervous. They're probably more um, obsessed with trying I mean, to get that done. Avengers. Yeah, like, that's I'd say the next also, stage of failure. Like, oh, the I think Avengers movies they'll, didn't make money. No but... race to get an Avengers movie out. I think that's they're, what will um, happen. They'll, they'll start canceling the smaller projects and be like, all right, Avengers. That's they what announced we're doing. the Doc Strange three has a release date. But it's like, uh, I now. mean, it hasn't actually been like announced at all. There, there is no like official announcement for three, but that one's happening because two did make a lot of money, but we don't know. He's when. the only one or... um, outside of Spider Man that like. I could imagine that they would put in stone. Like, the rest of everyone right now is, like, do we even... Are we Thor gonna... is, like, really Black Panther. I don't know if they... I don't know what they think they're going to do with that anymore. Ant-Man ain't getting another movie. Uh, and they can't do Guardians anymore, probably. I think they even understand that Guardians is off the table. And so then you got the Marvels, which is coming out, and it's probably not going to do very well. And so, yeah, what do they have? Captain... Well, they, they got the new Captain America movie, right? That is on the way, yeah. Yeah, so we'll see how that one goes. Good God, if that fucking fails. Well, Whoa. then what? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, uh, uh, otherwise, because Iron Man's dead, so that's that's everything basically. Well, Iron Heart, you know, is. people will love to see that. I don't think that. Uh, I don't know. With Bob Iger saying that they're going to cut back uh, the projects that they're doing. Yeah. You gotta wonder about, like, if any of those shows are gonna be getting, like, second seasons. It's like, finally, and... the consequences of your years of actions have caught up to you. Yeah, except now it's kinda too late, because I've got a lot of stuff already in production and development that they have to release. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, my guy is trying to rip out not RLM, YMS, etc. without getting ratioed to oblivion. It's pretty much sunk any coherent point he's trying to make. He probably shouldn't have aimed for anybody in particular in that video like that. Is it? Probably not. If you aim for people who make videos... Didn't he... Like, yeah, because there are some... Some of the examples were, like, people who try to remain positive or try to do constructive criticism. I've always, I've always hated that. Like, the line between criticism and constructive criticism, it always feels like everybody will just flip it back and forth depending on whatever argument they make in. I mean, you just yeah. at the end of the day, you gotta be you gotta be receptive to criticism that is negative, so that you can like figure out how to improve. Well, Even if they're like, wrong, it's worthwhile to like at least know what someone has said, right? If we said, take uh, M O M for example, like your overall goal here is to show that through his obsession with trying to control the situation, he can actually hurt <laughs> people or something like that. Good old Doctor Strange, and then we're like, you're not doing a good job of justifying that, and your history with him doesn't really reflect that. You're gonna need to either change that point or justify that point in future actions that are in line with things we do expect to see from him. You could call that constructive, but the thing is, 
when you say that's your theme, you fucked it. It's not there at all. Someone could be like, that's not very constructive. It's like, well, really, it's well, it's, it's all based on the tonality, right? It's yeah. not based on the actual substance of what you're saying. Like the, you know, if you said, you know, plot plot's pretty uh, messy. It's like, oh, constructive. The plot's pretty fucking messy. Wow, all right, that's not very constructive. Like, like the tone destroys yeah, whether or not it's constructive or not. What I was saying about the uh, the theme, right? If you said it all the same but angry and you threw an idiot and asshole, it's like suddenly it's not constructive. But if you said, I don't know, I um, I, just, I didn't really like it myself. I, I didn't really like it. Yeah, that, They'd be it, like, oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah, that's constructive, the fact that you just said that. It's like, no, it's not. You didn't tell you anything. Whoa. Surely constructive means workable, regardless of whether it's positive or, like, negative, or whether it's even aggressive use, or not. Yeah. If it's something that's workable, as opposed to, like, you know, the pacing was kind of rough. Like, you know, I, I didn't- I wasn't a big fan of the pacing, and it's like, ah, constructive, except you can't do shit with that. As opposed to, you know, they said, this character doesn't make sense for X, Y reasons, you fuck. What? <laughs> and then it's just like, wow. Yeah, not very- I, I don't know. It's it's it seems like it's a distinction based entirely on tone rather than what's actually being said. So, oh, was watching Guardians of the Galaxy three and the scene where Mantis makes Drax forget. And I thought of an alternative. In Guardians of the Galaxy two, Drax has a scene where Mantis tells her that she's ugly and says, "But that's a good thing because when you're ugly, people uh, and people love you. You know they love you for who you are." Instead, in Guardians of the Galaxy three scene, you could have had her say, uh, "Have Drax say you think I'm stupid." And she could say yes, but it's a good thing, because when you're stupid and people love you, you know we love you for who you are. Maybe refine the dialogue a bit, but I feel like Drax would actually appreciate that, being that it's something he taught her and she remembered, it's showing an appreciation for what he says. It would also just be a lot more in character for Mantis. Uh, Psy, what could have been? Hi, Rex. Hello. Yeah, I, I mean, your idea is definitely better I mean, than... I prefer yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, well, it's, it's in the just film was an abomination. Positive and, <laughs> and it doesn't have Mantis completely obliterating his sense of self. Yes, uh, that I hated that moment, but oh well. Terrible. Mm -hmm. It's so sad too because I was really liking the scene up until she did that. Yeah, yeah. And then she did it, and it was like, oh, that was a bit oh. of a gut punch. It's like, oh. oh, oh. You were, I feel like you were setting me up to get gut punched. You built me up to knock me down, all right? Yeah, so, it's uh, like the last season of Succession. Or a conversation on Twitter the other day. I think I sent you it as well, Fringy, but people being like, isn't it weird the whole film is about saving everyone who was manipulated and abused by the uh, old evolutionary man, and and yet there's the big payoff action scene is just absolutely shredding all of his experiments, animals and stuff. Like, yeah, it's it doesn't it doesn't thematically feel right at all. Because you have mm. people being like, yeah, but those were evil ones. It's like... It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. wow, okay, all right, if you say so. Okay, were the ones on the planet evil? <laughs> like, blowed up? I don't know. It's, it just doesn't feel quite ironed out. Needs a few more redrafts. Mm. Uh, edgy comic character this week, Dawnbreaker from DC. Seriously, look up this man's origin. Hope you guys do EFAP minis for Arcane Season 2. Love ya. Hmm. Thank you. I don't know. Do that? Maybe. We could try, but I don't know if it would uh, end up happening because we'd end up possibly just paying attention. Dawnbreaker from DC. Uh, either of you could give that a look. His origin? I'm curious if it's very funny. Did he fall into a vat of knives or something? Oh, so it's, oh he's like edgy Batman Green Lantern. Okay. I feel edgy like we've Batman heard of this Green before. I feel, I, I feel like I've heard of this before. Yeah, so it's like... um. Yeah, he's he's a Batman from a different universe, and he yeah, this is this is uh this is a picture that I saw for that character. <laughs> I mean, already Batman, like Ooh, look at him, Batman Green Lantern. That's uh, like from yeah, I don't know. Oh, that so already he is seems, uh, he is a lantern, like the uh, uh seemingly yeah, like if Bruce Wayne became a lantern or something, and he's he's part of the Dark Knights. Okay. Huh. Oh, I kind of like, um, this is the thing, I, I'm, it's sad that we live in a world where Green Lantern hasn't been given better live-action presence. He's so cool. There's Green all the Lantern is an do. awesome, like, superhero in terms of his powers. The fact that his powers are derived from his willpower, and then opposed to him are, like, forces that derive their power from fear or, like, revenge and anger. Like, and, and, and that any, you, anything that you could imagine is, like, the tool that you can use, that's awesome. It's kind of remarkable that we haven't had, like, more Green Lantern. There's so like, much storytelling you can do. Better. 
When you have so, the man yeah. who's like hitting people with hammers and blocks and putting up walls and platforms, it's like, oh, it's very straightforward. If you had someone like this who started, like all of his apparitions are like gross hands with long nails and tentacles, you yeah. start to be like, what? what is, what's that about? And then he's like, you know, he's normal, but you're just like, I don't know. Yeah, it just makes you think. Well, like, it's, what's a pretty, going on it's there? pretty easy reflection of, you know, different, different, because even with different human characters, you know, that are Green Lanterns as well. You can contrast, like, the kind of things that they would think about, right? So, like, with how you might, he might imagine more, like, military, like, Air Force equipment or something like that, because that's, you know, that's a huge part of his life, compared to other Green Lanterns who might imagine things that are more in line with their history. It's, like, a really easy way to show visual contrast between them. It's a great idea. Like, I really would like... But hey, we're gonna get that Lantern show, right, on, on HBO Max. Oh, I guess Max now. Fingers crossed. Well, HBO, you know, they got a good track record. Yeah, but, but remember, it's it's Max. It's not HBO, it's Max, oh, which is not the same thing. Oh, well. It's not technically the same thing, yeah. The way I know Cosmonaut is a bad person is he has Super Chats enabled to his streams, but he doesn't respond to them. To, to provide as best a defense of him as possible, um, if he makes that the case, if he makes it incredibly clear, I've got donations on, but I'm not reading them, then and people understand that and do that, I suppose that's their choice. Um, that's fine, I guess, yeah. You know, it's, it's his thing to do. It's fair. it's fair. But it would certainly be cool of him to read them from people who have... Especially because you can learn so much about how a person thinks and you know, how they are, and plus, like with us, I like to think that there's quite a bit of entertainment value that comes from how we answer a lot of these questions. Well, I mean, for the most part, people want us to read these, so I assume they enjoy us reading them. I imagine they would have said, enough with the EFAP mini super chat catch-ups, <laughs> we hate them. Go on. Uh, Mola, keep laughing, I think you're curing my cancer. I'm not sure what that relates to exactly, but no problem. Uh... Deadline reported profits for movies. Should Disney be allowed to count Disney Plus as profit if it's paying itself? Uh, I don't even know how you would categorize profits on Disney Plus, right? Because it's always going to be how many people are watching on the service, right? I assume so, yeah. So, I, yeah, I guess I'm not quite sure what, uh, what it counts as well, exactly. MOM, Black Panther, and Love and Thunder all got... Um, 180 to 70 to 60 million. Yeah, I mean, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Vaguely. You ain't gonna get that again from a Thor film if it's fucking Taika again. No You'd have to oh, go yeah. serious now, enough. <laughs> you can't right. even. You have to, go to, yeah, you have to give a shit. Genuinely, the thing about it is, like, someone will be like, oh, so you, you just decided comedy doesn't work? It's like, no, it, it can, it could, if they had the Ragnarok right person, worked. but I think they've uh, pushed it too far, and now people won't be yeah. as interested without a serious. Yeah. Or, yeah, I think now so. you've I really ruined people's true. investment. The comedy has ruined their investment. Black people Panther, I don't, the comedy one. Nah, I don't no know way, what another no. Shuri Black Panther pulls in now. I, I, I don't think, I don't think that. that's happening. I don't think so. I think it's but, um, Yeah, honestly, the most surefire project out of all the ones they could do, I think, is a Doctor Strange 3. That's yep. <laughs> better, yeah, better yeah. than come yeah. about is awful, kind of a movie star. So. Yeah. As awful as Doctor Strange 2 was. Hmm. Seems like the public were happy with it, so... Well, I, I think people have turned on it, but people would still accept more Doctor Strange movies. Like, nobody would say it was his fault, or that they've written off the character, even though, at this point, I've kind of written him off in terms of, like, being coherent. Yeah, I, they could just, like... Con as, he could be... Who knows who he'll be in he the next movie? He could be anybody, and it doesn't anyone. matter anymore. Yeah. Well, so I used to know who he was. Grab any other arc from the MCU and throw it on him for the third film, and it would be kind of funny if you had like a roulette wheel of all the arcs everyone's gone on. And it's like <laughs> so Thor from Thor one. He's too arrogant. Uh, yeah, that that there you go. That'll work. He's too arrogant. Mm -hmm. He's still in to be less arrogant. You're like, all right. What about Iron Man two? Where he's uh, what is what is his arc in Iron Man two? He's becoming. Uh, he's kind of too reckless, right? That's kind of what he's what's going he's on. He's a bit too reckless too, and then he becomes less reckless, kind of. <laughs> yeah. What about Winter Soldier? Okay, so put him on the arc of learning that institutions can't be trusted. <laughs> like, I mean, fuck for it. Doctor why not? Strange. <laughs> why not? I don't know. You know? Yeah, why not? That's kind of that's kind of the question, isn't it? Um, an interesting lineup today. This will be good. Oh, I hope so. 
Oh no! I certainly hope it was. Yeah. My critters are getting crispy. Much excite. Oh no! Not those crispy critters. Uh, By the way, yes. I didn't know this, but uh, actually, a friend of mine told me this. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Um, she said that the song that they play during the dream sequence in Atomic Heart is a song from Annihilation. I guess they oh. paid for the rights for it because they felt it just fit. But uh, yeah, there you go. Because I, I think it was uh, off before we started this, but I was off stream, but we, we very briefly had mentioned Annihilation for something. But uh, yeah, there we you did, go. did, yes. Not a fan of Annihilation. Self. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's ever come up for EFAB really, though. No, I don't think it really has. Maybe just in very casual passing on a rare occasion. Uh, like, it may be if, like, what's a bad movie that has a good scene in it? Or what mo what's a bad movie that has, you know, like, an interesting concept or cool, like, what what's something you like about a bad film? You know, something like that. A lot of these relate to, yeah, questions like that, I think, you know, because I like the tone of Annihilation. I like a lot of the imagery in Annihilation, but, like, the movie as it's written and the characters and some of the logic and stuff is like, ugh, this movie sucks. Um, Before we can get into it, we need to talk about Sir Walter Negative Mr. Critic, the founder of negative criticism. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Like, you know, they always cite, like, a, some fucking book writer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this Walter actually goes yeah. back to... Unbeatable, by the way, is when Brown Table referenced Karl Marx. That would be the... What the was he thinking? This reminds <laughs> me of Karl Marx. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? A man who got everything wrong. Art class I took featured critiques from both the professor and classmates. One year, students were so thorough and harsh to each other's work that the professor said nothing the whole year. They made good stuff, too. Hi, Rags. Hello. Wow, you found a way to if not do his have... job. <laughs> hey, hey, man, hey, respect you know, the hustle. Or I guess the not hustle, but hey, you know, I... Get people used to being... Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of like it, though. Get people to not be afraid of being critical Absolutely. of art. Absolutely. And get people used to having to face criticism of their work. Well, like, you know, like Cinema Wins, I'd almost want to ask him, like, give me a criticism of a film. Just do it. I'm curious where you go to first. It tells me a lot mm. about how you do this sort of thing. Because he'd probably be like, oh, I think it could have been, uh, you know, better paid. Like, mm -hmm. So it was badly paced. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, well, no, not badly no, 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 no. Whoa, like, no, no, it could have no. been, it could have been, what they did was okay, but, but the it's potential, a missed opportunity. You'd be like, but the potential for something to be badly paced, that's a thing, right? And you'd be like, go, and you're like, so what is? Uh, Nothing. I don't know. It's just what it, what is good without bad in your eyes. Like what is there without the contrast between like yeah. good and bad? Not looking to be edgy, but good is worthless without bad. I uh, yeah, it's I don't even think it's edgy. It's just like an acknowledgement of reality. If there's like no difference, but if if there's no such thing as bad, what does it mean for something to be good? What does it mean to have succeeded if there's no such thing as failing? It's like I the contrast know. between these extremes, right? Is what makes them what they are. Uh, Nimrod didn't mean idiot in the U.S. until Bugs used it, and everyone thought of it as an insult. So words can Nimrod. not only mean multiple things, but can gain new ones. Come on, guy. Mm. True. Yeah, you bet your ass. For instance, I didn't know that uh, petard actually meant those <laughs> yeah. those leggings that Napoleon wears with the buttons on them that but you used to do hoist now. yourself with. But now, I guess they do. It's 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 crazy. I guess they didn't used to, but now they do. So yeah. Power of positive thinking. Words, uh, they have shared understandings. So, yeah, fuck with them. Dude couldn't Google how to say yin y It's yin yang, right? I thought it was yin yang. I, I thought it was. Uh, yin I'm almost yang. certain that's the the butchering of it by the West. I could have swung. So I I've heard er say yin yang correct. in his video. I've 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 heard yin yang a hell of a lot more than I've heard yin yang. But so maybe have I. yeah, maybe that's well, a that's case. my point. Okay, maybe. yeah, maybe. Uh, I, maybe. I, I think I'm gonna keep saying yin yang, though. Wow, would you do that with all yeah. of the things, sir? I, no, I need to know, actually, if that's the case. <laughs> I, need to, I need to know. Yin yang pronunciation. The pronunciation or pronunciation? He's busy doing something. Ask oh, him again. Fair enough. So one is yin yang. Yin Yang, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Yin it still Yan. sounds like there's the G there, but it's kind of softer. Thanks for watching. Okay. What does Wikipedia say?
I don't know. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> yeah. There's loads of how to pronounce videos, but then you start to wonder which one should I trust. Four yeah, says, so American it says yin yang. Yin. And it has yin, Australia as well. Is how it is pronounced. And it's the same, yin yang. Yin, I, I don't know. Yin, I've, ne I've never actually yin, heard the one yin, that you said before. Yin, oh, yeah, I've never heard yin yang yin, before. Yin, yeah. Yin. yin and but maybe it is, yeah. Is how it is pronounced. Why it's pronounced different, and like in different, uh, different regions. Is... Yeah, like I said, I've heard uh, ER pronounced that way, and I was like, boy, he wouldn't pronounce it so differently to how I know it, unless it's one of those words where it's like, oh shit, have I been... But then, if there's different pronunciations per part in the world, we also have the question of, are they valid differences, or are they differences that only come from ignorance on how to actually pronounce them? You never know with these languages things. <laughs> Yin and Yang is how. That was um, kind of hilarious when he just brought up Yin Yang, though, like in the middle of the video. And I I'm can't remember. Sure I don't know why my brain just fucking wiped uh, that shit. I vaguely remember that his interpretation of Yin Yang was just like kind of bizarre. Like it was strange. It was a strange interpretation of Yin Yang. Um, hello, EFAP. How do y'all feel about the silent protagonist in video games? Do you feel they still have a place in modern gaming, or do you feel that some characters such as Link should finally speak? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I think there's absolutely a place for silent protagonists in video games. I'm fine with them, not just because I'm a boomer and have played games where that was the case and I like things staying the way they are or anything. I just think that it depends on your goals, right? Like, there's different immersion factors with games that have characters that talk and don't talk. Um... There's differences in how they want you to interpret that character, depending on how they talk or whether they talk at all. Um, you know, uh, Gordon Freeman not talking? That one's always, mm. like, funny, because I can't remember in the campaigns, do they acknowledge the fact that he's, like, a mute, or do they just sort of... They, they, like, they, they don't say, say like, he doesn't like right? to talk. Yeah, you don't say much stuff like that. When, that really, one... Gordon Freeman should probably be talking. Yeah, or communicating in some way. Writing things down is what he'd be doing if he actually couldn't talk, but he would be talking. Yeah, I, don't think, like I, don't think, I don't think we're meant to believe that he doesn't actually know how to talk. He's a <laughs> physicist, right? Like, he works with people and probably communicates somewhat like normally. He's just not in the mood when you're playing the game. <laughs> yeah, I He's guess He's been not. busy, you know? But, you know, there are, there are plenty of games like, um, I think uh, in Amnesia, Dr. Sent, Daniel will sometimes speak out loud or you'll hear him from memories and stuff. They could have gone yeah, full silent and, if they wanted yeah. to, I guess. I think he, yeah, I think he, and this is, I think he ejaculates at times. However, yeah, ejaculates. I don't think, yeah, he does. Um, he does, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, mostly we hear him from the flashbacks or his, his, him reading out his own, uh, yeah, journal entries. Took uh, more effort, you know, when voice is behind text. You appreciate a voice sometimes. Especially when the voice isn't annoying. Especially when the voice isn't mm -hmm. doing the... What was, what was it? her name? You always remember it, right? Is it Tassi? Tazi Trianon, yeah. Ugh. Tazi Trianon I'm is the, the, the protagonist again. of Amnesia Rebirth. And boy, shut the... I know you're a woman, but shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. That game annoyed me and Metal immensely. And me. Said me and Metal. All right. You weren't you, Bradley. Holy me, shit. It, just the way that you said it, me and metal, me and yeah, it, I just didn't <laughs> even catch that there. Point is that movie, that whatever it is, sucks. Do you that think that I was sucks. referring to me as Mew? No, I just <laughs> heard me and metal. Alrighty. I think I think I might have interpreted your me, you, and metal as me and metal. So that's alright. Um, well, point is, we all hate that character from Team America would say, "Open your freaking ears." Open your <laughs> mouth. Right. God damn it, open your fucking ears. <laughs> uh, hey, Massives, this is the first, technically second, of probably many reminders to play Little Nightmares. It was the game's sixth anniversary fairly recently. Hello, Fringoid, Mubles, and Rags. Hello. I have heard of that game. So, just bizarrely, uh, last time I was hanging out with certain family members, they had brought Little Nightmares 2 with them because they wanted me to see it. And I was like, I've heard of this. They popped it in. It is most familiar to me with... Do you ever play Limbo or Inside? I have I not, but I know that. about those games. They're the side-scrolly uh, survival horror kind of As far as I know, platformer. 
Uh, we are so. Made... Oh. So I can see it. As far as I know, they're different makers, but it's very reminiscent. It's that exact format, and you're in a world where you play as these very, very small characters, and the world is horrifying, dark, scary, and filled with like I think humans or at least bigger characters that want to kill you. It's uh, I got I played it for like an hour. It seems neat, but a little bit limited, and I think that's on purpose, right? Like that kind of. It's like limbo. You got to solve puzzles and stay alive, and you can. I don't think you have a health bar, you just have a binary of you're either alive or dead, depending on mm -hmm. thing and things happens, hit you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it would be fun, but I'm not like, from what I played, I wasn't like, ooh, I can't wait to play more of this. I was more like, this is fine. This is neat, yeah. Mahler still has to play uh, Halo and Mass Effect, so he'll have his hands full. I know, <laughs> so many games I gotta play. And there I was playing X-Men Origins Wolverine. Mm. Yeah. I'm raising. Which was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. If you uh, mm -hmm. if you never get criticized, how can you ever grow as a creator? It's you have not... to have a strong desire to internally critique yourself. I was about to say, yeah, you have to do it yourself. Nice make it better, yeah, yeah. You have to do it yourself. Uh, will there be a Zelda EFAP? Me and Rags haven't touched that game, and Fringy, have you finished it yet? Nope. Well, yeah, it's this amount of time after, and still no. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, Mola versus Fringy versus Rags. Who wins a dance off? It ain't me. It's not gonna um, be me either. I, no, then it'll exactly. probably I guess be Rags me. wins by probably <laughs> probably you. I I just imagine I don't, it would probably be Rags. I do. Too, I don't yeah. know much about dancing, but I think that I'm 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 good on my feet, and I have a, I'm fine with being like in the center of attention in a real place, and kind of just letting loose and doing that sort of thing. That I wouldn't have anything holding me back. But I think I could get into it. I think I've got the, I think I've got the the beauty and grace and style to really just you know just just have a have a gay old time and just shake it like um, uh, like you know, like, you know. I know. Yeah, we'll just let we'll just let that hang. Yeah, yeah. shake it like something. <laughs> shake your tail feathers or your, shake your booty. That's the song. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, That's shake. It. Uh... <laughs> Has any of the crew or guests been playing the new Starship Troopers extermination FPS that's in access, early access? If so, thoughts? I've not played it, but I've heard it's pretty good. That could be I'm one that we look into because I saw a bit of As Planet yeah. with um, a couple of others, and it, it looked looked like it could be fun. Like you construct a base and then. Defend it from bugs, and then use the, I guess, currency from killing them to upgrade the base until you hack into a thing or collect a thing, mm. and then that's your mission. So. That sounds okay. fun. Yeah, like that kind of format, you're like, okay, well then they just gotta make sure they get the gun me mechanics down and balancing right, and it's like, I think they... enough so that it's fun, so, yeah. And also, you know, Helldivers 2 is on the way, and I'm really excited about that. That could be another fun one for us. Howdy, gentlemen. We'll be performing today, so can't watch today. Hope the stream is productive. If not, then let it at least be entertaining. God bless all y'all and hi, Mola. Thank you very much. God bless you, too. Yeah, I hope your performance went well. Yes. Uh, thoughts on The Prestige? Would you ever cover it? Prestige is my favorite story of all time, possibly, I guess. That's the kind of accolade it could get not just movie i adore it i think it's great i love everything it has to say and i think they did a really good job of it will i ever cover it yes but i don't know when <laughs> um at some point i will make a video i'm tempted to be like the, the best of christopher nolan and simultaneously release interstellar, interstellar the worst, the of, worst christopher. of christopher nolan <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then it's like, what's the middest of his films? Like, I have to watch all Inception, of them. Inception, like, maybe? Maybe. Maybe that it is the be, one. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know about Inception anymore. <laughs> Another one I've to rewatch, eh? Yeah. Loved listening to you guys over the last two years. I'm getting married on Monday, and it seemed like as good a time as any to send my first ever Super Chat. Wish me and the missus all the best. Oh, that's it. Well, uh, oh, yeah. well, congrats. Good luck. Good luck. Congratulations. Yeah, good luck good with luck. Uh, the old ball and chain. Have a have a good time. I hope that things are going well so far. Um, uh, 
do things that married people do. Yeah. Uh, do taxes and laundry together. Go outside you know? and stuff. Do they do that still? I think so. Some do. Some do. Okay. Sometimes. There's a lot of a lot of space out there. Oh, cool! Nuts is on. I know who that is. <laughs> Yay! Well, a T S T A T S T. That's, the, that's how guests now. People are like, oh my god! Is this a reference to Nutsa? My goodness! Then so we'll try and get back. Do you know she was asking me to uh, if she can come on if ever we cover Extraction Two? Like, oh, oh really? Um, sure, I guess. I'm not sure what Extraction Two coverage looks like. Probably. I don't e think we'll movies. ever cover it. Maybe. Yeah, but that might be the best recovery. shot. Yeah, um, we'll come Maybe. up and say about it. We did it for the first one, so we could probably do it for the second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very yeah, possibly. Yeah. Your links haven't worked for several streams now. What do you think? Oh wait, that's the first question. Well, I did fix them. Uh, it was Mel's that kept breaking. Everyone else's eventually like settled, yeah. but his kept fucking falling apart. But I think his is oh, fixed now too. Oh. I don't know what it is. Yeah, YouTube hates his channel. Uh, too, what, do you, what do you think about that genuine cultural a a adoption that pissed off all of Egypt? You oh, you you mean the that, that gods uh, of Egypt? Cle wasn't it that Cleopatra? Oh, Cleopatra. Yeah, yeah. Even Egypt was like, "Fucking, I'm gonna sue you because this is so shit." Uh, yeah. Awful. On behalf yeah. of the Grecian, I'm going <laughs> to sue you. Not sure what they were thinking with that one. Uh, nobody liked it, and I'm pretty sure it's probably like non-profitable. I'd imagine. Uh, thoughts on the Mask of Zorro? Was inspired to watch after Puss in Boots two and had a blast. Love me some Antonio Banderas and Anthony Hopkins. It's brilliant. I really like it. I love the Mask of Zorro. It's a great movie. Well, Plenty it's to praise. Ooh, great. It's good. It's at least good. It, it's like. Yeah, the best it could probably be is like low end of great, but um, there's still there's still some problems in there. Oh, a few it's... flumps, but I love that movie. I uh, I really really enjoy watching it. I love great it. cast, ah, uh, some pretty cool action, super funny. Uh, really love it. Good stuff. Uh, everyone gets tired of constant bad shit, no matter what. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Well, Movie Bob is does not have Marvel fatigue, as he was very keen to let us know. That was, so. That's just getting funnier and funnier as time goes on, doesn't it? Like, wow, I mean, even Disney has Marvel fatigue now. Because, uh, yeah, I think what Bob was trying to do, because I've always used this example, Thor 2 was a time where people were saying, that's it, we're done, it's over. I remember thinking, like, I don't think so. I think we're nah. still, we're doing fine, like, we'll, we'll be fine. But, um... It's kind of funny to think now because this is the one time where if you'd called it, let's say, at Avengers or Thor 2 or Ant-Man or something, even like Black Widow, if you'd called Ooh. it then, which we probably would have said, like, oof, you know. We're it, getting there. Yeah, because like that one even struggled to make. But that had a COVID thing and releasing COVID. and streaming. Yeah, you know, so exactly. Like, mm. But um, now, if you call it, or rather, if you called it just before Ant-Man came out, you would have been bang on the money. And that was exactly when that video was made. So he's just, mm -hmm. he's as wrong as possible. He's released it at the worst possible time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, whatever the Marvels ends up with, like, <laughs> unless the Marvels I makes mean, a billion, you know, <laughs> then he'll be right. Which it won't. It fucking the obviously Guardians won't. couldn't make a billion. There's no world where it makes a billion. Um, I don't think Crowcat was saying Ari off, uh, oh, sorry, Ari 4 remake was bad. He was saying it's lacking unique details, uh, a good example is original Total Recall versus remake. Okay, no, no, that's, no, no don't you wrong, just don't okay? you? Yeah, coping. That's what you're doing. First of <laughs> you all, made a really the, bad remake, tweet. That was super wrong. remake of Total Recall was horrible compared to the original. Yeah, like exactly the idea that Total Recall the original is Resident Evil Four and they're both remakes are like the same by comparison ah, is horrifying. On. Don't, 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 don't. Secondly, didn't he say what was the title of his video before he he switched it? Oh, um, I can't remember. Soulless, Damn. Something Soulless. About Soulless, yeah, Soulless. 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 That's Soulless right. Soulless He's called it yeah. Soulless. Not that it was lacking in details compared to the original. All right. And uh, yeah. Um, the, and then, of course, all the comparisons afterward, right, of like the sound design and how like if you have the original audio in the remake playing at like similar volumes, it sounds similar in terms of creating a oh, sort yeah, of uh, atmosphere. It felt like he'd... Uh... 
dumbed down everything in the remake, which felt really unfair. And, I mean, all three of us played the fuck out of it. Calling that game soulless is just bizarre. Saying that it's comparable to the Total Call re Recall <laughs> remake, like, nah, come on. What, what are you doing? Yeah, that's just not fair. It was just, as the as the kids would say, it was an L. It was a bad that take. It was a big L. <laughs> it was... It's, it like, and I'm more than happy to concede it's not as good as the original, but my god, man, the original is fucking godlike. It's hard to be as good as that, okay? We didn't expect it would beat it, though it yeah. might have been able to had it fucking... It came close. It, it had red dots, Jesus. It had, had red, red dots, dots and a better, yeah. a little bit better of a, like a stagger system and everything. Boy, it would be fucking close. But also, it has mercenaries too, so it's got. That's did the, it did four have mercenaries, or was that five introduced mercenaries mode? Four, four introduced mercenaries. Oh, okay, right, right, right. My bad. I, you're the you're the Resident Evil expert. <laughs> oh boy, only in the films. <laughs> Your, uh, Molly, your bias is on full display in the latest episode of Mando. Only Republic Rabble call the Confederacy of Independent Systems Separatists. I actually didn't know that for sure. I didn't know if Separatist was like a derogatory term or if they were okay with that. I would I would imagine that I would call myself, I think called a Separatist is fine. Well, Separatist is just descriptive, right? You are Separatist. Well, you are separating from the Republic. Unless you want to say, like, It's an in-universe thing. It could be yeah, that yeah, they yeah, use yeah. it derogatorily in the Star Wars universe, but obviously we don't see enough of that in the Clone Wars at all, like, because the live-action movies We just don't get nearly much, yeah, nearly enough about the Separatist. Like, fucking great if they that's did. An, that's an element that is just worth expanding. Like, what is that... Why exactly would, you know, any planets in the Galactic Republic be interested in separating from the Galactic Republic? Well, that's the Yeah, thing. and especially in that kind of number to the point where they're willing to make an the army point that they're willing to wage this massive war, exactly. Is, there is so much story to tell that doesn't even regard the Jedi, the Sith, or necessarily... I know this sounds weird, but necessarily the Republic in the Clone Wars. You'd be like... It's not just... Yeah. Just all the fucking back and forth thing between all these different systems that are deciding whether or not they want to remain neutral, or if they join, and then what does that mean, and do they ever even speak to Count Dooku, or is it more so, like, what the chain of command is and how the armies get organized? Like, oh, I'd love a film about all the logistics of it and all these different characters from all these different worlds that have all these very valid reasons to fucking hate, uh, I was gonna say, not involving the Republic, but okay, involving it in some brief way, especially because it's such a political warfare thing, but... Um, yeah, the CIS is like one of the most interesting factions in all of Star Wars, and I feel like uh, we only ever get slivers of what they even did or who they are and how it all worked mm -hmm. out. Yeah, and there's layers, well, yeah, not you just remember the military in, uh, level, but all the political stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there's so much three, to this right? Like, please, we just wanted peace or whatever, right? The, uh, the, the yeah, Trade it's Federation like, oh my guys. god, that's the most yeah. interesting. I think I've been like more. Yeah, yeah like they actually right wanted away, to end the war. They were done with the war or yeah. something, or like, was there a? You know, was there a peace? Was a peace treaty like in the works? Was there like a ceasefire that could have been called? Was there yeah, like, a, okay, we'll separate under these circumstances? Or it would be interesting if know? they felt like everything had gotten completely out of control. That like it just it just went crazy beyond what they wanted, and they felt like they got dragged into something they weren't prepared for. Just anything to give it a little bit more uh, flesh on the on the bone. Did Lord Sidious promised us peace? The implication, of course, is that they want out. Yep. And then Darth Vader killed him, like the meanie that he is. He's a bit of a meanie. Jerk. Uh, on one it's hand, real jerk. I want them to make a good movie iteration of Doctor Doom. On the other hand, I don't trust them to do it well. Yeah, it, it does be like yeah, that, doesn't it? The era we're in. You'll see it when they announce him, and there's the trailer with some actor that's well known playing him. Everyone will be hype, and then we'll all see it. And, and then like, the oh. movie will actually come out, and then people will maybe for like a week or two say, "Wow, that was incredible," and then they'll change their mind, as they do. Hang but is a worse we, yeah. version of Funny Valentine's D4C. I don't know what that is. I yeah, I do not Neither. know who that is. One of Phase 4's biggest problems is that recurring characters were warped into immoral, stupid, and vile versions of what they were. And new characters are immoral jerks that are just heroes, not by principle or necessity, but by convenience for said jerk. Um, do you mean like they fall into the role? There's no real reason they're even there by motivation or by how they really acquire the power? They want to be a hero. Maybe. Maybe that's what they mean. In which case, I'd say that it's something that's lacking, is we don't really deal with people's motivations for doing these things. But uh, as for, like, old characters getting warped into being evil, it's kind of... 
I don't think they know that, like, Janet, for instance, like, what she did is actually remarkable, like, in terms of how consequential that is and how damaging that is to her as a character. I don't yeah. think they know. They're like, oh, you know, she just wanted to come home and she didn't want to deal with all that Kang stuff. And it's like, well, <laughs> didn't want to deal with the dude, like, in, in this universe who, if he gets out of the quantum realm, might destroy the entire universe along with many others. Uh, yeah, I don't think they knew when that one. How many tomatoes do you eat per week now? Still zero? I, yeah, I zero. eat zero tomatoes. Yeah, I, don't I don't eat like tomatoes. It. Tomatoes are like, they're like my ultimate five out of ten kind of food. I, I don't like them, them on their day. own, but they're okay in other things. But I wouldn't like mm, have one, yeah. you know? But if I they're on, like... Eat one on its own. No way. I mean, tomato oh, yeah, based on a... pizza is totally fine with me. I just wouldn't eat a tomato. Oh yeah, that's the not... thing. If like to like salsa can be great, and you know a little bit of ketchup here and there. I'm not a huge in the ketchup, but like a, a, some thinly sliced tomato as part of like a burger, or maybe a little bit of diced tomatoes on a pizza, something like that. And it's really good if it's part of something. But yeah, by itself, I don't. I know people do. They'll just they'll just like slice it and eat it. But put a little salt on it and eat it. But they're yeah, not crazy. Me. You yeah. should be called the Movie Bob Variety Nine Hour. Uh oh nine yeah, because this would be the because it was nine, nine hours went. long. Was yeah, nine I figured hours? that might be. I don't know if it was, but maybe it just is a meme. Movie Bob makes it feel like nine hours. Yeah. After over 134 episodes since his defeat in episode 100, in episode 100, Bob has returned. <gasps> Somehow, Bob has returned. Or we did cover him in episode one. He does somehow return. We're gonna find a way to permanently yeah. prevent his. He's uh, surprisingly sneaky for a big fat guy. The PS4 slash 5 version of Shovel Knight features Kratos as a hidden boss, complete with an 8 bit styled version of God of War 1's theme and an unlockable armor for him. Oh, that's, that's cute. really cool. <laughs> Shovel Knight's checkpoint system is my favorite. Oh yeah, you, you can destroy them to get more money, but you obviously That's take right. away more checkpoints. Cool. Yeah. That's interesting. That's a cool Good idea. Risk reward I system. like that. Would you like to keep this checkpoint or forego it for a reward? Warning. Mm -hmm. is not this Warning, you may hate yourself. Reversible. Warning, <laughs> you may, you know, <laughs> your future self might hate you. As an artiste, if all I focused on were the positives, I would never grow must see what is lacking in order to build up and improve one's craft when discussing art that is also a product, it's perfectly acceptable. I Definitely agree. seems to be the case a lot of the time. My first episode of EFAP was 200. Started watching in order, and I finally caught up on mainline EFAP. Just have to watch the movies, minis, TV, and gaming. Now shut up and take my money, you massives. Also, hi, Rats. Oh, wow. Uh, hi, and uh, thanks very much, and I'm glad you're really enjoying them. It's quite the yeah. journey you've... Uh, quite the journey you're it's going on It's bigger and bigger every week. <laughs> Long road. When we hit our 10,000th anniversary, it's probably going to be longer than people are alive. So, True. Uh, to put it on times two speed at that point. Pokemon Black 2 and White 2? I don't know why there's twos in there. Were the best Pokemon games. I thought Black and White was kind of crappy. But it could be because I played... Uh, you know, I think it was yellow, blue, and gold the most. I just love gold is the one I think I played the most uh, I played leaf green I played yellow gold green and I played one on the DS I think it was sword and shield but I just didn't really get sword into and it shield was uh, I think sword and Sh isn't sword and shield like the one on, on switch Which, oh, no. whichever one the, the there was a pair on DS and I, uh, I tried all right, there it was there I... was a uh, pearl and um, diamond they were the first ones on, and then it was, uh, and then it was, um, black and white. Those were the second gen I guess, version. I guess it was on... Pearl and Diamond. I I can't even really quite remember. I just didn't. I think Pearl and Diamond was the last time I played them like actively, and then I stopped. Do happen. You kind of grow out of Pokemon because you start playing more games, and you're like, "Whoa, look at these mechanics!" Oh wow, games oh actually God. have a lot of things oh, to offer no. me, don't they? Oh boy. Hey, you know, it's okay. 
It's true. <laughs> we all go through the arc, and it doesn't make us any lesser of people. Yeah. Uh, kind of messed up on uh, of the MCU to make Atlantis Mesoamerican, then rename it Taco Town. Taco Town. Taco <laughs> thought, Town. Thought they were past that kind of thing. <laughs> well, Taco Town, I don't even know that we'll ever see him again now. I didn't get an update on... Uh, is was, was it accusations? Was it crimes? I I, actually uh, I think you got accused of something. Yeah, but I I'm not not familiar. No fucking that's how normal it is for this to happen. And and I don't mean I mean the accusation part of it. Like it's everywhere. Whether or not they're actually true, it's just weird that we're in this sort of uh, timeline. It is strange. Uh, hey you viewer of Evap Live and reuploaded. Go watch Fringy's playthroughs of God of War 2018 Ragnarok RE4 and RE4 remake on Cosmoronic. Do it now. Also, howdy Rags and Fringy. Hello. Oh hey. Yeah, no, I did play him. They're all <laughs> uploaded. They're complete. Is that right? Yeah. In the remake, why didn't Isaac ask about where Cross and Nicole are? Was he planning to abandon his girlfriend and go with Kine? Uh. Why didn't he ask about where Cross and Nicole are? I don't think he has the... Let's see. When he talks when he's to, about Kine... to When he's about to leave with Kine, is that the idea? I think that conversation doesn't get allowed to continue. And I can't remember, was Nicole not somewhere supposed to be somewhere else as part of some plan? But either way, I yeah, think... I thought, I thought Nicole was, like, actively doing stuff at the time and that she was going to get uh, saved as well. I can't actually remember. I can't remember, though. I think you're right, Rags. I think that was a conversation, right? And it got interrupted. Yeah, because that's where Kane gets shot. He gets. That's where Kendra betrays. Yeah, because they weren't about. They weren't going to leave straight away, right? Like he walks out and then gets shot, and then the ramp gets closed. If I remember correctly. Yeah, she shoots him from the from the ship, and she takes off with it. Also, why did Temple never go to hydroponics to search for Cross like he did in the original? Wasn't Temple I? These are some questions I just don't think I have the answers to because I can't remember a lot of the like a lot of the details yeah, on the, the story like is, that. These could be holes, but they also could be answered. I don't actually. I'd have to go play it again. To... Yeah. I just need to see it again. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front was terrible. Where was the Amazonian model walking through the no man's land and killing underage conscripts? Zero out of ten. Did either of you end up watching All Quiet on the Western Front? Uh, I didn't finish it, unfortunately. All right, I have okay. not seen it, so... I read the book. I have not read the book. I'll read. <laughs> I, won't, I won't spoil the ending. But I won't, let you, I won't say who wins the war, but... All right. Black Panther 2 had too much water, 7 out of 10. Man, that, that'll never... <laughs> <laughs> that meme will never die. Um... This... Uh, sketch therapy is in your chat, and then they said he's a predator. I don't know if that's. I don't know anything about be that. Careful with stuff like that. Got nothing, no idea on any way which way. Thoughts on Mon Mothma being in Ahsoka? I mean, uh, rip. Kind of neutral, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully they don't do anything well, to ruin her. Probably just gonna be there, and then that'll, you yeah, know, it's not gonna be anything, I imagine. And then we'll just wait eagerly for season two of Andor when the much the really really great character of Mon Mothra in those shows returns and we get to see more of her story. Yeah, this would be. I hope this is just a cameo and it's just yeah she just shows up and then there's nothing and then back in the Let's hands of a better. of a a better show with better writers. Question for Morlet, Rags, and Vringy. Have to get rid of one season. Is it Bly or Arcane? Bly. So, here's the funny thing. If Arcane Season 2 is awful, I'm probably going to end up feeling like I could lose Arcane. But as long as it's good... I then think it's... I agree. That's kind of my thinking, is uh, if Arcane Season 2 is good, then we've just got like a bigger, longer, you know, yeah. story um, running. But if, but if Season 2 was bad... And like destroyed season one, then yeah, of course it'd be the other way. So it's it's kind of like I don't even know how to answer that question really. Well, as it stands, the potential for Arcane is 
obviously bigger because Bly has stopped. So yeah, Bly is done. That's a story. Um, it's complete. And Arcane could go on for a long time. And if they have the same discipline that they seem to have with season one, then we could expect something. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. Hope. Also, does Rags remember the Batman theme? I do. I do remember the Batman theme. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, nice and it, isn't it? nice and <laughs> yeah. It's very hard to forget. It's very simple, but uh, it's done really well. Um, I love it. One year since Moon Knight, and we never got that EFAP. Disgraceful. On another note, yeah, you, all, you never did. We all gonna play Jedi Survivor. There's now five combat stances. Uh, I don't not. think any of us played it, right? I didn't play Jedi Survivor. Is that the I'm... the sequel to Fallen, Fallen Order? Order. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't make it through Fallen Order. I got like six hours in, and I was like, oh, I'm done. Um, Survivor, I just have no interest in whatsoever. I know there were a I lot of memes been... when it came out about how it was not great. Bad optimization. So, yeah, bad optimization want... and some bad bugs and stuff. I just want fucking Titanfall. That's it. I just want Titanfall games, but it's never going to happen now. As for Moon Knight, are they making a season two? I can't remember. I mean, who knows at this point? <laughs> well, if they do, maybe we'll do a quick on a uh, thing on summarizing season. Two. Everybody moved on it. from Moon Knight real quick, didn't they? Yep. Probably because it was so shit. Yep. Of the three bosses with their own stories, which would you like the design of the most? Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, or King Knight? Ah, uh, my my bias might be shown here. Probably uh, Plague Knight. So what exactly? The question is just which design do you like, we like the best? I guess. Uh, I suppose so. But again, Wait, I'm night. biased. <laughs> Curious what Spectre Knight looks like. Oh, I was expecting something more spooky. That's kind of the other one, King Knight. I guess he's gonna look kingly. Is the film called King Knight that's come up? 2021? You gotta, you gotta go Thorn King and Willow Knight from Shovel Knight. Appear to have it all as revered high priest and priestess of a coven of New Age witches. However, a secret for Thorn's past throws their lives into turmoil, sending them on a hilarious and trippy journey. Hmm. Sounds okay. great. King Knight himself, though. Ooh, I do like the way he looks. Um, also, um, I, gotta use, I, gotta, I have to use the loo. Look at this. Look Guy. Yeah. Oh, look at yeah, him! Yeah, no, he's he's a he's a cool dude. I like, love his. Yeah, I love his. You know, you know what Plague Knight looks like, right? Yeah, I've searched them all now. So, yeah. Spectre Knight's my least favorite. It's fine. I was kind of hoping something different, maybe. Plague Knight looks neat. Uh, Plague Knight is it's it's gonna be close. Plague Knight's my number two. I like the look a lot, but King Knight. Oh, the third know. is the third is Plague Knight. <laughs> so these are the second. Plague Knight. Who's second the second one? one? Spectre Knight. Spectre Knight. Ooh, I think I'm gonna go with King Knight because he looks like the the knight. Like I, the 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 Plague Knight looks really cool as a design, but the knight part doesn't look like you know, like a knight. But the knightliness of like the first one, I really like the scepter. I like the puffy, sh uh, you know, uh, upper arms and the cape, and I like the. I just I think I'll, I'm gonna go with the first one. You for your favorite. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the first one for my favorite, yeah. I uh, can use the little bear back. The King Boy is just screaming at me too much. I love him. I love his okay, yeah. cape. Which means we, choose, no, we chose mean, a different one for all three of us. How neat is that? Uh, no, we didn't. You two chose... Uh, didn't you both choose um, uh, King Knight? No. Or did... Rags went oh. with Spectre Knight. Oh, all right. My brain wasn't working there. Yeah, we did all... Look at, look at Plague Knight. Look at him. Yeah. That was the aspect <laughs> I do neat. like about him. He seems... Seems more chill and fun than the other two. <laughs> I'm just a big fan. I like him. <laughs> He's a cool lad. Uh, ooh, who's your all-time least favorite character? All time. My, I I don't even know what that looks like. <laughs> I feel like there are a lot of characters I hate. I've just never really considered figuring out which one I hate the most. There's probably an obvious answer. Like, there's probably someone we were like, oh, of course it would be them because they blah 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 blah. But like, I I'm not sure. The thing uh... is, it's a little more complicated than any one person doing something horrible, you know, because it could be <laughs> context thing. We had that selection earlier of all of those. Uh, very bad modern female characters. 
Mm. But I don't know if any of them get to... They really qualify in my head as, like, most hated. Most hated. That's a tough one. Any recommendation? Anything close? I, I got nothing. I, I, I actually... I don't know. I don't know what I would be uh, putting... Does someone probably say, like, Jar Jar Binks? It's like, no. Nah! No. And I have a feeling if I search for most hated characters of all time, I'm going to get some villains, you know? Right, which is not, not doesn't point. seem like it's in the spirit of the. But yeah, someone's like Nurse Ratchet you know? is in here, and it's like, I mean, he's an well, asshole. I mean, but as a character. <laughs> very you good know, character, like, yeah. yeah exactly. It's Trunchbull, Jar Jar Binks. It's like, that, no, it's. <laughs> I mean, Jar Jar Binks is close, right? Gollum? Why the hell is he in here? Gollum? Wow, alright, geez. Um, yeah, all of these are just. They're like all villainous or antagonist characters, that's basically it. Rich, yeah, it's not really the spirit of the cool. question. Uh, see, because none of the people from, like, M.O.M. I would consider my most hated character. Mm-hmm. Gladriel's pretty bad. It was annoying as yeah, hell I mean, to watch. Yeah, most hated, you know? <laughs> it feels like someone else has got to come up for most hated, like, get to it. Well, uh, I mean, what do you, what would you think of in terms of, like, maybe a character who was, like, assassinated to a degree that, like, really made you upset? Um... Well, since Rags is still muted, I would, uh, we can still remain relatively spoiler-free, but the character that is Ooh. portrayed in Ooh. Season 4 of Angel, that I hate I was, I was wondering. Yeah, I was wondering. Hmm. Yeah, that does get to me quite a bit. That's one of my most hated. Okay, well, I mean, we got, we, we're we getting, we got somewhere with it. I, I don't even know where to begin, so, like, I, All right, we'll I'll settle for that for now. This one. <laughs> yeah. Classic cast, classic content, time for EFAPPIN. God. Uh, my video favorite video game romance is a Shovel Knight x Sh Shield Knight and Plague Knight x Mona. Full romances, but done nicely. Nicely done. Fair enough. Would you consider heroes like Ghost Rider and Spawn Shadow levels of edgy, or are they exemptions? Put Venom and Carnage in there, too. Um, I think that... I, I feel like Ghost Rider's pretty cool. Um, funnily enough, I think my thinking would just be like, when did that character get made up? When were they created? Uh, because if they were created in the 90s and the 2000s, then it's like, hmm, you know? I mean, I think I'd have, so, I think Ghost Rider is one of the coolest, but I think I'd have to concede he's edgy. Uh, what, Skeleton Man riding a bike? Leather jacket with metal spikes on it, he uses a chain, uh, he's a skull with it's on fire, and rides the bike. I guess it's kind of... You know, Venom is like edgy Spider-Man, but it feels like Venom as characterized is kind of like a bit goofy. So it makes me wonder if I would uh, consider him like hyper edgy. Well, the thing about Ghost Rider uh, is I would probably start resorting to his story as to why he is the way that he is, right? Like a Daredevil mm -hmm. type, like an act, not like, <laughs> not, not to be Daredevil, confused with like, Daredevil. <laughs> um, you know, Renegade. Yeah, the, I, yeah, a character that does, uh, what, what would you call him, like stunts at um He did like, stunts, yeah. Yeah, so that's that explains the bike and the sort of uh, maverick attitude. But then he's also like an undead soldier of uh, going from. I haven't actually read his like comic backstory or if he has more than one backstory, but works for Satan then breaks out of that, right? Or uh, in the movie, yeah. Um, but I, well, I don't know if that is the, the, the comics either. Yeah, I could imagine that was changed or is the same. Maybe one of them. I don't know how many Ghost Riders there even are. There's probably more than one. Um, so. You know, that explains the fire, and I can't really... Like, but you'd be like, oh, so it just has to be explained? It's like, well, no, I don't think that should exempt you from... If you fall, like, as I made a joke earlier about falling into a vat of knives, it wouldn't make you knife man, and you have loads of knives. Like, that doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> or it doesn't mean you're not edgy, so... To a vat of knives. <laughs> so, yeah, Rags, is Ghost Rider edgy? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's fair to say yes. He's a, yeah, okay. he's a he's a biker man with a huge whip, and he's got a flaming skull head, laid leather jacket. Yeah, I think he's edgy. Um, but I I think I love how unique he feels along the Marvel roster. But I'm oh, yeah, and yeah, I find his story is. super interesting. And then I'd love to have seen him interacting with Daredevil or com comboing up in fighting with other people. Especially it's gotta happen eventually, right? Calling, yeah, but, calling it'll, it'll, cunt. but in the but shit era, it'll be terrible. Yeah, exactly. I have to watch bad. him team up with Captain Marvel. <laughs> it's gonna be awful. You know, Ghost Rider, you, 
you're pretty hot. Why, <laughs> why would they be doing stuff like Ironheart instead of Ghost Rider? Why wouldn't they just, like, start bringing in those characters? That's the thing, man. They made a lot of money uh, at the heights, but it's just like, man, you could have actually gone for people, characters people care about. Who, well, yeah, I mean, why why isn't Ghost Rider? And of course, what are we doing with X Men? Like, and of what, course, what what's are we doing going with Blade? on, guys? Yeah, well, I mean, who That's even knows if that film's gonna happen? It just seems to be in trouble all the time. <laughs> what a mess! Absolute fucking mess. We need to go on an arc looking at older uh, superhero movies, Marvel movies from before the MCU. Movies. Yeah, gotta watch that Ghost Rider sequel, Spirit of Vengeance. Ghost Rider Two, Spirit of Vengeance. Yeah, Nicolas Cage. We, we, we enter a new golden age of movies, but once a month you have to wrestle a greased up trash talking Jar Jar. No one gets hurt. I can make that sacrifice, yeah. I can do that, yeah. <laughs> Especially if people know what sacrifice I'm making. <laughs> this is no maybe one gets Sar hurt. Maybe so. Jar Jar is a nice guy, remember? Jar Jar is, you know, he blossoms as a character when he yeah, becomes it's, a it's politician. It's an opportunity for you both to do a bit of exercising, I guess, in the form of wrestling. No one's going to get hurt. It's a chill. Yeah. Chat with him about how he's doing, how he's his girlfriend and everything. Jar Jar's a life too. You'll probably get to be, maybe he'll eventually become like one of your closest friends. That's true. I can see myself being friends with Jar Jar. It's not that he's like a bad person or anything. He's just, he's a, he's a. He made one mistake. Guy. One mistake. <laughs> it made, it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> you guys wouldn't know. You were there. Like. <laughs> If you, you weren't make there, the same mistake, there was a massive have. robot army about to destroy the, the the Republic. What would you have done? Died. Well, war is hell, man. War, war me hell. <laughs> Double Knight very easily lends itself to being either a ninety-minute animated film or a nine-episode animated show. Uh, oh. yeah, kind of, especially with the structure of, you know, each of the different knights in their realms, like, you could break each episode into each of the, uh, each of the locations and then culminates in a confrontation with each of the, uh, knights. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool little world and a cool game. I mean, look at the, look at Shovel Knight himself. He's this knight running around with a shovel as his main weapon. It's, it's fun, it's charming. Marvel and Star Wars. He could make a, he'd make a really good detective. You know what? Digging up uh, all the evidence when it's well, buried he'd, he'd, underground. Well, he'd be, he'd be really good at getting all the dirt on people. Oh. Ha. Ha. There we He'll go. be here all week. Yeah, that's right. Uh, would you... Oh, wait. That was... Uh, Marvel and Star Wars are very different. Star Wars is an original IP and Marvel isn't. The common thing is Disney. It's not fatigue, just bad management and poor decisions. Um, so the fact that you would have gone more specific, that instead of Marvel, it's Disney. Someone could argue that's more broad, but I guess what I'm saying is that uh, we should probably go even more broad. That DC have proven that it's clearly a superhero genre problem now. It goes beyond um, people being tired of Marvel. Then you'd be like, well, then what about Indiana Jones? Like That could be explained by its own issues, but that could also have crossover. Um... It's, it's hard to say. No one can be definitive about these things. You can say stuff that makes complete sense. You could talk to a load mm. of people and get a huge poll on why they haven't gone to see it, but um, I don't... I want to move away from the whole superhero fatigue has to be impossible and it's always going to be bad movies thing. It's just like, of course, but you have to give a name to the process of when something comes out, the bad thing comes out and it makes X, the mid thing comes out and it makes X plus one, and the great thing comes out and it makes X plus three, um, and then when they come out at a bad time, that's the result. When they come out at a good time, all those numbers go up. So it's like, oh, well, then whether or not they're good is irrelevant to the point being made because uh, they make more money when they come out and they're good at a good time. But when they come out and they're good at a bad time, arguably, I know that we don't think Guardians is good, but I think that might have proven what the ceiling is on uh, Hero movies because everyone thought it was great. They might have. Um, I don't know if a truly masterpiece, like, uh, uh, what I really want to see, and I hope, I hope Joker 2 is really, really good. The thing that's going to pull oh, it yes. back, though, is being a musical. Like, people, superhero fans and musical fans, I don't know how much of a, I don't know what that looks like, you know? I know that a lot of people might not even see it if they know it's a musical, who are fans of, like, the Joker. And, you know, I don't want to see a musical. Give it a chance. So hopefully that one's really good, and then we can see what result that gets, because it would be super interesting to see what would have happened if Joker, the Todd Phillips Joker, came out today? 
what would happen? Mm. Like, does it does it go over a billion? It's like, probably not, I'd assume. I don't that's, know. That's kind of the point being made about superhero fatigue, that even the best ones suffer. Because the whole yeah. cultural, like, momentum of enjoying and engaging with superhero content has died down. Meanwhile, if it had come out, the, the, golden, the Goldilocks zone for superhero movies coming out was around about right before Infinity War and a little after Endgame, probably. That was about Pretty much. Back in college, my animation professor would play Movie Bob videos as we worked. Pretty sure he was a fan of him, unfortunately. Oof. That sucks, man. <laughs> that Why does suck. Why do you like playing Movie Bob? What do you mean? Like, while well, you're just there, like, doing work, it's like, all right, all right, class. Well, we talked about this before. Okay. It's probably worse. What is he with, saying, um, professor? Worse with Movie Bob, but, like, the idea that there are develop like, video game development courses and coding courses that they play. Fucking uh, Mark Brown videos in. It's like, why would you do that? They're the worst that people to play it so, for. Well, it's like the DSP thing, thing like, too. Well, oh, right, where the God of War developers are using DSP. Uh, that makes more sense like, to me because at least he represents the fucking sea, the floor of video game skill, and you kind of want to account yeah, for that yeah, at least yeah, somewhat when you're making a video I, game. I do find it kind of strange, right? What it looks like to get shown like a Mark Brown video. Like if you're in video game, if you're like in a course for video game development, like you figure you'd know a lot of these things already. I can't believe Just they like, wouldn't be driven nuts. Play. I actually can't. Like uh, the whole class being told, you know, sometimes you can code it so that you press the button and it does an action. You hold the button and it does a different action, and then you tap the button several times to do a different action. It's, these are called versatile actions, like versatile verbs, buttons. You'd be like, are you... Oh. Like, I've played video games what before. What the hell? I'm like, fucking retard. What are you what trying you to I'm say here? about me right now? Why wouldn't I know this? And, you know, you'd be like, okay, so it's useful for beginners? It's like, useful people who haven't played games? I guess uh, it's I useful guess, if you've I never played games and you just want to make one. Or is it, is it simply, like, that a lot of people don't really think about, like, the way that these things would be categorized? That a lot of people, yeah, like, I know what these things are, but the way that he explains it to me is, like, helpful? That's the best I can imagine. That I think I know what you're trying to get at, but I, I would love to, after they watch that video and they say, yeah, that was pretty cool, I would be like, so you didn't know that um, a lot of different buttons and stuff can do different things depending on how you push them in video games? Because it's just weird that you started developing video games when you didn't know much about them. And I'm, I'm sure they would be like, why stop being an asshole? Like, yeah, I know. I knew about that. And it's like, oh, you knew about that. So what are you praising the video for? And if they said, well, it's just neat to see it all laid out, I guess. Like, so you haven't it's, learned anything. You just enjoyed it. It's neat to be told it. things you already know. That's, and I'm not trying to be a dick. It's just like, is that the value? Which, by the way, makes sense. It's like validating your own perspective on video game mechanics. I do know that buttons I, do that. And I do see how they do that in all these games. I recognize some of these games. It's cool to know this. Yes, I agree. Is that it? I mean, I like I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. Make him watch Matthew Matosis instead. Not movie Actually Bob. Actually, inside the person, yeah. <laughs> Make him watch movie Bob. Uh, Molly Layton Gay. Wow. Ooh, true. Oh, you gotta though. inflict Very movie true. Bob on us again. Uh, to be fair, we did it to our audience. Yeah. Maybe I can't say much. Assuming they're done well, would you prefer a Bioshock or God of War show? Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, a Bioshock show, because I feel like the God of War game is already, at, it's starting to get to kind of that level to where it's kind of like a show, but it's the best parts of a show, but it's also a game, you know? If, like, Bioshock is distinctly different from what a television show would probably be, but God of War Ragnarok almost feels like it's show-esque, and it is a very high quality. So I, mean, I would the crazy the thing Bioshock is if you one. said maybe I'm trying to think of other questions that expose how I feel about this. Uh we've only got Bioshock one, two, infinite, and then DLCs. I hate infinite. Two isn't quite the yeah. way I want it to be story wise. And I love the world of Bioshock One, but that's one game. Meanwhile, God of War, like that that's a um it, maybe the question would be like, what would you prefer? Another Bioshock game that takes place like before the fall and gives you different stories based on different things that happen throughout and it's excellent like top quality uh verse is a game where kratos goes back to greece and it's an excellent game after all this time with with the other stuff it's like which would you prefer to play hmm probably the bioshock one are you free 
Uh, I think I, I, th I think that like the bio, the idea of a Bioshock show is pretty compelling. No, no, no. I, the question I asked. The question about the game. What specifically the, uh, the premise of having, if you, if you baked into it as well, like a story before, you know, essentially the events of the first game. Yes. I mean, I, I would be super interested in seeing that, and it feels like television could be a really great format to explore. No, not television, but games. Oh, oh, um, yeah, I guess you'd probably just need to imagine, like, mechanically, you might want to do things a bit differently. Well, they Maybe give my premise make... is that you feel it's top-notch, top-of-the-line video game for both. Oh. Uh, I mean, Bios yeah, like, that would be really cool. Okay, but I assume that you'd also be, understand the potential for Kratos going back to Greece and it's an amazing game as well. That's, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah. I, I, wonder if, I wonder if the reason you lead towards Bioshock is because there's already been a lot of God of War games, there haven't been many Bioshock games. That was where I started with this, that's kind of where I think yeah. my brain is leaning, is that I wouldn't mind some more great Bioshock stuff. Right, exactly. And um, I've always liked the idea of, uh, be, I want to kind of, uh, this is asking a lot, but fuck it, it's a hypothetical. I want to live <laughs> in a functioning rapture for even a while, learning everyone's characters, how the place yeah. went, and then seeing and then individual collapse. aspects and aspects that are falling apart, and then the fight starts, yeah, the splices the start civil, to begin, civil war elements, more yeah. people using them as weapons, and then the, you know things falling into disrepair. Setups and different uh, of, of different things that will eventually, and the game is really fucking long, and it's great, and Got all of the things and just just wonderful and immersive and the soundtrack's amazing and you can go outside of Rapture. You could even get a job as one of the people who repairs parts of Rapture. It's a huge, amazing game. Make it and I'll pay all of it. But yes, I would also like the God of War one, but I think I'm gonna edge toward Bioshock because it's been a while. I love that idea. Speaking of Soulless Corporations, Succession EFAP when? Oh no. <laughs> No. 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 <laughs> Both um, tactically and emotionally, I don't think I can handle that. And they said, I just want coverage of really good stuff. Well, you know, well, we loved them first two and a two half seasons. seasons. Two and a half seasons, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cosmo lost me as a viewer when he said, The Last of Us 2 is good, everyone's just dumb, and that people rank Revenge of the Sith higher than we have a right to. There's a lot of weird and crazy things. Mm-hmm. Lost was too good, everyone's just dumb. Okay. He said that about She-Hulk, too. He said She-Hulk is good. Or fine, which means good. You know, what can you do? What is the fandom menace, and why do I keep tell being told I'm a part of it because I'm subscribed to you guys? <laughs> what? The, the fandom menace doesn't exist anymore, as far as I know. It was, as uh... As, yeah. There's a couple of different people that got together, and I don't know if they called themselves that or if they were called it, but I don't know that anyone calls themselves Phantom Menace anymore. I have I no idea, really. Does. But we, I don't think anyone ever bestowed that name upon us. <laughs> like, as we're EFAP, we got our own, got our own fun name. Hmm. SCP of the day is SCP-2521. SCP-2521. Also, hello, is it Weekend rated Warrior. Highly? Oh, this is rated extremely highly. My god. Um, yeah, this looks like this looks like it could be very complex. So I will just leave this here for you to peruse and I'll leave the tab up for myself. Very well. Well, I've been watching your old videos and notice you've really mellowed out over the years. Was this intentional? Mellowed out. You mean like well, so a lot of the edge that was in my videos before or like anger, I thought when I was writing it and performing it that it was fun. Funny. But the thing is, the uh, like angle in the internet these days is people don't tend to interpret that that way if it's regarding like a person who also makes videos or, a, well, really a person in general. If you do it with a video game character or a movie character, people get the joke. Uh, I find that to be the case anyway. So, you know, I haven't, I wouldn't say I've mellowed out when it comes to making the Rage videos, there are certain sections where I rip into, you know, characters doing potentially immoral things, but I guess I've mellowed out in terms of how I approach content creators, because everyone gets very upset sometimes when you, you know, say like, oh, you're a fucking idiot for saying this re really stupid thing, when you don't, like, <laughs> it's not like you're making a huge, uh, 
criticism of their whole life and their upbringing and their experiences in life and their mental state. You're also just full of an idiot, very casually. You know? So um, it, it, I may have mellowed out in a lot of ways, primarily because you don't want to get booed from YouTube is one of the bigger ways yeah. that I've mellowed out. Not for internal reasons, shall we say. Um, well, yeah, because where I come from, I don't know if it's the same for both of you guys, but uh, people are better at taking jokes than on the internet. Uh, that can be a place where people get so upset they try and destroy your entire life. That's right. That's fucking hell. Uh, For something so impersonal, they seem to take it very personally all the time. Makes you wonder what the world would be like if with everything that's said, it comes with intention, like explicitly. And like look into it somehow. Yeah, like you sp like speaking like a Hanar. Because um, a lot of people will assume your intention and that's why they hate what you say. But if they knew yeah. unequivocally, like you, you said something pretty horrible, but that the intention is very clear. It says like, "I'm having fun. This is funny." Yeah, facetious, yeah, this or you know, sarcasm or good-natured joke or. And then similarly, yeah. if I said, "Oh, stop being an idiot," an intention read, "I want to discredit you and everything you've worked for," could be like, "Whoa." <laughs> <laughs> I hate your very soul, and I wish to see you destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. Also, uh, you are a dummy. Bob is recording with a drive through speaker. Jesus. Yeah. Honestly, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know how you can do that job for as long as he has, and your videos are still, like, deep-fried visually and orally. Um... Ba -ba -ba -ba. You've got to do better, Marvel. True, they do. This uh, the only thing that really will save them at this point, and Disney is actually like writing something great, and it's the one thing they can't do. So, yeah, they're a little bit screwed. Uh, Pink Panther better than Black Panther. I agree. In fact, that's pretty easy. Dev reading a book. I'm getting J M A A flashbacks. Don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't either. Part 1. Phase 4, instead of setting up a single villain, should have in instead followed the Secret Wars comic. Part 2. Do a small-scale setup for a bunch of different villains like Doom, Kang, Mephisto, maybe Galactus, uh, if they can handle him right, and then bring them all together. Part 3. They fight the heroes, but also each other over the ultimate power until one eventually rises to become Big Bad. Not what I would do, but any of these things. What they did would have worked if they'd written it well. Like, slowly set up Kang and do a bunch of random and strange stories with everyone else. Um, though, if it were my choice, for like, broadly what to do with Phase 4, it probably would have been back to small-scale stories, introduce... Like, spend yep. half the movies introducing new characters and spend half of them just developing ones. Loads of It's blip almost fallout. like a reset, yeah, for, for things. We're going back to basics, then we can build ourselves back up again. It's like a roller coaster. You yeah, know, we just got down off the high, so now we're gonna, you know, go back up. Kind of a crazy idea, but you could reboot, decanonize the Daredevil show and reboot him with the same actors to incorporate them into the MCU and that he starts up because of the blip. Starts up because he sees, like, suffering everywhere on the streets and the, the Avengers Ooh, and everyone's that would be not fun. doing anything. This is, it's but, an but excuse. Marvel, oh, sorry, I called you Marvel. But Mahler, <laughs> we, have to, we have to ignore the blip. That's the thing. We, we can't talk about the blip. Phase 4 would have to be, if you were brought in at that point, the blip phase. Where you go over everything blip and we yep. talked about it back in the day but it yeah. would have been really cool to have a tv show that's got maybe 10 episodes and uh each episode is one human being and their experiences during the blip and maybe they have a crossover vaguely with heroes at some point but you don't even need that you can be all humans in the mcu dealing with the blip maybe only yeah maybe only one episode actually has like a a, a superhero that's kind of part of the story in any meaningful way Otherwise, you'll just get references here and there or something like that. It's an interesting, it's an incredibly interesting phenomenon as a story premise to happen. Like half the universe, half the living things in the universe disappear for five years and then suddenly return. Like that, if you can't do anything with that, you suck. Bob is cooking, but tragically no one is hungry. <laughs> He's cooking. <laughs> um... I am in a world of Sega, yes, but I am alive. Apparently that's a quote from his book. <laughs> in a world of Sega. <laughs> I am in a world of Sega, but I am alive. Imagine Bob being a POW, and when they hang him by his armpits, he 
The crucifix breaks under his weight. He'd roll over the prison guards and eat the barbed wire. That's impressive. Yeah, spicy. I would I would assume that he wouldn't save anyone except for himself. Anyone who is saved by that would be completely coincidental. <laughs> They're too embarrassed to be saved. Like, oh yeah. Do you know this guy? No. No, no, no. He's wearing your uniform. Oh, that would No. That's no. that's like a blackout joke right there. Like someone who did escape a POW camp but it's because they were fat and they broke their like restraint and they got out. Like, cause do you think someone would say that was the reason, or would they be like, no, no, I um, I I guess like I managed to. Yeah, break Black it Adder is interviewing the prisoner after after they've <laughs> rolled back into camp and they're just morbidly <laughs> obese, and is like, and you escaped how again? <laughs> you know that sort of thing. Uh, the rope He's looking snaps. up and down. Uh, I was lucky. Oh, the God. rope was weak. And he's like, weak rope. Yes. Weak rope. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank goodness for that weak rope our enemies use. Weekend warrior confirmed for mouth breather. Rip. He, was he mouth breathing? I don't remember. Does he breathe with his mouth? I do sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like really everybody does sometimes, right? <laughs> but you're supposed to breathe through the nose primarily. Put all the filters in yes. there. Yes. Uh, thoughts on Childhood's End 2016 BBC miniseries? Never seen it. I've never heard seen of it. it. I thought that was going to be like a really deep philosophical question until it was about a show, but. Finally decided to download and watch through Hill House as a palate cleanser. I've seen season one of it. Wait, I've seen season one of the IT crowd downloaded as well. Oh, also high ranks. Hello. Oh, they did. They said they. Oh, wait, they've decided to watch through Hill House. They haven't actually watched through it yet. OK, I get it. I thought they were going to include whether or not they thought it was any. Because gosh darn it, I like Hill House. Give it the old Indeed, I really like Hill House. Good stuff. Thumbs up. Except, Except for the, the ending. ending. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the ending. And we can talk about Bly Manor, and we can talk about... Well, Bly Manor has a mostly... It, it does have a good ending. It's like, there's, there's an issue here and there. It's not as bad as yeah. Midnight Mass. A couple issues, but yeah, solid ending overall. And Midnight Mass has a fucking atrocious ending. Uh, thoughts? It ain't no succession, but boy. Ugh. Thoughts on The Boys Season 3? When will you break it down? Uh, Rags and Free will never watch it. I'm not oh, recommending no. it. Yeah. Uh, give a shit. I watched it, didn't think it was very good. It's I don't think it's as bad as season two. Like there's some stuff in there I was like, oh that's that's funny and kinda neat. But uh they waste all of it by the time you hit the last episode. Uh Soldier Boy was a cool <laughs> idea. I don't care. What? I don't care about the boys anymore. I don't care like about it at all in any way. Shape form. Every time unaware. I boot up Whenever I uh, whenever I boot up Battle.net so I can play StarCraft 2, I get a message sometimes. It's like, the boys, because there's like a Call of Duty crossover thing for like Warzone, I think. So you yeah, can, I, I guess you can get like costumes or whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. That show is like a thing that exists. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I thought it was bad. And uh, I didn't like the everyone's theory for why Maeve is turned human and she falls out of a fucking skyscraper and she lives. And everyone was like, how the fuck did that happen? And the running theory was that, well, she's a lesbian, you can't... Or a, a bisexual, not even a lesbian. The point should go down. But she was kept alive because of that. Uh, the writer said, can't go around killing your LGBT characters. Uh, oh. Okay. They've become so why drop the them out of a fucking skyscraper then, huh? <laughs> like, what's the point? <laughs> Just give her a little balloon and she'll be fine. Hello, future me. In episode 60, something I asked if I could make an EFAP fan game. Well, COVID hit, and it never really took off. Until now! We're starting development from the beginning once again. Also, high rags. Oh, wow. Like, really? That's amazing. You're, we that are wonderful. starting development from the beginning. That's incredible. The idea that more than one person even is working on a whole last video game that regards EFAP is crazy. Do you remember way back when there was that... I think we the watched shooter? a video of a, of a video game, right? We didn't... Yeah, the shooter on the streets. Yeah, where you had to fight Captain Marvel, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fun, whatever it ends up being. Good, best of luck. Mongos bang their bongos, and Artards send their regards, and whatever Team Fringy is called, <laughs> they do their thing. Nice to get some old-fashioned e stuff. And yes, the the Artards are Rags's team, and mine are the Mongos. The, our Adam and Sitch, you have to have your team or something when you go on there, I guess. Maybe, yeah. I don't know if I'll keep the Artard name. <laughs> Great day. What I said it. I said it as a joke, but it is pretty. <laughs> hi, Rags. Myself, just... Hello, hi. 
Just got into Deep Rock Galactic. Are you excited for Season 4? We may be getting Jet Boots. Don Bless, Rock and Stone. Hi, I am excited for Season 4. Uh, I haven't actually played it yet. I've got plenty of time to do it, and I don't have any... There's no FOMO in the game. But, uh... Hopefully soon, uh, I'll, I'll get back into it. Just been doing other stuff. Just been doing other stuff, really. Greetings, Rag. Oh, greetings! Mola, thank you. Uh, no problem. Due to you, I have gained an infinitely larger view of media, so thank you. Also, Fringy's Fallout 76 video is great. Yeah, Fringy, that was uh, a good one. Uh, <laughs> you really yeah, told that game a new one. Uh, what a crazy game. Uh, what a all, crazy game. We all love jokes, and criticism can be improved with added humor, but when you're the only one that laughs, is the joke still funny? That feels more like an appropriate question, IMO. Well, uh, I guess you just have to figure out what your definition would be, because if a joke is only funny based on who laughs at it, then at that point it's going to be down to their preferences almost. Uh, teaching comedy is tough. I'm trying to if figure someone out. someone says a joke in the woods and nobody laughs, is it even a joke? Is it still funny? It's, uh, it's kind of tough to say definitively. Um, because, you know, whenever someone does a full analysis of a joke explaining how it should be so funny and then nobody laughs, it feels awkward. Yeah, I I wonder if that is an element of, like, it's it's a property that you draw from it. Um, like, in and of itself, a joke is not funny. In the same way that if you, like, if you read a book, or, or if, like, is a book that is laying in the woods that no one ever reads, you know, is that still compelling? You know, is that still interesting, or is that still a well-written... I guess it would be a well-written story um, by our standards, but in the more well, subjective yeah, no, that's, sense... You had this you question, know. I think, where we were like, what about what we consider to be a well-made film, but is locked on a hard drive and no one saw it, when a lot of people yeah, go so by Yeah, no one writes the best story in the world, but yeah, yeah no one reads it. Oh. Is it still a good story? And so we I would think, say yes. I, well, I think as well we would translate that to jokes can be considered good even if no one uh, laughs at them, because... It has to be something. Be if it was just by however many people laugh at them, then it wouldn't. It would be sort of subject to a lot of variables, like the bias of the but audience. Maybe. maybe it is, which may be the well, so case. I don't know how I feel about way, right? like the humor and amusing. If you had uh, candidate A and candidate B in politics that are fighting each other, like a definitively harsh joke about the state of candidate B works really well on the audience for A. But audience for B, like, that's not even a good joke. That's terrible. That's blah, blah, blah. But then you flip it for candidate A, and then audience B are like, oh, that's actually really good, yeah. And then audience A are like, no, that's shit. Like, what does it tell you about the joke at that point? Like, well, I guess it's well constructed. It's just you can't tell it to people who are upset by it. <laughs> I guess, like, you know what I mean? Like, it gets complicated. Because uh, if you told the joke on one side, you might be convinced, holy shit, this is the best joke ever. If you tell it on the other side, you're like, oh, this is like one of the worst jokes I've ever and that applies to everything in life. Uh, meanwhile, if we had a story that we considered to make a full amount of sense and someone says, I just don't like it because I was bored, we'd be like, uh, okay. You know, there's not much you can do about that. But funny feels a little more complicated. It's all about timing, isn't it? That's what timing is pretty key in comedy a lot of the time. Um, yeah, I suppose no matter what you learn and how much people teach you if you end up writing a joke that no one laughs at it's hard to consider it Ail the mighty I would have to think about that yeah that's a good question to ask and I haven't really thought about it so I don't know I don't know how I how I come down on that I think I come down on kind of like in terms of like compelling you know, like is a story compelling is you know what is your purpose these are things we draw out of stuff um but I'd have to think about that comedy can be complicated Hail the mighty EFAP. I've been watching old FAPs and I'm on 21, and I just watched the Colonial Marine stream. Had me gut rolling. Oh, also high rags. There it is. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> that it's had a, a great one. opening, too. With a flashlight Here's and a gr grenade launcher. Yeah. I'll never forget those two moments. It's the one where you're trying to figure out. Is it figuring out your flashlight and you gr grenade yourself? Flashlight. I press. Yeah. I. It's a flat. I. What's the flashlight? I press F. Of <laughs> the course. Flashlight. Turns out that's your grenade launcher button. <laughs> and I like hurt. We you start off instantly by like accidentally downing someone. I forget exactly the repercussions, but and uh, I remember Wolf coming out of the the mech, 
like the animation it just looks like he goes oh the out. pooping it yeah that was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> i just poops him out uh 52 months is a long time i'll be yelled out i'll be yelled at for it also metal stream supremacy oh i don't know about that his stream's okay i don't know his how streams are all right um but thank you you know are any of you all Zelda fans? If so, why aren't you playing Tears of the Kingdom? No, Zelda's fine. I don't. I don't Zelda's all right. Care enough about Zelda, I'm afraid. Uh, Fringy played it. I did, uh, but I'm also not like I wouldn't say I'm like a Zelda fan. I'm not super familiar with it. This one says shilling for possibility. Uh, sorry, positivity. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shilling should be positive. Tom Hanks was not Finch. That was Paul Tom Hanks Giamante. I'll admit the noses are similar. I don't know what this is related to. I'm afraid. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, likewise, I don't know. Uh, finally caught up to the stream. Watch Succession, you massives. It has the best writing and acting <laughs> of the past few years. Whoa. You're partially right. <laughs> I loved season one and two. That's season cool. one and yeah. two were fucking top tier. Oh, that was really Oh, I couldn't it. get enough. Love those seasons. Hell yeah. Hello, EFAP. Thank you for the Wings fight coverage. Stuff like that's really fun. More video essay responses, please. Also, Wings quote of the day, barely even winded me. <laughs> what, standing up? I was going to say, like, you mean, like, was he a fighting game? Or I don't fucking know, because I don't I don't think he said that to Boogie. At least I didn't see it. Um... And yes, you, you'll always get video responses. They're going to be mixed in with uh, film breakdowns. Brett. Yeah, we had some really good ones, I think, after you uh, made that super chat. So I hope you really enjoyed them, because yes. I certainly did. I love I love covering video. Res uh, that's, I think that's my favorite thing to do, but always, uh, we, always we find, like a good uh, variety. Fun characters out there. Yes, fun characters and movie Bob. Last guy didn't say hi, Rags, so hi, Rags. Oh, hello. Can we get a I Survived EFAP 217 shirts with the panel on that particular episode in proper Ragnarok <sighs> costumes, including giant Fenra rags? Fenra rags. Also high rags. Hello! Um, it would be a funny t-shirt. The thing is, you'd need one for I Survived 93 as well. Ooh, 93 uh, was... Uh... 93 and 217, wow. they're the tough ones to survive. 93. There's a pre-100 EFAP, wow. I remember some of the comments on 217 were like, I never thought we'd get another one of these, but... <laughs> I have a feeling that, you know, we'll keep getting them. Thoughts on Dr. Horrible, also EFAP be a bad. That might happen someday, an EFAP on be a bad, but Dr. Horrible is a musical made by Joss Whedon starring Neil Patrick Harris. I remember enjoying it. I know of that show, the Adult Swim show. I don't think that's... I thought it was like a... Uh, like a... Mini series was it? Was it on Adult Swim? I don't know. I thought it was. Look here. Season one. There's three episodes. I don't know if, uh, if it's the same thing you're thinking about, Rags. It's, um, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe. I think I. I, well, well I didn't know if it was on. I didn't know if it was on Adult Swim or not. But I think I know of that show, but I don't really know anything about it. Uh, Nathan Fillion's in it. Captain Hammer does it. No, that and it's part probably is a not. different thing. But um, yeah, I remember liking it, but I haven't seen it since it came out, which was 2008. Um, extinct animal of the day, the Stylinodon, the hillbilly beast. You'll understand when you see its teeth. Can't really see it. Oh, that one's <laughs> kind of funny to say that it. That's. The case. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> We're out of there. <laughs> Hello, Fringy. Oh, hey. Is SCP-049 a relation of yours, or just a work colleague that you chat with occasionally? I... What was that? I mean, SCP-049, I don't know what it is. 
I don't. There is a, there really is a know plague doctor about. SCP. Yes, he is one of oh, the okay, so original doctor, one of the right. Not all okay. plague doctors know all plague doctors. Racist. Yeah, it's, he, right. He's yeah. Okay, people. Understand. Yeah, no, I'm not familiar. Um, uh, even though iDubs is kind of lame now, what's everyone's favorite content cop? Uh, oh, uh, leafy or rice gum? The interesting thing now is like, so if you search it, you'll find all the re-uploaded versions, I guess, because you can get them in unlisted form on his channel. But I guess people will just re-upload them. Why would he unlist them? Is he? Because... Well, I guess I can think about why now he would. Well, so the theory for a lot of people is, ah, so you still got to get the money even though you disavow them morally. But it's like, well, the reasoning he said is that he wants them to remain accessible because he doesn't want to try and uh, scrub the past of his mistakes, but he also doesn't want his them mistakes. to be promoted. Because yeah. those were a mistake. It was a mistake to point out those terrible people and all the terrible things they did. Yeah, don't, it's, it is kind of weird because he, he made a general apology to all of them, uh, especially to Tanamojo, Mon Mongu. I, don't, I actually have no idea how to pronounce it. Uh, yeah, I, I remember, yeah. Yeah, because he made one called Content Cop Big Paul, right? But then it turned out he was about the uh, rice gum, like you mentioned, yeah. Um, as for favor, though, I mean, I don't know, the leafy one was pretty fun. I remember when he did, like, the earlier ones on, uh, like, scams and stuff on... Yeah, yeah, like Kickstarter scams. Yeah, those were the... Is this really all there is, is my question to Hollywood. For now, I guess, yeah. Thoughts on Indy 5 bombing at Cannes? Disney thought they had their own Maverick. Cannes was usually Oscar bait type movie. TGM broke that last year. It was funny, because obviously this was said before uh, Indy bombed at the box office. Actually, so. yeah, bombed for real. So, yeah, I mean, it deserves it. Well, I don't know why people I, I, like that film. I understand it. Something that I heard was that when a film uh, debuts at Cannes, it means that reviews are going to start coming out. So, like, I believe Dial of Destiny and Elemental both got premiered at Cannes, and so, like, a month ahead of time, their reviews were out, and they weren't very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah, they, they went for it, they took their shot, and... It was a gamble, uh, and it did not pay off. Yeah. You try... <laughs> yeah, you fail. <laughs> That's it. I can't imagine the the average like can sort of movie goer would be like Indiana Jones, like especially the new stuff. It's like yeah, I guess I could see those kinds of like uh, the people who want to see like fucking ten movies a day that are all very like art house related or at least somewhat being like Disney Lucasfilm's fifth Indiana Jones film, like. <laughs> Yeah, you wonder, don't you? It would have to be really good, and it was not. <laughs> yeah, it'd have to be really meaningful and interesting and well-written with, you know, something. It'd have to be kind of like not an Indiana Jones movie at all, I feel, to sort of fit in with that crowd. I imagine that crowd would still have, like, respect for the, uh, yeah, the original three. Yeah, you would think. I would certainly hope so. Hi. Love you guys. Hi. Uh, just wanted to get this off my chest. The way people are reacting to Super Mario is how I felt about Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. It's nonsense, but it was done with love for the material with many details and references to appreciate. I'm disappointed that Mario gets a pass from most people, but Godzilla got negative feedback when I'd argue they're about the same. They're bad. Dude, I think Godzilla uh, got positive feedback! What are you talking about? You and remember? also, Mario's we, better than Godzilla. We got in trouble yes. for shitting on King of the Monsters, and secondly, King of the Monsters has way less humanity in it than uh, Mario does. <laughs> Despite, Mario iro is. ironically, it has less humanity in it. Even though, screen time-wise, the humans fucking fill King of the Monsters. You had Charles, Charles Dance fucking was dance in, that. in that movie. Oh, we had the same thought. <laughs> Use him. Have him say things that are interesting. Damn you. Because yes, the special effects were amazing. The... the special effects were amazing. But you know, and I'm sure the references were really cool. I I wouldn't have ever said like the Mario movie is good because of the references. We were mainly talking about you know how acceptably well they did with most characterization, and then the yep. pretty decent job they did with Mario and Luigi as payoffs for their you know bro ship. It was cool. Yeah, it's, it's compared to like King of the Monster, I don't even know what you'd be complimenting really in that film. A character? No idea. 
the lady who regretted unleashing monsters on the world. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. I guess. Crisis on Infinite Earth was an EFAP 1 out of 10. That doesn't surprise me. It was yep. pretty bad. I think it's bad that Twitch acting like an agent because now brands can lowball other streams, now they can use Twitch as a base. Uh, Twitch is acting like an agent because now brands can lowball other streams. Uh, I mean, Twitch is getting cost, like, this is bad for Twitch overall, what's been happening lately, right? Um, kick and rumble, so, yeah. kick and rumble grabbing creators off Twitch and Twitch banning other ones. Feels like it's inevitably making them quite a bit. As far as I'm aware, we're all waiting for Amazon to start to, uh, strangle Twitch a little bit until it decides to get rid of it. So, uh... When I remember, because I don't, I just don't follow Twitch, so I don't know if this has happened already, but I know a lot of streamers believe that Twitch Prime is going to be stopped. And that's been a huge part of Twitch for a long time. Yes, especially, like, maybe not like that Twitch Prime would be stopped, but you wouldn't, well, what I mean is that you wouldn't get it from being a Prime uh, subscriber you know, on Amazon. Not, you don't get a free Twitch subscription out of that. It, that would no longer be the case. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, Cosmonaut scored Civil War 6 out of 10, so Phase 4 is better than Civil War. Oh, yeah. That, On I, average, wait, does that mean by he scored, his metric, right? He had all of his scores. Damn, I wish I could have found out. Did he think Shield okay. was better than War? I think he gave it a 7, didn't he? Uh, I can't I remember. Out. <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah. He does eventually put like a score up on the screen, right? Yeah, he gave She-Hulk a 7 out of 10. Jeez, fucking Christ. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, what can you do? Uh, Movie Bob figured out how to beat criticism and EFAP. Just never end the sentence. Can't provide rebuttal if you can't pause him. We can pause. We can pause in between sentences. Have the... Uh, most places ban vomiting during an eating challenge. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Like, you'd lose if you do that? I mean, I that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, time exists, according to Movie Bob. Loki and many MCU shows exists outside of time and space. Sure, buddy. Um, I mean, it always feels like people pull that card when they're desperate. Um, it's hard to think of a time where they pull it and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But maybe there is a good execution of that. I don't know. Immutually. I know it's rude to ask a lady her age, but I just got to know. How old are you? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I am most 30. Getting on, you know. Time to start packing it in. I think it's time to retire. Don't find many people working past age 30. Go to the old folks. I hope in the old folks' home that I eventually end up in, I get to talk about movies. They just play, yeah. You just get to be in there. You're the one always watching the movies, yeah. <laughs> Can I run my podcast? And they just hand me a microphone with no wires, and they're like, "You thank go you." Ahead. Uh, wings of the wings quote of the day: depressed. Like, don't come in here asking me how much how my day was, man. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. <laughs> don't care about that. <laughs> oh, jeez. Bob's take equates to trends are unpredictable, so speculation is pointless, which just excuse, uh, excuses producers from doing their job. Good producers do exactly what Bob is mocking here. Lazy defeatism. It was also his job to speculate. It's our job to speculate. People want to hear what we think about what's going to happen next, and it's supposed to be based on our understanding of what's happened before. That's like the whole thing. That's what talking about. It always drives me nuts if someone says like, haha, you were wrong if previously someone had said something like, I believe uh, Solo would be successful. Uh, like, haha. And it's like, well, I just, I mean, I, there was a lot of reason to believe it would be or could be, but that it's not. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't think we have a set like expectation on how well Solo would do, but we've of course uh, expected something like, um, oh, I think we'd say we'd hope that in, uh, in Dial of Destiny would do bad and it pretty much has. The Flash, I think, I had said I was really unsure. I had no idea what was going to happen with it. 
Um, I didn't know either, but uh, did I didn't not think expect it was going to make 300 million, uh, less than 300 million. Yeah, I no, think. I never would have guessed that. So that would be, that would have been completely wrong, I guess, if I was forced to make a choice. But in the same way, like you're forced to do a box office guess on the Marvels. I feel like we're all going to be sitting probably 300 to 400 million at this point. Um, I think I was at 500 million, but I'm not so sure oh. about that. I think that I was the one of us who kind of who gave the low among the lower or not, if not the lowest answer and I'm starting to feel kind of vindicated you know a little bit feeling Why? more I mean, confident well it's uh the the issue is I guess that there's so many variables involved in each of these you never quite know how anything's going to turn out it's uh but I I think that a calculator with all the information would probably conclude that the Marvels has to do the worst. It has to do worse than The Flash, right? And it's like, I don't know. Mm. has to do worse I than Ant-Man. Know. Has to, I don't know right? that it has to do worse than The Flash. DC has a worse reputation than Marvel. But uh, compared to, yeah, like Ant-Man is kind of interesting because it's like, hmm. And yeah, I mean, about as well as Ant-Man, probably. Maybe how less. does Secret Invasion... Uh, Nobody's talking about it. This. No one's talking, talking about, about, it, about it. And the people and who Secret are Invasion like... featured the scrolls, who were a big element of Captain Marvel. Yeah, so I'm wondering, you know, that was so. Hmm, That's that. true. If there's like very minimal engagement with Secret Invasion, despite having Samuel Jackson as the lead, mm -hmm. you know, and as well as a, a pretty stacked cast, then yeah, makes you it makes you wonder. Pretty Jova. <laughs> Jover, yeah. History of criticism. When Adam and Eve bit into the forbidden fruit and uttered, "This is," mid. oof. This is mid. God must have been so fucking pissed. What? Just so knowledge in general is mid. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, pros and cons, I guess. To explain this, I'd have to bring up Aristotle, but we don't have time for that. Could have used the same amount of words to actually mention the man. Is if... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Could have done, it's like have... when a character says, I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. That was like a good few seconds there. Yeah. But it's also like all of what you just achieved, you could have said with saying nothing at all. You didn't have to say Yeah, that. exactly. Why say I was going to do it, but then I won't? Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Access Media slanders DC movies for years as a lesser MCU, but now all of them praise The Flash? I know June is busy, but why so much dick riding? Why? Did they? I don't remember. Well, I mean, Flash didn't get reviewed super well. It was more so, like, in the lead-up that it's, like, all the execs and everything. Oh, they really believe in The Flash. They think The Flash is great. Flash is going to be so good. All their expectations and hopes and dreams are on The Flash, and then it just completely catastrophically collapsed. Yeah, they all just liars. You just lie. That's all you, you just lie. I don't, I don't even know what to make of that. The fact that it's like, look at all of these directors who are saying it's great. And then it comes out and everybody instantly writes it off. Like instantly it's over. Or Jova. Is it, dude, $263 million. That's what, that's what it got to. And it's releasing on like digital, like real soon or alternatively a long time ago. Who knows? The time, it's a crazy thing. Uh, after a month, I finally stopped being an unemployed a-hole, so now I can give you all the monies to you guys again. Hello, Fring Daddy G and Mauler by Rags. Oh, goodbye. But good luck on getting a... Or obviously, good luck. Congratulations on uh, getting a job. Good job. Yeah, uh, good job much. on getting a job. You did it. Hooray. These were critics with negative reviews when movies were silent. I guess you mean there were critics. Wait, no, they did say that. I'm just reading it wrong. Um... Before then, books, plays, and operas had critics. What is this guy's point? Clueless. He's he was, he was saying stuff, and uh, you know what? We we're okay with that. That's allowed. You're allowed to say things and let the world know that that's a thing. Oh, sweet crispy critters, that's a classic. My opinion here, uh, exactly what you mean, but I agree. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, in my opinion. <laughs> in my opinion. All the commandments needed to have in my opinion at the end of it. Really cool. <laughs> Bringing, I saw the look what's the cat dragged in joke. Uh, the one with the dog in case there's more than one reference. I lost my mind. Simpsons funny. Hi, Rags. Hello. Oh, uh, what, the one where, uh... 
Oh no! Wait, wait. Which one was that? That that sounds. It was Mr. Burns said that, right? Yeah, I can't remember. I was thinking. I for some reason I got mixed up with the come crawling back, <laughs> which <laughs> I love that too. Yeah. Um, it looks like much more modern Simpsons, at least from the YouTube, because uh, there's loads oh, of results, but it's all from this one yeah, scene. It the, looks like the one that I'm getting is yeah from like season twenty eight. <laughs> So, I, I don't, I actually don't know what this joke is. Ooh, come on, girl. Ow, ow, ow. Get him by the collar. You oh, yeah, I should be careful. I'm trying to look at it, but I just realized copyright might be a problem. Right, be <laughs> careful. Yeah. Come on, don't bite me. Come on. This season, this is going to be like a new, this feels new. Oh, uh, well, like I said, it said season 28. So, like, super new. Quiet. I'm doing something important. I assume Homer's trying to force the cat to drag someone back in because. And so that he can say, look what the cat dragged there in. There you go, yes, there I got it. it. Well, well. Oh, yeah, he does literally that. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Well, look what <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. In. Worth it. Worth it. Maybe that's, they might be referred to something else, but that's, yeah. I think. Um, they did say the one with the dog in case there's more than one reference, so that's probably it. In Local's newest vid, he said, Subjectivity cannot be wielded offensively, only defensively. It serves no purpose beyond deflecting criticism. And I resonate with that. You dumbos need to play DDLC. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what a bizarre thing to say. You can only use subjectivity defensively. What a weird thing. Where do these people get these thoughts from? Well, this person said they resonate with that, right? I thought that was a joke for setting up the DDLC thing. No, this is us after this full stop. Oh. So I resonate with that, period. DDL, play DDLC? Yes. Oh. So the, give you, what's, what, what, how uh, would you attack that statement with subjectivity? With subjectivity? How would I attack that statement with subjectivity? I feel as if of course, I feel as if. God, how would I even start? That's such a weird thing to say. Subjectivity should not be wielded offensively. No, it cannot. Only use cannot cannot be wielded offensively. Oh well, I think that's the dumbest fucking comment I've ever read in my life. What? There, I just there, I said that, and that that was used that was used offensively in multiple senses of the thing, right? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah I just for think... a joke, but. What they're suggesting is that anything you say that is subjective adds nothing in terms of like for the thing itself, it's only going to be uh, in regard to you, obviously, and therefore can only be it can only defend you. It can't ever defend or attack the thing itself because um, you're reacting to it. I'm assuming that's what they're trying to say versus saying in this case an objective thing like. You know, the thing in question, it's on a table, we're all looking at it, and then I say, like, oh, it's um, it's uh, not symmetrical, or it, it, the gears aren't fit properly and it doesn't work. Like, all those things could be uh, objective versus you saying, I don't like the way it looks. Something that's like, well, that's only going to be an aid of your perspective. It's not going to mean anything to the actual thing. Until you say say more. I'm guessing that's what they mean. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe that's what they mean by that. Cannot be used. Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah, this is a kind is, of an odd one with the way that they that phrase it. As part of the quote, it serves no purpose beyond deflecting criticism. People use it all the time to deliver criticism. For many purposes, yeah. Whether or not you're maybe the quote's trying to say that yeah, but it doesn't mean anything or it doesn't have any power if you think about it or something. I don't know. Maybe I need the context of the quote to further understand it, but stands. I don't know. This one says hmm. we straight up fart in. <laughs> True. That's all it says. All right then. We straight up fartin. IGN gave Indiana Jones a four. Laugh my ass off. If Indiana J uh, IGN gives it a four, it's got to be a point five, right? No, it was like a uh. like a two. Maybe. When I can give something a yeah for you, know you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. Um, what's your favorite villain line from Marvel movies? My personal favorite is from Drakov. Don't tell me to stop. 
Oh yeah, when he freaks out. Why would you say that's a favorite? Don't tire me, just stop. Favorite like villain the line? Way, isn't he? Actual... he, he, he it, the, the way he says it is, "Don't tell me to stop." Oh, stop. Isn't that how it goes? Yeah, it's really cringe. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. That. Yeah, that's right. Mahler's got it right. Um, oh. The most oh. villain quote. Oh, wait, the best one, I assume. They're actually just... I don't know if they want us to say our favorite or least favorite. <laughs> uh, mm. Ooh, wow. Um, I mean, I'm my sure favorite Thanos probably has got fucking, some bangers. They were probably going to go to Zemo or Thanos. Zemo, yeah. yeah. Or Thanos, one of the... Or Loki in Avengers. Oh, yeah. I mean, Iron Burton with glorious purpose. Like, that's a cool line until Loki decided they wanted to pillage it. it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Thanos has a lot of good lines. But In I, I don't know what... War. <laughs> In Infinity War, yes. In Infinity War. But didn't you like when Kang shouted, I am Kang? Yeah, that's great. Uh... And then he said, you talk to ants? That was, that was oh, really great. Yeah, that's such a good line. <laughs> a nice, great. funky line. Well, we got to submit something. That does put oh. a smile on my face. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I do. Does uh, on the uh, an Ultron's first appearance, does he say anything really neat? He says some cool things in that first scene when he's yeah. the crazy, sort of disheveled-looking robot who says a lot of cool things. Yeah. I'd have to watch some of these scenes again because I bet these guys like you. Zemo, Thanos, Vulture, they've probably got some really great lines. I just can't really think of any off the top of my head that come to me. Um, when, he, uh, when Zemo says, it took me two days until I found their bodies, my father still holding my, mother and, uh, my wife and son in his arms, and the Avengers, they went home. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that one. Powerful. I mean, yeah. Thanos is a lot of things, right? A lot of them have been memed, but like, <laughs> you have a lot of good lines. Oh, yeah, that's probably. Uh, and Bri Iron Man and Bridal Praise when 3. I don't know why they, <laughs> they still want that Iron Man 3 praise. One day, I'm sure. For people claiming Insert IP isn't dead, they're still making movies. The ironically named Walking Dead was literally coming out with new episodes as recently as last November, yet no one cared. Nobody cares about The Walking Dead anymore, I don't think. No, and the people who are watching it don't talk about it. <laughs> they, yeah, they, I they guess. I guess. It. Yeah, and they've got spin-offs and everything, but like nobody, nobody's watching it. If they're watching, they ain't telling anybody about it. Yeah, maybe mid, they're ashamed to. Mid, more like middle of the local landfill, maybe. Oh, oh, oh! oh. 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 Snippity snap. For some reason, I listened to Wolf saying, "I can't wait to evolve as a critic and come there." I can't wait to evolve as a critic and become a fucking idiot just like Just Right in loop when looking up Jimmy <laughs> Neutron fan art. What? What does that have to do with Jimmy Neutron fan art? I have no idea. All right. Maybe Explains it's a all his fucking forgot. brain blasts. Uh, Shovel Knight has four detailed campaigns, New Game Plus, and challenge modes for each, and a fully featured Smash Bros. mode that has story mode. Wow, that's great. I mean, yeah. That's a an lot easy of, recommendation. A lot of stuff. Um, it's Boston or New York, but sounds put on and fake. Oh, about movie Bob's accent? I mean, he does drift into it every once in a while, and it's really distracting when he does. I'm sure they're not keen on um, <laughs> claiming him as the, for their own. No. Hey, he's one of, yeah, he's one of us. The master of poop misses nothing. Okay. That's a good villain quote. That's a good Marvel villain quote. I like that one. Damn, Sean King let himself go. Guess they think Movie Bob looks like Sean Movie King. Movie Bob is Sean King? I don't see it. Sean King's a bit more white than Movie Bob, but <laughs> apart from that, I really don't see it. Uh, in Fellowship of the Ring, how did Gandalf get his staff back from Saruman after losing it in their fight at Isengard? He has it again at the start of Rivendell. Uh, so we, I think we talked about this before, and I discovered from other Super Chatters that it is noticeably different, apparently, if you look at both of the staffs, and that the thing you're supposed to infer, but I don't think we have much to work with, is that he got it from Elrond? Or that they got it from Rivendell in general? 
uh, uh, not a after. bad inference yeah um I, you know i uh, maybe the book has more context that would help answer that question in terms of what things you can look out for in the film to make that inference but i think that probably could have could have had a line maybe just to let everyone know because um yeah i've heard that one highlighted before and his staff is pretty useful um hello lovely fappers both panel and chat i am so drunk also high rags hello Anyone see Guy Ritchie's The Covenant? Oh. No, I've not seen Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. I think I've heard okay thing. Let's have a look. Who's in it? Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, Anthony Starr. Oh, all right. I think that's it for people I recognize. Yeah, I don't know. Hope it's good. 2023 movie. So that's new. Very new. During the war in Afghanistan, a local interpreter risks his own life to carry an injured sergeant across miles of grueling terrain. Alright, yeah. Could be very cool. Oh my god, a video coverage on EFAP! I have been blessed. That's true. Bless him. Movie Bob is so big, his variety hour would be at least 80 minutes. Anyways, who's he trying to genocide these days? Never know, but... I don't think 80 minutes is that long. 80 minutes isn't that long. Yeah. Sure, let's... Not these days. Um, Marvel has quite literally created so much brain rot for and against it. Marvel humor bad. Movies don't connect bad. Please just get the fuck out. Um, It's unfortunate because some of these things can start out as great shorthand, but they eventually like damage the discussion. Um, I brought. I remember bringing this up, and I got like shot on for it, and then it was easy to prove. It was like, when you say Marvel humor, what do you mean? And a lot of people were like, "Are you insane?" Like everyone knows what it means. And then I started asking people, and I got like eleven different answers. I remember reading them all out. Um, I think it was on the Ragnarok one. But it was funny as fuck because I was just like, for everyone saying they were so sure of exactly what uh, Marvel humor is, it's amazing how many answers there can be. Most common, of course, being making a joke when things are serious. Um, making too many jokes in a row because you're like overcompensating, making jokes that don't fit the characters that are making them, making jokes uh, like just it, make sure you have jokes in every single scene, never have a scene without a joke. You know, there's all these kinds of things. And I, I don't think any individual one is an invalid criticism. It's just so you, you move into saying something for shorthand, like Mary Sue, and then you start saying it for whenever, you know, you, you sort of have that topic and then no one knows what you're actually talking about. People said Ragnarok had Marvel humor, and it was like, what do you uh, mean? No, oh, it had humor. distinctive well, but that's the thing. humor. Instead of saying no, you go, can you tell me what you mean by Marvel humor so I can actually figure out whether or not you're right? Because if you were to say, like, all the characters will, will have moments where they're making jokes, and I think that's inappropriate or something, including Kratos, you'd be like, okay, well, that's something we could talk about. Which joke do you think is inappropriate? But if they simply say, it's Marvel humor, you're like, well, of course not, but, like, maybe, I don't know, it depends on what you be. Um... Fab quotes out of context. Mola, in a serious and unironic voice, said, You've traumatized the child at that point. Excellent fucking work. Oh, well, that was. Apparently, apparently, someone traumatized the child, according to me. Um. Any chance of a Kong Fap? A Peter Jong's Long Kong? Wong is long going on. It would be a mongi fong for the long. <laughs> yes, it would. I agree. I like it. I like it. Uh, hey, Mola. Favorite Power Wolf songs? Mine are Nighttime Rebel and Midnight Madonna. Um, uh, I think I'm only familiar with one, and it is Nighttime Rebel, and I really quite like that one. So that's my go-to if anyone asks, what's your favorite Power Wolf song? I'm like, oh, Nighttime Rebel. How did you come across it out of curiosity? I have no idea how I came across it. Well, um, some of my favorites. The uh, uh, Demons are a girl's best friend. I really like uh, Wolves of War, Amata, or Bigoy. I think it is. Uh, all painted by the Storm. I like it's like metal, but also pirate kind of. Um, what's, um, 
Venom of Venus, that's probably my favorite. I think I mentioned that before. But to be fair, it's hard to pick favorites. I adore so many of their songs. Favorite album for at least for now would be uh, Sacrament of Sin. That's Power Wolf. Ah, cool. Legion and The Gifted were actually mid to good Marvel series. Why is no one discussing them? Were they excluded from Disney deal? I don't even know what The Gifted is. I've heard of Legion. Oh, the, I think those were, uh, I think that was like a TV show on Fox. That would have been part of like the X-Men. And yeah, that's, I doubt that those projects are going to get any acknowledgement. Um, it'd only be using the X-Men films, I would imagine. Not any of these like smaller projects. But yeah, I mean, they'd own it, right? Because if that's Fox, like the network Fox, then yeah, they own that now. EFAP is my secret safe place with people who share my thoughts. I'm afraid to show my friends EFAP or your five-hour <laughs> MOM video because of how much they still love the MCU, Star Wars, etc. Still, thoughts? I mean, hey, don't be afraid, man. Um, it's kind of weird, because like, I'm curious what thoughts do you want to say? Do you mean like on the idea that you don't talk to your friends about the media they enjoy because you don't want to have to deal with like them liking it? Because, uh... You know, we talk to plenty of people who have very different opinions of all kinds of media. It's, it's mostly fine. You'll be okay. You let them know, or do you just sort of like do you go to these movies and you just nod along, like, yeah, man, it's fun. It's yeah, it's great. It's great. You have to hide who you really are on the inside. That's not. Uh, it's got to be difficult to do that, I imagine. Yeah, day in and day out. Is Twitch a mid Cosmo platform? Mid Cosmo uh... platform. Well, exactly. Uh, hey, weekend. Pretty appreciate. It. I feel like YouTube hid you from me for a while now. Also, hi, Mola, Rags, Fringy, and Disbrew. Oh, hello, hi there. Hey. A shilling for a bob. Shilling for a bob. Thank you. Shilling for a bob. Just started watching EFAP over again. Hi, queer. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, which is doing better optically, Star Wars or Marvel? I would say Star Wars because Star Phase Wars. 4 ravaged its Star... reputation more than the sequels did, I feel. I think Star Wars has a better reputation, even though it's in the... Everybody, everybody seems to hate what Marvel represents in a way that isn't quite the case with Star Wars. People yeah. still get excited for Star Wars stuff, I think. Whereas, like, I think, I think a lot of people, like, when, when people think of the sludge pipe, even though Disney Star Wars is one, they think of Marvel. They think of Marvel's effect on the industry overall, more so than Star Wars. I imagine Ahsoka will be given a chance. Uh, uh but if it's not good, then, <laughs> well, jeez. Yeah, like, if, <laughs> Which made? and when I say given a yeah. chance, I mean by Star Wars fans. Like, it'll take probably another, like, two very bad shows. Because the thing is, and or, for all the lack of people watching it, the people who did watch it, really, it would have made them feel good yeah. about Star Wars. It, would have been it always gets yeah, brought yeah, up yeah. in these Star Wars threads and discussions. Everyone talks about, well, what about Andor? You know, like, yeah. what, being good. And well, every time... It seems that a lot of people are upset. It kind of got snubbed for, you know, awards and potentials, things like that. Every time you try and make commentary about, like, the state of it culturally, you do have to acknowledge every time, like, well, except Andor. Oh, yeah, not Andor, though. Or not including yeah. Andor. It's like, yeah, because it's not the same thing. But the thing is, the fact is, it's not treated as though it's connected to the other things, really. It's own thing. Big Idious, Hiddle Subtleties, Knee High, Cheek Sent Me High are all so disappointed with the dawn or with, with the dawn for the lack of rhino milk. I hope they're milked up. Not that way. Hey, Fap, love your work. For top notch production and acting, check out Silo and For All Mankind. I have not I, heard of either. I've not heard of those. I've heard about both of them. Uh, I think For All Mankind is like an alt uh, history science, uh, like alt history Russia gets to the moon first, I think. That's like the selling point of that film. So then the <laughs> space race just keeps going. And I don't really know anything about Silo other than it's Rebecca Ferguson is in it as the lead and it's like some science fiction show. In a bleak dystopian future, humanity clings to survival deep underground within the confines of a colossal silo. Man, that, I was about to say, it's like deep underground in the, what, the Russian, like the Moscow Metro? Like, that sounds like Metro. A little bit. Well, oh, you guys are familiar with Metro, right? I am, yeah. 
I like uh, Metro Last reference. Light quite a bit. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, it's got an 8.1 on IMDb, this silo show. Maybe. Oh, huh. Okay. I, I haven't really heard anything about it at all, but... Hmm. Oh, Ian Glenn's in it, too. I like him. He's um... Tim Robbins is in it. I'm not sure what you guys would know Ian Glenn from. He was the bad guy in the first Tomb Raider movie. Oh! Uh, I remember him. But yeah. Eh. The critic, or this critic, shouldn't be using Clowncore's infinite realm of incomprehensible suffering as segue music. Clowncore is better than him, artistically. <laughs> Clowncore is better. Clowncore? I just like the, the idea that... If you use any other material from any other artist, you must be better than them to be able to use them. <laughs> like, otherwise, you're not allowed. It's just a respect thing. Uh, fly to India if you have to. I'm very picky about what I'll watch, and I'll confidently say they are worth your time. Oh, that was about Silo and... Uh, uh, for all mankind. Um, yeah, maybe at some point. Came across an old John's video where he talks about Osama bin Laden's death like a movie review. He rated the day awesome tacular. <laughs> nice. <laughs> they said it's so unhinged. I think I saw that on Twitter because people were trying to cancel him. Uh, that sounds hilarious that he just decided to review the day. <laughs> Give it awesome tacular. Uh, been binging all the ETAP content this year. It's been a blast and I've learned a ton from you all. I've become inspired to make my own critique content and become a long man myself. Here's 20 for all the great content. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And best of luck with your long content. Patrician TV, creator of a great 20-hour Skyrim video, said he'd be willing to come on, but not if it's related to cape shit. Maybe do a EFAP on Bethesda. So, as far as I know, he does games almost exclusively, so if he's up for, like, I mean... Could have brought him on for uh, Dead Space, Resident Evil. What's oh, next, yeah, absolutely. What's the game we're going to cover? Will that happen? I don't know. I guess... Uh, I'm not sure. I actually just do not know. I'll be playing Amnesia Bunker at, on Halloween. But I'm guessing it'll be dependent on my recommendation that you'll play it, Rags. Yes. I'm not, I'm not exactly chomping at the bit to play Amnesia anything. Uh, I've heard that one is better than at the very least. Ooh. But as for another game that we'll be talking about, I really don't know what the next one will be. <laughs> it's a credit to RLM that people see them as godfathers of film criticism as a genre on YouTube. I don't think they would call any of these copycats. Uh, you might be out of luck there, because they, they pissed off a lot of people by referring to them as copycats. Uh, they did it as a joke, right? But, like, it's it gets hard to tell, because... Um, they said, like, they did their reviews, and then they said a whole bunch of people popped up, and they did parody versions of those people. And um, I'm pretty sure they said, like, your movie is ass, or something like that, as a reference to your movie sucks. And I think we talked about it at the time, but YMS being a copycat, it just, it would be unfair, uh, in the same way that I... Um, you know, like, how you can have, like, a great director that was inspired by an older, greater director of their time... Like, they may have been a copycat at one point, perhaps, but that they've definitely got their own style at this point. YMS's videos, his best ones, like, they're not RLM videos. Oh, very, no, very, yeah, very they're, they're far more. Far more. Um, I think a lot of YouTubers start out directly inspired, even to the point of almost, like, healing a style. But, um, you know, plenty of them fall off or develop. It's rare that... I think the only time I can think of... I don't know about you guys can come up with any others, but... I don't even know if you'll know what I'm going to be referring to, but a time where someone has almost entirely copied another creator and managed to make a career out of it, at least somewhat. Do you, do you know who I'm thinking of? On YouTube. Uh, no, actually. It's a mm. classic. I know someone listening to this right now is thinking about exactly who Oh, about. are you thinking of like a real old school... A YouTuber came and did his thing, and then someone else copied him almost like just format for format and actually got success. But didn't get Is it this for... related to uh, Angry Video Game Nerd? That would be the one, yeah. Do you know who it was that copied uh, it? Was it called the Irate Gamer? That's him. <laughs> Man, this is stretching back years This is old years. internet lore, yeah. <laughs> so, Irate Gamer is possibly the best example of a copycat, and he did it so early that there wasn't much to watch. So he actually got traction. 
he was funny as fuck though to like w watch us how bad his like production was and how bad his scripts were and he'd have to do skits so he'd invent his little characters that was the era we were in <laughs> um i think he got yeah. into ghost stuff like he started uploading videos of him doing ghost hunting that's clearly like <laughs> and i remember someone doing a video about how like that was obviously his passion that he liked paranormal shit but he had to do like the game reviews <laughs> because he was like well I'm angry video game man so you know, mm -hmm. that would be a great example of a copycat. YMS is not a great example of a copycat. People would be copying YMS at this point. Uh, hi, Rags. Hey! Who do you think is the better villain between Odin and Gaunter Odim? I would need to double-check Gaunter Odim to check, because Odin is a really fucking strong-ass villain. Um... And Gaunter, I'd have, I'd really want to double check and make sure that I was, because I, I really enjoyed him, not just in the way that he was acted and the concept of what that character is, um, but I, I, I would want to make sure that um, it, it's executed well and they don't just kind of waste that and, because you know it was a long time ago. That's a, that's the, that's a villain from the Witcher Three DLC, Hearts of Stone. So, I need to... First off, I need to play that game again now that there's, like, the remastered, you know, anniversary whatever edition that's out now. Uh, but also, yeah, I, I would like to, you know, check him out again. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I'm going to default to Odin for now because how, how strong I know Odin is. Uh, and plus, I just have different roles in what they do. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Odin for now, for the moment. And that's... Uh, is that a particular Odin, or is that just and I'm thinking of? Oh, I I assume we're talking about God of War Ragnarok. Right. I thought because for a second there I was like there might be a character in like Mass Effect called Odin or something. Uh, no. Uh, there is the other only other game Odin that I'm really aware of is there is a special Thor prototype in StarCraft II called the Odin, but I don't think any. I'd have to think about any other. Thing called the Odin. I'm sure there is, but I can't remember which, you know, they are. Um, also, make Mauler play Mass Effect. Oh, yes. Please play Mass Effect, Mauler. Okay. At some point. <laughs> uh, nice to see you fighting the old enemies again. Oh, we were just checking in on old Bobbit, seeing what he had to say. Um, I don't remember when it was, but I was uh, around the release of Venom that Cosmonaut said something, and I realized that, hmm, no, that doesn't work. I guess that's an arc that they had with watching his comment. Alright. To be fair, Mauler's 6-hour MOM video and this Movie Bob 16-minute video both have the same word count in the script. It's amazing, isn't it? <clears throat> I'm from the same city as Movie Slob, and I want to kill myself because of it. He can't leave because... Movie uh, slob. The Leonard P. Zakim bridge would collapse under his girth. Oh, no, he can't leave because he can't fit through the front door. Maybe they can, uh... Once he leaves the basement, the floor will collapse. That's how he... That's why he's down there, so that he doesn't... He, do, he can't actually fall through the earth and keep going down. Not now, at least. So he can't leave the base. He's trapped there with his many cans. Oh, I remember the cans. <laughs> yeah, the cans. Uh, a man chooses a slave watches negative media vids. Mm. Is that... Even though iDubs is kind of lame now, what's everyone's favorite content, Cop? Oh, uh, uh, that might be because we... I think they either sent that twice or I read it twice, but... Well, I guess I read it twice no matter what. But uh, we, we answered that one a little earlier, so hopefully you got that. Uh, I would like to mark this as the moment in the video where the cast in unison couldn't get with this guy's points. That happens every once in a while with Bob. We have to rewind and be like, we have to think about it. I know the Pokemon card game rules. I played it in middle school. It has an energy system that's worse than the mana system from MTG. And the mana system from MTG works okay. It's a to okay to good. Um, but yeah, the energy system, I knew you could sort of, without a rule book, you can sort of parse together what the rules of a game are based on things that the cards say. Like, if you never learned how to play Magic, but you had a crap ton of cards and you just read through them, you could piece together decently what a lot of the rules are and how they fit together. But, yeah, we 
there was a starter pack that I got. It had um, Meryl or what was that? It was like a water Pokemon. Um, Mareep. It was Azu Meryl is what he is what he evolves into, right? Meryl was like a a, a, a well of water Pokemon. Wait, Azume. Uh, Azumarill, I think, and I had this pack of cards. I just double checked, but I think it was Azumarill, uh, and it was like a pack of cards, and it actually had like a rule book in there of how to play. And I never learned how to play because no one did. No one really learned how to play Pokemon. You just collected the cards and you had fun with them, and you were trading, and you'd wanted to you wanted to get them all, but. It was just the cut because we went through all sorts of different ones. You know, there was Pokemon and there was Yu Gi Oh! There was a bit of Duel Masters, but it was mostly Yu Gi Oh! and Magic the Gathering. Those were the two big ones. And we knew how to play those, but we never learned how to play Pokemon. But boy, did we trade and collect those cards. I still, I still have all my old cards, so. Interesting fact. According to the Consumer Price Index calculator made by the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics, three seven wait three hundred and fifty seven mm. million in nineteen eighty six is the equivalent of nine hundred and twenty three million in twenty twenty three. So pretty close to a billion. Um, huh. get, was that uh was that the gross of like a particular movie? Wait, so what year did they say? 1986. 86. So that would have been like Top Gun, I think. We might have been talking about Top Gun. Because I remember mm. saying that it was really successful, but I didn't recall it being like as... But I mean, by the sounds of it, yeah, it sounds like it was about as successful as uh, Maverick was adjusted. Yeah, that might be... That might be what... what about Aliens? What did that make in 86? Uh, I think it made like 100 and something million on a $20 million budget or something like that. And yeah, because that came out the same year. So that made 131 to 180. Wow. All right. Let's narrow it down a little bit. Between 131 to 183 million dollars on a 20 million dollar, 18 million dollar budget. No wonder they kept so. making them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fun fact: In Spidey Into the Spider Verse 2 trailer, they refer to the MCU universe as Earth 1999999. Said too many nines. Um, yet even more incoherent world building. Yeah, you never want to connect yourself to the MCU. Uh. Well, I think it's also speaking of the fact that the MCU is apparently 616 when it ain't. <laughs> like, yeah, that, or... that, but also just warning, don't connect yourself to the MCU. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes. However, it's also the safest thing to do because they'll just forget about you. Bum, bum, bum. Bum bum bum. Movie Blob is a gravitationally challenged clown psyop. Okay. That's an, <laughs> that's interesting, an interesting idea. That's an interesting theory. Yeah, it's an interesting theory. Smaller, it happened again. A YouTuber said that Sword and Shield is the wrong way to play Dark Souls, saying that it was a beginner trap because it incentivizes blocking and poking for the whole game. These people come up with really strange fucking commentary for video games. I don't know what to say. Be like. Ah, Pac-Man, the trick is to always follow the left side or something. And you'd be like, what? That sounds very strange and specific. And can I just, you know, may maybe even if you're talking about playing the best, that's one thing. But they're saying you play, like, wrong if you have Sword and Shield in Dark Souls. Maybe I want the Sword and Shield. Like, ah, oh, yes, but it'll encourage you to play more defensively. It's like, with my shield? Yes, that would be more defensive. That's kind of why I chose it. So weird. And you'd be like, yeah, but a lot of players go from playing Sword and Shield to playing just Sword as they progress through the game. Like, probably because they're much more used to the timings for all the attacks. Kind of what the shield does. Prevents the damage, but it lets you see the attack. You can tank it. Well, sometimes it'll still damage you, but you take a lot less damage. Point being, really weird, and you have to acknowledge all the other things that come with it. You can't just say, well, it's a trick. They have all of these mechanics. Especially Dark Souls 2 that has an entire... Laundry list of shields. It's a really weird thing to say that they put it in there just to trick you to not use it when you shouldn't. Uh, it smells like cope to me. Also, Dark Souls 2 is bad. Rags, Fringy, go play it. No. No! It would be amusing. <laughs> no. I have to play um, Space Beast. How much money would I have to raise to make you guys stream it? Oh, oh. I mean, probably not that much. <laughs> 
Probably a decent amount, actually. Rags' um, price is higher than free. <laughs> uh, yeah, my my price is high. I'm a I'm a I'm a classier whore than he is. You're gonna have to work a bit harder to get me to play Dark Souls. 2. I would do that for the meme. I would stream like fucking I don't know maybe Dark Souls and say like the make stringy free, <laughs> stringy free. <laughs> make stringy free <laughs> make stringy free again. I like I want stringy to be a character. <laughs> He's in a cage. But uh yeah, uh the, the make friggy stream Dark Souls 2 fund. Uh see if see if we get everyone to commit and the whole game, not just like an hour or something something pathetic like that. No, it's uh uh paying dollar to say Fringy's mic is semi consistently quieter than others across EFAPs, often makes it too hard to hear him. Also high rags. Hello. I do try to put him up at the beginning of EFAPs I always look over at the levels for everybody to make sure we're all in the yellow. So mm. the thing is that if anyone was to move their microphone later in the episode, that would be something I am unaware of. Hmm. They wouldn't do that, though. No, they would not. Nope. King Knight loves his mum. His mum is also hot. Okay. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Just seems like a neat accounting trick, to be honest. They're talking about the box office stuff. I'm not sure. Um, thanks for laughing at my silly memes, cynical reviews. Also, Long Kong, also Coom, High Rags, Muller is Bay, Tropic Hi. Thunder, EFAP movies, when? That could happen, I think, Tropic Thunder, EFAP movies. Plenty of us laughing and talking about how it's made, that's an easy one. Yep, and it's been so long since I've seen it, it would be like watching it for the first time again. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hola, Muller. Greetings to whoever else happens to be there. Uh, I think that's it, right? Wait, hey, what's that? Sorry, oh, you got sorry. Stringy was stringy. Was oh, in. greetings. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> the elites Hello. don't want you to morb. Wake up! It's morbin time. That's fucked up that the government would try and stop you from prevent you yeah. from morbin, whatever that means. Morbin. Yeah, it's morbin. Yeah, Lord morbid. Longbong of Mubschlington Abbey. Is there any good Wouldn't... chance of a Kong fap? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on? It'd be a movie uh -huh. fap for the ages. Yes. Would. Oh, well, Wagsies. Riches for the good boy. Oh, hello, and thank you. That sure does feel great. Uh, yeah, I think a Long Kong is very possible. Probably when we've got a few lesser things happening. <sighs> You know, when there's less the going on? Yeah. When there's yeah, less that, going that, that's, on. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And, yeah. you know, I think it might be a movie fab for the ages. It might oh, be. Oh, it will. Also, when's the last time you got a script, Rags? Oh, I mean, we, I mean, as good as I've been lately, i I just been just rolling out, but each one is appreciated. Mm-hmm. Uh, why the... Like drug. Why the hell was he playing Vanderturf Town Music, Pokemon Ruby, over an important topic like the Facebook whistleblower? I don't know. <laughs> he likes the tune. That's simple sometimes. It's a lovely little ditty, maybe. Bob, don't lie to people. The only STD you could ever contract is a carpal tunnel, and that's only if you have a map, a compass, and a GPS. Right? <laughs> Uh, um, sure. Americans don't know that there are numbers below seven. Rags, do you know about this? I mean, if anything, those are the ones we are typically most familiar with, right? What so? One, two, and three. Americans know really well. One, two, and three. We want we know really good because we have to we have to go through those on the way up to the big numbers. Yeah. Uh, I really like Thor Love and Thunder, Spider-Man, and No Way Home. The rest was garbage. Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. carried the bad writing in MCU. That's an interesting take. You like Love and Thunder and No Way Home, and you thought Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. carried the MCU's bad writing. This is an interesting opinion. Yeah, I feel like you're a brand new human. Congratulations. You That's are like a brand new... You know what? There's never been an... There's never been an opinion like this before. That's Good that's stuff. legitimately interesting. What you said is legitimately interesting. Yep. <laughs> uh, my account got hijacked slash banned on YouTube. Uh, YouTube refused to unban me after recovering it, so I started streaming on Rumble for four times the viewers. Rumble for the win, not gonna lie. Interesting. 
Well, good luck. I, I'm glad you're getting some viewers, assuming you're not a horrifically terrible person. And I would like Rumble and Kick to be strong enough to push everything back into competition mode. That would be neat. That would be very neat. First ever Super Chat. Been catching up on the lore for a while, and now I'm here. The spiders foretold of this moment. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. Neat to see you. Let's see. I like it. Stay caught up with the flurry of content we're popping out on the old Baveruni. The base in Kenobi did have a shield. It brought up in Fallen Order. Disney forgot it exists. Laugh my ass off. No, no, they didn't. They said, why would they have a shield if they were... So that that would be pointless because they're Very never going to get invaded or whatever. Uh, no, guess... no one would be stupid enough to stupid enough to attack the base. Exactly. That's why they don't have a shield. So it's what he the way that's congruent is that what he means is they have a shield they're just not putting it on. Okay, it's there. They just they're smart enough to not put it on. It's the Ryan Johnson thing. You'd understand if you'd seen Glass. You see, she was too clever to be afraid of Miles, <laughs> and then she died. <laughs> then she fucking died by him. <laughs> Also, Saw Gerrera first appeared in the Clone Wars. Well, I thought he was a Rogue One character. Like, uh, origin, you know? Love and Thunder is a good Marvel movie. I don't think it deserved that much hate. I love Thor in that movie. Sorry, not sorry. The internet was wrong. <laughs> um, Love and Thunder was horse shit, my dude. Um... It goes, M.O.M. is the worst, and then Love and Thunder and Quantumania are like, it's yeah, they're, they're the ones just, uh, yeah, right behind. Two very good friends, yes. They've, it's two Multiverse of Madness very narrowly beat them over the finish line for worst they're like, horrible. Worst, worst Marvel movie. Remember when Captain Marvel was the worst? Yep. Oh, those were wonderful <laughs> times. Oh, oh like Black God. Widow? Remember times. how bad Black Widow was? Jeez, yeah. I do and it doesn't even come that. close to being the worst. Well, I guess it, it sort can't. of comes close. It, well, it really. comes close -ish, Relatively. But, you know. If you, like, on a list, it comes close, but, like, quality-wise, it doesn't. And, you know, so it's sort of a bit of both. Um, I'm Massive. Been watching for three years, know all the side channels and archives, and my dumbass is still surprised every Saturday that EFAP starts. Oh. I still don't do, worry. I do drop You'll it on it. people. I don't do the whole, like, starting up. Go blah. It's a style, okay? Um, Love and Thunder made me vow to never watch MCU movies in theaters again. Ah, normal opinion about Love and Thunder. Here we go. Uh, he said Andor was a bunch of people looking sad at each other and a stormtrooper will walk past the screen. I don't know if they mean Movie Bob or someone else, but wow. It's probably... It could have... We don't know. It could be like Star Wars Theory or... Anybody. Could be any. Unfortunately, of those that Star could Wars be any. Yeah. Here's a oh, haven't a question or anything like that. Just want to say thumbs up to EFAP. What's the crake to the mongers of toxic hate and high Raggleton bear? Uh, hello. Hello. But what's the crake? Yeah. Oh. I don't know either. I don't know what what's a crake the crake is. to? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh. Would you rather have every new movie and or show that comes out have the same caliber of writing as She-Hulk or cover every single Movie Bob video he's ever made all in one EFAP? You can skip the ones you've already done. Well, we couldn't. We wouldn't be able to. Yeah, that's actually... That would it be would, longer than 24 It would hours. literally be impossible for us to do. Like, I think our bodies would... Like, un, like as not as a joke, I don't... I think he's had so much content over the years that we would have to stop for, like, sustenance. It would take us too long. It's just but, too much to cover. But of course, yeah, if there were reasonable limits in terms of how, like, the idea that we do that. Like a 24 or, hour stream of just Movie Bob stuff. Like, that's. Well, know, or a series like of 10 hour streams, and we have to go until we get through his entire library. Um, so, it, and, and either that or all movies like and TV Chat shows will forever be as good as She Hulk. We'd have to take well, the bullet, wouldn't we? We'd we gotta to take it. the blow for humanity. Yeah. We gotta do it. We have to be the heroes. We'll be like fucking Spider-Man. EFAP would become the show where we cover Movie Bob because it would be fucking long. And you'd have to agree that the commentary from us would start to get pretty limited. Getting headaches. Oof. I want Logan Roy's live reaction to this guy. I want Logan Roy's reaction to it. I want Logan Roy to hold me. Logan Roy, 
You're alive in my heart. You are alive in my heart. As a Moon Knight fan, the saddest thing is that not only I will never get to see a good adaptation of the character, but also the MCU bad adaptation will bleed back into the comics to draw yeah, MCU prob fans. Probably. Yeah. That seems to be <sighs> happening more and more often where the MCU influences the comics significantly. Because uh, the recent thing is that um, Kamala Khan Miss Marvel is going to be a mutant now in the comics when she wasn't in human because she's going to be a mutant in the MCU. Yay. Mm. And I think uh, it's also, I th there was around about the middle of the 2010s, there was a sort of, there was just less X-Men stuff like in comics and other multimedia as well. Like I know that, that uh, the more recent Marvel vs. Capcom game I don't think it had any X-Men in it at all when, like, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is, like, 90% X-Men characters in the Marvel lineup because they didn't own X-Men in the films. And so that was influencing the direction that they were taking, like, the comics, that there was more Inhuman stuff happening. So, yeah, uh, it's kind of the problem with <laughs> the MCU is that the bad shit that infects the comics as well because it is the more prominent and prevalent uh, version of those characters. Um, hey boys and girl, have any of you thoughts on Babylon? Same director as Whiplash, which I love, but I thought this one was garbage. Also, hi Rex. Hello. I do not know about this movie. About, uh, that film. Heard, heard plenty of people not liking it. Heard plenty of people say it's misunderstood. Heard plenty of people say it was ahead of its time slash before its time, meaning it regards the fall of Hollywood. Like, the creative ideas are dead there. Something. Never seen it, so um, I'm. I'd be curious to find out what what's going on there. But uh, yeah, no, I haven't. Uh, EFAP anime special when it's frontier worth checking. EFAP special on what? Could you read that again? I'm sorry. EFAP anime uh, special when frontier worth checking. When frontier worth checking. Maybe frontier is an an anime. Maybe. Look, I'm not, like, it's it's half a meme, but half serious, my disdain for anime. Uh, but that's anime's fault, quite frankly. Um, I wouldn't be against watching, like, having a little bit of, like, a side anime arc if we covered good stuff. If it was good, I would like it. But I, I don't do... trust any anime fan when they say, no, no, this is a good one, though. I would do EFAP anime One Punch Man. One that could... Yeah, I've heard very good things from you, but I know you're not a weeb and you won't <laughs> lie to me about it, you know? And I'd, I'd be down for watching, like, classic anime from, like, the 80s and 90s um, when it looked so amazing and stuff like that. I'd be totally down for it. Or maybe we could... I don't know why... Yeah, like, an anime show is definitely, you know, neat, whether we watch, you know, some of the classic stuff or one of those one-seasoners or something. I don't know. Um... But we've got Some lots of stuff we want to do shit. first. And yeah, lots of do. stuff we have already done. Indeed. Das is out of the editing dungeon. He does, he does come visit. Uh, glad to see the dev and weekend beef squashed. 24 hours might have been a new record. Also, screw you, dev. They were having uh, a back and forth on Twitter, I think, like the night that we had them on EFAP, and we were like... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it was about at this point, uh, It but... was probably about the the chick who got bullied, right? Oh, the... Was she a VTuber? Something like that. I can't Something remember, like yeah, that, but... I think. But, Massives, do y'all think Bella Ramsey can pull off being an older Ellie in Season 2? I have my doubts, considering she can't get any taller or appear older as video game Ellie did in Last of Us Part 2. I'm sure they will write it with that in mind. That's probably what's going to happen, yeah. She won't be as older. And to be honest with you, uh, with what 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 the, with, with what story happens, like in terms of the stuff with Joel and everything, she doesn't even have to be aged up at all. Like you can make all of that still. Well, happen. they could still could do the. Uh, they could do yeah. the flashbacks, right? They could do all the flashback uh, stuff from the game. And then, and then there's just a matter of, um, I mean, who knows when it's even happening at this point with, like, the writer's strike and the actor's strike. Like, stress, when is production um, going to start happening? The stress we had from the, watching that final episode, that's just going to be the whole of season two, pretty much. Yes, that mm -hmm. will be the whole of season two. Yep. What will be the first to release something substantive, Movie Bob or Marvel Phase 5? 
Marble phase. I mean, Marble five. phase five will have an end, and they may not have achieved it. You know, <laughs> but Movie Bob could just. I mean, go on Movie forever. Bob. Movie Bob just can. He's really bad. Not only is it stylistically bad, but like what he actually says is really bad. And he can just churn. He just pumps that. You know, pumps that shit out. So if we if we kind of put them on the curve, I I still think Marvel is most likely to produce something of value than Movie Bob. Um. Have you ever been disappointed in family? Last time I talked to my sister, she said she really liked She Hulk and Mando. <laughs> what? But their opinions on movies have never disappointed me. <laughs> just, I'm always like, <laughs> oftentimes I want to know why they enjoyed a thing or didn't enjoy a thing. It doesn't really matter if they did yeah. necessarily. That's kind of where my brain is these days. I'm like, oh, you like that? Tell me more. Let's explore that, shall we? Ugh. Or I just ask him questions about it. Just I, not even just like pro, pro, not really probing questions, but I sort of, but like, not like judgmentally. You just, just because I'm curious, I'm not leading him anywhere. I'm just like legitimately curious. Oh, like what did you like about you know such and such? Why did you think that? Uh, what did you think about this, that, and the other thing? Just to see what they'll say. Usually isn't much of value, but that's okay. You know, such is life. It's fine. We're all. Uh, would you rather have erased the MCU post Infinity War or Star Wars post Disney? Say that one more time. The Would you rather have erased the MCU post Infinity War or Star Wars post Disney? Um, assuming they mean the Disney section of Star Wars instead of post Disney because that hasn't existed. That doesn't exist. But, um. Huh. I'm leaning towards Star Wars post or, or uh, a, a post I guess post Lucas Star Wars. Um But See that means we we lose Andor. Marvel means we lose No <sighs> shit. This is a tough one for me. I think I might save Star Wars before I save the MCU, but I think that's just like subjectively, I care more. I like, I, I, I like the idea of a good Star Wars more than of a good MCU, but that's just preference. Where do you reckon that comes from, though? I don't, I think it's like growing up with Star Wars and my love of that world and what it can be and the, the expansiveness that can be in that entire IP and the different eras and I mean, couldn't stuff you say that that's far more the case for, for uh, like, Marvel? Yeah, maybe. Star Wars. Um, I, Star Wars, I, to some respect, is limited by, the, like, a, a more, uh, I guess, not narrow scope, but, like, compared to just a whole bunch of superheroes from all over the place with all sorts of, like, explanations for that, from, like, magic to crazy sci-fi tech and everything. But, like, I don't think... I don't really think so. Not in any meaningful way. I think both of these universes you can do so much with. It's almost like comparing two amounts of infinity. Yeah, um, I got you. I I really do think it kind of comes down to preference because both of these you know un these IPs have been just like dragged through the mud, uh, and I think I would yeah. want to. I think I'd want to save Star Wars because we still get to keep all of the good. Or a lot of the really good MCU stuff. Because it's post-Infinity War. So we get to drop a lot of the shit. M.O.M., Love and Thunder, Quantumania, a lot of the stuff like that. Even Endgame, that's gone now. But with Star Wars, I think we, I think we, that allows us to pretty much keep the best of what these IPs kind of have. So I would go with that. Because it still allows us to keep the MCU's best parts. Um, yeah, I think it's real tough. Uh, I think a lot of people would intuitively just go with Star Wars, because I think Star Wars feels like something that should be protected more from what happened to it, because it had a bigger, longer yeah. legacy. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you could, I guess more than the MCU, but Marvel has a bigger and longer legacy. Yes, and, uh, and there's, there is the aspect of the MCU. It had such fertile ground already prepared. Yeah. 
And then Star Wars forward. arguably does too, but it doesn't, you know, prequels, gap, and then what uh, happens next? Yeah. It's like, well, you know what? Greatness could have happened next, but it didn't. And so it, it, it's an equally hard question of like, what if they get erased and then you get full control and get to visualize everything that's going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, well, I, I'd like to do that with both of them, I guess. Cool. Uh, but I'm not sure. I could actually be argued into either of them, I think. I feel like I could as well. I'm going to stick with my Star Wars answer for now, though. But I, I really do either. think this might be just pure preference on which of those like IP universes you kind of gravitate towards in terms of liking, because they're obviously the best possible version of each of those is incredibly good. Um, and I would value them both immensely. But Star Wars sort of is my my preference, really. I think that's fair. And yep. uh, with that, at the end of, I guess I jumbled up two EFAP episodes by accident and then just committed yeah. to it. Um, also yeah. Streamlabs, so that, that was four hours of... <laughs> you, <laughs> you got go. a lot of catching up there, fellas. And uh, I think that means we've got another two episodes. Possibly three, but we'll try and get them wrapped up coming out on Wednesdays. This will just be a bigger, chunkier one on a Wednesday. But um, thank you so much for sending those messages, folks. Appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching our show. Yeah. In the next one, whatever it may end up being. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. I hope, uh, Bye. hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening. Bye. And uh, we appreciate each and every super chat that we get. So bye bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.